Hey, what's up, heroes and heroines? It's your boy, Kronos, bringing you a mind-blowing, what-if, scenario that's gonna make you rethink everything. Imagine if Deku traded his green kicks for a flaming bike, yeah, we're diving deep into. What if Deku was the Ghost Rider, the movie? But before we get into the epic madness, huge shout-out to the real hero, Kaidan, and to all of you legends out there supporting the channel. From the bottom of my heart, I appreciate you. No time to waste. Let's blaze into this alternate universe. Smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and let's roll! Today was not a good day for Izuku. Well, most days were not good days for Izuku, but this one was really bad. To start, his teacher had announced his desire to go to UA, which had the expected result that is everyone but his sister laughing and Bakugo getting pissed. Then Bakugo told him, Jump off the roof and hope you get born with a quirk in your next life. Which was just a whole other level form him which his sister was happy to yell at him while she used her quirk to throw him out a window. Luckily Bakugo used his quirk to stop his fall but as you can probably guess she got in trouble and now Izuka had to walk home alone while she sat in after school detention. Of course, nothing was ever easy for Izuku and villain came and tried to suffocate him and steal his body. Fortunately, all Might came and dealt with the villain and Izuka wasn't sure if he fainted from lack of air or from the sheer excitement of All Might being here. Things went even further downhill, somehow, when Izuka took a ride on All Might's leg and learned that the symbol of peace was not as he seemed. After promising not to tell anyone Izuka asked him something he had been wanting to ask him for years. Can I be a hero? Even though I'm quirkless? No. This wasn't exactly what the hero said. But to Izuku it's all that mattered. All of All Might's attempts to soften the blow fell on deaf ears. After all, Might left he felt, numb. All he ever wanted was to be a hero. To stop being so weak. To stop being a Deku. But now that already impossible dream had been crushed and all he was left with a feeling of uselessness and depression. Mindlessly he walked back to school to pick up his sister when his eyes caught sight of the roof. Jump off the roof and hope you get born with a quirk in your next life. Bakugo's words came to mind and the next thing he knew he was on the roof looking down. At this point, all I am is a hindrance. Izuka got in trouble because of me. Mom won't have to work those extra hours to support two kids. Izuka I'm sorry. Take care of mom. And with that, he fell. A few minutes later with Izuka. Izuka walked down the halls absolutely pissed. I swear when I get my hands on Bakugo I'm gonna snap his freaking neck, she muttered walking down the halls. Izuku is probably already home. Better get there and make sure he's okay. Izuka walked out the main entrance and her heart dropped to her stomach. No. No. Please no. Izuku. Right in front of the school was her brother, laying in a pool of his own blood. It was pretty evident what happened. Tears streamed down poor Izuka's face as she feels to her knees in front of her now dead brother. And so, she did then the only thing she could do. She screamed. A week later. Not many people came to Izuka's funeral. It was just his family and the Bakugos. Inko was a mess. She hadn't stopped crying since she received the news. Throughout the entire event, Izuka never stopped glaring at Bakugo and when everyone else was distracted she cornered him. I could tell them about what you said, Izuka said emotionlessly. Why didn't you? Bakugo asked just as emotionlessly the shock of being responsible for someone's death still sinking in. Because that's not what Izuka would have wanted. Because he wanted you to be a hero. And even though you'll never be one I'll let you pretend. Just know that I will be number one. Just so that way you can't be. Bakugo said nothing. But I just want to make this clear. You killed my brother. I will never forgive you. I will never let you forget what you are. A goddamn murderer. Izuka was starting to lose her cool as tears slid down her face. Bakugo looked down and said nothing. Izuka glared at him before walking away. Tears still in her eyes leaving Bakugo by himself. Izuku opened his eyes and found himself floating in an endless black void. Is this the afterlife? Well, yes and no came a demonic voice. Izuka looked around in panic but he found nothing. Don't bother. I am not physically there but rather I have pulled you into a space known as purgatory. Where we can speak. Purgatory? Izuka asked. 
Yes, purgatory. It is a place beyond heaven, hell, and the land of the living. Normally someone like you would simply go directly to heaven. However, I have an offer you may be interested in. An offer? Wait, are you the devil? Izuka asked. The voice let out a demonic laugh that shook the infinite space he was in. Very good. Yes, I am the being you call. The devil. Izuka was in shock. Thousands of questions ran through his head but the one that repeated the most was. What does the devil want with me? Like I said I want to make you an offer. Izuka's eyes widened. He can read my thoughts. I'm the devil. Of course, I can read your thoughts. Oh. Izuka felt dumb. Anyway, I don't like to waste time so I'll lay everything out for you. I can give you the power to be, well not a hero but someone who saves people and fights bad guys. A vigilante? Izuka was intrigued despite himself. He had been told the same thing all other children were told about making deals with the devil, that it never ends well and that you'll always suffer in the end. But to Izuka not being able to help people was already suffering. Yes. Don't worry you'll be far too strong to catch. Even All Might would be unable to beat you. He would be stronger than All Might. Regardless the power I offer is that of the spirit of vengeance. A fallen angel. You will receive great strength, speed, and endurance. Eating, sleeping, drinking will all be unnecessary. You will be able to summon the flames of hell and burn the souls of the guilty with your gaze. And lastly, every time innocent blood is spilled you will know. With its power, you will be an unstable force of justice and you will save countless lives. All of this was music to Izuka's ears he almost accepted right there and then. Excerpt one thing came to mind. What will it cost? All I ask is that you send the souls of those who would bring harm upon the innocent directly to me. You want me to kill them? In hindsight considering who he was talking to this should have been obvious. But still killing was something that heroes could only do under extreme circumstances. And it wasn't something Izuka ever wanted to do. A bit hesitant, huh? Well, perhaps you require some persuasion. Suddenly Izuka could see countless people suffering, screaming, dying. And then it stopped. In a single moment, 34 people were just killed. 23 people were tortured. And that was just Japan. Tell me, Izuka Midoriya, will you just let them suffer? When you could help? I accept. The devil laughed once more. Good. Good. However, there's one more thing you must give up. I don't care. Izuka screamed, interrupting the devil. I can't. I can't let them suffer. I refuse to let them suffer. I won't be useless anymore. Take my soul. Take everything. Just give me the power. Give me the power to help people. A tear streamed down Izuka's face and fell into the void as the two were silent until the devil laughed once more. But it wasn't the amused laugh he let out before. This one was far more sinister. As you wish. Then Izuka saw light. The light came closer and Izuka was able to make out what it was. A flame. The fire crashed into him and engulfed him. The graveyard a month after the funeral. The grave of Izuka Midoriya was alight as a pillar of flame burst from his coffin. A hand came up and grabbed on to the dirt surrounding him and Izuka Midoriya rose from his grave. He stood up and looked around him and his eyes landed on something that was distinctly out of place. A motorcycle. Parked right next to his grave. On top of the motorcycle was a white shirt and green hoodie as well as a pair of jeans and cleats. Next to the bike was a chain. Izuku walked closer to it and a note appeared. Dear Izuku, The spirit of vengeance requires a mount. So, I have given you one. Also, I doubt you wanted to walk around naked so I provided some clothes. You're welcome. As for the chain... Well, it was the weapon of choice for the previous ghost rider. I figured you could make use of it. Oh, and about the whole knowing about whenever the blood of the innocent is spilled. That only extends to whatever city you're in and will only be one at a time. Otherwise, you would go insane. Sincerely. The Devil. The note burst into flames and disappears. Izuka quickly realized he was naked and changed into the clothes as quickly as possible. After he was dressed he took a closer look at the motorcycle. It was small for a motorbike. 
as if it was made for him specifically which considering who made it was probably the case. It was mostly black with some green highlights and looked like something a rich person would own. Okay. So, how do I ride this? Izuka picked up the chain and slung it over his shoulder before sitting down on the bike. Strangely it felt familiar. As if he had done it a thousand times before. Did, did these powers come with the knowledge to ride motorcycles? I mean if it's required to be the spirit of vengeance I guess it makes sense? Izuka sat on the bike and gripped the controls getting the feel of things. Okay. What do I do now? He looked back at his burned grave and a thought came to his mind. I've been dead. For a month. Oh God. Mom. Izuka. As soon as he realized this he sped off towards his house. Speeding down the roads Izuka didn't really care about abiding the road laws. Mom. Izuka. I'm sorry. I probably made you two worry so much. I swear. I'll make it up to you. Somehow. As Izuka came closer to his house he saw something that made his heart drop. Flames. Izuka rocket towards his house reaching it in minutes. He threw his bike to the side and ran into the burning house. The flames not hurting him whatsoever. Mom! Izuka! Is anyone here? He heard a coughing sound. Rushing to the noise Izuka found a horrific sight. His mother. Covered in burns. Underneath a piece of burning roof. No! No! Mom! Izuka threw the piece of wood off her and lifted her up. He smashed the burning wall to bits and carried his mother outside. Setting her down he took off his hoodie and used it to put out the flames. Once that was done he crouched down. Mom! Mom! Please! No! Don't die! She coughed and opened her eyes. Izuku, is that you? Yes. Mom! It's me! I came back! Where's Izuka? She was out doing something. Izuka sighed in relief no his sister was okay. Mom, it's gonna be okay. Just save your breath I'm gonna get you to a hospital. Izuku? Mom please save your dash. Izuku, is it really you? Inko asked tears streaming down her burnt eyes. Yes, mom it's really me. A smile came to Inko's lips. I'm so glad. Izuku, I'm sorry. Those were the last words she said, before her body went limp. Mom! Mom! M-O-M! Mom, please! It was no use. Inko Midoriya was no more. No! Izuku screamed in rage and sadness as he hugged the body of his dead mother begging her to come back. Then as if it was whispered in his ears a memory came to mind. Good! Good! However, there's one more thing you must give up. I don't care. Izuku realized now what had just happened. This was all his fault. From all across the city could be heard. A wail of pure rage. Meanwhile in the Yakuza base. Eri. It's time. Came the voice of Chisaki Kai A.K. overhaul leader of the Yakuza. A little girl with pure white hair and horn dressed in a simple hospital gown looked up in fear but didn't run. Running only made it worse. His hand touched her. And her blood was spilled. All across the wall. Back with Izuku. He felt it. Innocent blood had been spilled. All his rage, all his anger. Burned inside of him as the flames encircled him forming a cyclone of fire around him. When he emerged instead of a green child there stood a flaming skeleton. He picked up his hoodie and put it back on. The hoodie along with the rest of his clothes not catching fire. He called his bike and as it came to him it transformed, turning into a motorcycle made of bone, burnt metal, and fire. He hopped on and at unparalleled speeds he raced towards the source of the bloodshed. Now with burning anger, Izuka Midoriya had become the spirit of vengeance and was headed to take his anger on whoever had the nerve to harm the innocent. And may God help whoever got in his way. The Yakuza a group that was driven into becoming a shell of its former self by the rise of heroes was now attempting to re-establish itself as a powerful force to be reckoned with. Unfortunately for them, there was something even older and even more powerful coming to re-establish itself by sending them all to pits of hell. Izuka crashed through the gates with full force alarming the Yakuza who were charged with guarding the door. 
Izuka parked his bike and walked towards the startled Yakuza members. Who are you? What are you? Why are you here? Izuka said nothing as he let out a stream of green fire from his mouth, burning them all to the bone. Walking past their burning corpses Izuka punched through the front door. The place looked like an ordinary house and if you didn't know any better you would think it was. However, Izuka knows that blood was spilled and he knows where. Punching through the secret entrance he was met with more Yakuza goons who were burnt to a crisp the second they showed their faces. Meanwhile deeper in the base. Overhaul! We are under attack! Yelled Chronostasis or just Chrono. Oh? By who? Asked Overhaul still collecting Ares' blood. I don't know. But he's burning our men to ashes. Chrono said. Overhaul sighed. Another vigilante then. Fine send the trio of garbage. Back with Izuku. Izuku walked through the base burning whoever got in his was until suddenly he felt his chain disappear. Looking for this? Izuku looked in front of him to see Toya Setsuno holding his chain. Next to him were Yuhojo and Sora Mitsutabe, together with their quirks larceny, crystallization, and food. They make some formidable foes. Or at least they would be if they were not literally fighting a fallen angel. I don't know where the fuck you came from, but you chose the wrong group to fuck with, Toya yelled. You sent out his crystals at Izuka to try and damage him, but they simply smashed into him and broke off without leaving a scratch. Impossible, you yelled. Tabe then took his turn and lunged at Izuku intent on eating him alive. Izuku stood still as his teeth clenched around his bones. And did absolutely nothing. What? yelled out the other two in shock. Tabe, still trying to eat Izuku, kept biting down on his arm until suddenly Izuku stuck his hand in his mouth and let out a blast of green flames. Tabe was reduced to ash in a second. The other two were in shock at how easily their friend was killed. Izuka turned to them and walked forward. Back with overhaul. They're dead, Kranos said looking disbelievingly at the cameras. What? asked overhaul who up till now hadn't paid this matter any mind. They're dead. He killed them in seconds, Krano reiterated. That bastard! He thinks he can fuck with us! Mimic yelled giving Izuka the death stare from the monitor. Overhaul groaned. God damn it. Send the rest of the disposables. Except for Shin. And Mimic get the trigger just in case. Back with Izuku. As Izuku walked deep into the base he had a feeling he was being watched. He looked up to see another Yakuza, Didoro Sakaki drinking away. Hey! You're supposed to be getting woozy! Slurred the drunk. It appears he is immune your quirk. How bothersome! said a calm voice on the other side of the wall. Suddenly Izuku was flung through a wall as the Yakuza member Rikia Katsukane tackled him. In response, Izuku breathed fire on the huge man causing him to throw Izuku off of him and into a wall. Ah! he yelled as the flames spread. Izuku got up still not a scratch on him and hurled a fireball at the man however it was blocked by some kind of invisible force field. Impressive. But not enough said another Yakuza member Hakiji Tengari. Standing beside him was another huge man named Kendo Rappa. Well, are you going to do something? Hakiji asked looking at Rappa. No. Ganging up three to one ain't right, Rappa said. Hakiji scoffed. Useless. I'll be sure to inform Overhaul when dash. Smash. The two men looked back at Izuku to see that he had broken through the force field with a single punch. What? Hakiji gasped. Rikia got back up and attempted to punch him but Izuka caught the punch head on stopping it in its tracks. What? Rikia cried. You're literally just a pile of flaming bones. How are you so strong? Izuka didn't bother answering as he lifted the villain up by his fist and threw him around into the wall. Izuka grabbed his chain and ignited it before unfolding it. Then he in one fell swoop he slashed it across the villain's body the hot metal cutting through his body like butter, bisecting him. Hakiji staggered back. Rappa! Do something, you oaf! Rappa shrugged. K. Rappa grabbed Hakiji by the head and threw him at Izuka's feet. All yours! Rappa cheered. Why you? Traitor! Hakiji yelled. You'll get yours, Rappa, you'll dash. 
he didn't have the chance to say any more before he was consumed by flames. Finally, Rappa said. A one-on-one -on -one fight to the death. The Goliath cracked his knuckles. It's just me and you, Skeletor. Why don't you lose the chain so we can fight like men? Izuka looked at his chain before deciding to drop it. Rappa smiled. All right. Let's get this party started. Ra! Rappa charged. Back with Overhaul. Overhaul turned away from the monitor. All right, Mimic, you have a few seconds at best. Are you ready? Overhaul asked. I am ready to crush this ant. Mimic cried his voice seemingly coming from the walls. Overhaul nodded. Good. Chrono. Go get Eri. We can't risk her getting out of our hands. Back with Izuku. Rappa lay in a pool of his own blood. Burns lining his body. You are strong alight. Rappa painted. Izuku said nothing as he opened his jaw. Rappa laughed. If this is how I go, good. Without another word, Izuku set his body alight. Izuku went to pick up his chain and as he bent down a bottle was smashed against his head. He looked up to see that Sakaki was hanging from the ceiling. Come on, fight me, U-H-H-H-H. A fireball cut off his sentence as he fell to the ground, his body turning into a flaming pile of crumpled flesh. Izuku walked away leaving one body and three piles of ash. On any other day, Izuku would have been horrified at such gruesome sights, but whether it be the natural apathy that comes from being the spirit of vengeance, or the burning rage he still felt from seeing his mother die, he no longer cared. All that mattered was making them pay. Izuku walked down the empty halls of Yakuza base. All the Yakuza who had been here went up to try and stop him and had been incinerated. As Izuku walked further down the halls he got the feeling of being watched once more. If you're going to attack, do it now. Then the halls closed in. The entire section of the base closed in and attempted to crush him. Mimic's laugh echoed. Ha ha. That's right. Now prepare to die. You think you can look down on us? You piece of shit. The Yakuza will rise up once more and you will be a stain on our halls. Now die. The halls closed in even further to the point where Mimic could no longer see Izuku. Mimic laughed even harder. Until he saw a green light. What? Then the light grew brighter and brighter. And then he burned. Back with overhaul. Boom. A large explosion shook the entire facility. Was that Mimic? Asked Shinamoto another member of Yakuza which now consisted of three people. Krano nodded holding Eri in his arms. That probably means either Mimic killed him or Dash. Or I killed Mimic. The three looked back to see Izuku standing there his clothes slightly torn. Shin wasted no time and used his quirk, confession. Who are you? I am the spirit of vengeance, Izuku said without meaning to. Must be his quirk. Damn. It seems like my quirk doesn't work on him. Shin said not knowing Izuku was telling the truth. But let's see if he's so tough after this. The plague doctor lookalike pulled out a shotgun and fired a cluster of quirk erasing bullets at Izuku. The quirk easing bullets went right through his clothes and between his ribs where they were quickly destroyed by the fire. The room was dead silent as the Yakuza realized that the person in front of them was actually a skeleton and immune to their bullets. Well, it seems like you're going to be troublesome, Overhaul said removing his gloves. Krano, get Eri away from here. I'll deal with him personally. Krano nodded and tried to run out of the room but Izuku was having none of it. Izuka summoned his bike which appeared next to him in an instant and rocketed past Krano blocking his path. What the hell? Krano shouted. Overhauled sked and touched the ground. Suddenly the concrete floor beneath them disappeared and in an instant, it turned into spikes that rained themselves into Izuku. However, they didn't actually hurt him as they all just broke the second they came into contact with Izuku. Izuku took out his chain and swept the room destroying the rest of the spikes. However, Overhaul and his minions were nowhere to be found. It was no use, however, as he had spilled the blood of innocent. No matter where he went, Izuku could find him. However, something was off. For a few seconds, Overhaul would just disappear from Izuku's radar only to reappear. Izuku looked down at the shotgun that the Yakuza used. They probably dropped it after seeing how useless it was against him. 
Bad move. Izuka picked up the weapon and as he held it in his hand the flames enveloped it, and it was transformed. Now it was black and green and had skulls and flames painted across its cannon. New weapon in hand Izuka went to kill Overhaul. He didn't have to go far as suddenly the entire base began to shake. He felt the base move upwards as if it was being lifted out of the ground. Izuka summoned his bike and hopped on rocketing out of the Yakuza's base in record time just as it was leaving the ground. Izuka burst out of the base and onto the streets and looked up. And in front of him was what could only be described as a monster. Overhaul's top half was now fused with some kind of bird-like monster made of flesh, metal, and concrete and was the size of a skyscraper. His mask was fused with his face and if you looked close enough you could see several other masks on the monstrosity. His quirk. It lets him take things apart and put them back together. Did. Did he put the other Yakuza members back together and fuse them into his body? Until now Azuku had been running on rage to angry to even think properly but the sight of this abomination brought him back to his senses. Overhaul looked down at Azuku and let out a monstrous scream. Rah! The monster shot a tendril the size of a building out from his body right at Azuku in an attempt to kill him right there and then. Thinking quickly Azuku pulled out his new shotgun and fired it at the attack. Boom! The tendril was destroyed sending bits of it falling to the ground but just as quickly as it went it grew back. He must be using his quirk to heal himself. How am I gonna beat him? Overhaul didn't give him the time to think as he sent four more tendrils at Izuku. Izuku ramped up his bike and dodged the attack and started circling Overhaul. Come on think, wait. When he turned the ground into spike he had to touch the floor first. He must need to use his hands to use his quirk. If I can get rid of his hands then he won't be able to regenerate. Izuka looked up at the enormous monster and at Overhaul's top half located at the very top. Now I just need to figure out how to get there. Another tendril came down to try and squash him and Izuka got an idea. Izuka dodged the attack before taking his chain and wrapping it around the concrete tendril. Then he turned his bike around and pulled with all his might throwing himself and his bike high into the air and landing on Overhaul. Perfect. It wouldn't be so easy though the ground Izuka was riding on rose up and more tendrils surrounded him. Izuka took his chain and flared it in a circle cutting down any tendrils that got in his way as he neared Overhaul's upper half. Suddenly Izuka was in the air falling along with his bike as the part of Overhaul he was riding on disappeared. What? Izuka fell and another tendril came and smacked him down further into a crater. Overhaul sent more and more tendrils to pummel and crush Izuku into bone marrow. Before he could another massive explosion destroyed all the tendrils forcing Overhaul to have to regenerate. In the crater was Izuku holding up his shotgun. Small cracks had formed in his skull and his bike was on its side next to him. Climbing him isn't going to work. I need to find another way quick. A few more attacks like that and I'm done for. Izuku looked up at Overhaul and saw something above him. News helicopters. That's it. Izuka picked up his bike and sat back on. Overhaul not wasting any more time sent another tendril down to attack Izuka which Izuka dogged before performing the same maneuver as last time landing back on Overhaul. Overhaul makes that part of him disappear but Izuka is ready this time and uses his flames to boost himself in the air before taking his chain and latching it to one of the news copters circling the two and pulls himself higher into the air. Overhaul sees this and tries to attack the helicopter with one of his tendrils, but Izuku shoots its base with his shotgun causing it to collapse. Izuku rockets into the air past the helicopter high into the air. Overhaul panicked and sent a dozen tendrils at him, all at once. Izuku used his chain that pulled himself down onto one of the tendrils narrowly avoiding another one then he destroyed two more tendrils by slicing them with his chain and destroyed three oncoming ones with his gun. In a last-ditch effort, Overhaul formed an enormous bird head and swallowed Izuku whole. This didn't last however as a bright green light leaked from the head's mouth and cracks formed all over it until it exploded leaving a cloud of green flames. And from that cloud came Izuku's chain as it wrapped around Overhaul's waist. And before Overhaul could react his entire top half was ripped off and flung directly at Izuku. Overhaul and Izuku met in the middle of the sky. The last thing Overhaul heard was. Burn! Izuku opened his jaw and released a massive torrent of emerald flame, reducing the leader of the Yakuza to ash in the wind. 
As the flames died down Izuka let himself fall. He hit the ground with a thud creating a smaller creator in the massive hole where the Yakuza base once was and he looked up as Overhaul's monster body fell apart and came crashing down. Izuku entire body hurt. This was so much worse than anything Bakugo had done to him. He wasn't sure if it was emotional exhaustion or physical exhaustion but he really wanted to shut his eyes. Wait. What happened to the little girl? With Krano and Eri. Kai had lost. He had lost and was dead. As was all of Yakuza now. All except him. He was here alone with Eri in a secret lab a few miles away from the base. It was just him. And it was all that, that thing's fault. Kai. I swear I will avenge you. He looked at Eri walked up to the scared girl. First things first I will need to create a new formula for taking quirks. One that will work on that thing. He said taking off his hood revealing his clock hand hair. Eri backed away slowly and closed her eyes as his hair extended and cut her arm. Spilling her blood on his hair. Perfect. Now to get to work. Oh and don't think of running away you'll be slowed down for quite some time so dash. Knock knock. Krano turned his head towards the door. That's impossible. The only people who know of this location are Yakuza members and they are all dead. Unless. The door burst open and Izuku walked in terrifying the occupants of the room. How? Krano yelled. How did you find me? Whenever the blood of the innocent is spilled, I will come. Krano looked at Eri realizing what he meant. Innocent! That girl is a monster! She dash. Izuku grabbed him by the throat, cutting him off. There are only two monsters here. You. And me. And with that, the last of the Yakuza was turned to ash. Izuku turned his gaze to the terrified girl who was now freed of Krano's quirk and quivering in fear in the corner. Izuku walked up to the girl and crouched down beside her. Eri closed her eyes again and waited for the pain. But it never came. Are you okay? asked a gentle voice. Eri opened her eyes and where the skeleton once was instead was a green-haired boy. His face was covered in cut and bruises and the side of his head we bleeding pretty badly. His eyes looked tired but also contained something Eri had not seen before. Genuine concern. Eri didn't know what was going on so she just nodded her head. Good. And with that Izuka fell over and passed out. Izuka was back at his house sitting on his sofa. What? Izuka looked around and got up. He walked into the kitchen and there he saw his mother working away inside the kitchen like she never died. And Moem. Izuka started running towards her but before he could even make it two steps before he heard something. Fire. Izuka looked behind him and saw that his footsteps left a trail of green flames. No! No, 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 no! It was then Izuka noticed her was not in his human form but rather his demonic one. More flames spread from his feet as they started to engulf the house but Inko continued cooking like nothing was wrong. Mom, run! Izuka reached out to grab his mother, but the second he touched her, she burst into flames. No! Back in the real world. No! Izuka awoke, with a jolt shifting into his demonic form. Izuka breathed heavily despite this form not needing air. He looked around and realized that it was just a nightmare. Except it wasn't really. His mother was still dead and it was still his fault. Izuku shifted back into human form. Tears started rolling down his face as he began to cry. While killing the Yakuza had served as a good outlet for his rage his sadness and guilt still remained. Mom, he whispered. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. As he was crying he heard a sniffling behind him. Izuku turned his head to see Eri with tears in her eyes as well. Oh right. I almost forgot the little girl. I have to be strong. At least for a little longer. Izuka took a deep breath and wiped his tears. Uh, hello? He said nervously. The girl didn't say anything instead choosing to just quiver in fear. I'm not going to hurt you, Izuka said gently. I came to save you. The girl looked at him confused. W-Y. I'm a monster. I don't deserve to be saved. Izuka remembered what Krano said before he killed him. Those bastards. They tortured a little girl and called her the monster. 
Putting aside his anger Izuku approached the little girl. You are not a monster, he told her. Eri eyes widened as these were the first kind words she had ever received. But, but they said dash. Izuka cut her off. Those were bad people. They hurt and stole from and killed innocent people. Nothing they said about you was true. More tears spilled out as I couldn't understand why he was being so nice to her. But dash. No buts, Izuka said cutting her off again. Do you know how I found you? Eri shook her head no. I have an ability that lets me know when the blood of the innocent is spilled and where to find the person who did it, Izuku explained. Eri's eyes widened as she realized what this implied. Izuku smiled at her gently. If you were a monster then I wouldn't have been able to find you. You are not a monster. Eri cried. She was so confused but at the same time slightly happy which due to how rare happiness was for her confused her even more. Her horn started to extend, and her body started glowing green. Izuku instinctively wrapped his arm around the girl to comfort her. Eri realized what was happening. If he touched her he was going to disappear. Wait! She cried but Izuku's arms had already made contact. And then Izuku transformed into his demonic form. Eri panicked partly because she was touching him and thought he was going to disappear and partly because his fire was touching her but she quickly realized something was off. He wasn't disappearing and his fire which had just burned Krano to ash instead felt warm and comforting. Izuka realized he transformed and had also freaked out a little, but he saw that his flames were not hurting her. I guess they only burn what I want them to. That must be why my clothes didn't catch fire. Seeing this Izuka went all in and hugged her with everything he had as Eri for the first time felt a gentle touch. She cried. She wrapped her arms around his waist and cried into his chest. All her fears and pains she let loose in Izuka's comforting embrace as the two glowed green. After about half an hour Eri started to calm down and the green glow faded. This caused Izuka to return to his human form. My curse. Eri sniffed. It didn't work. You're still here. Curse? Izuka asked. My quirk. Eri answered. Overhaul said it was a curse. A disease. Izuka clenched his teeth. Well, he is a lair. No quirk is a curse. Tell me, um. I never actually asked for your name. It's Eri, right? Eri nodded. Well, my name is Izuka Midoriya. Eri. What is your quirk? Eri looked at him fearfully. It's overhaul said it rewinds people. I, I made Papa disappear. Eri started to cry again as Izuka was in shock. Rewinds people? What does that mean? Does it make them younger? She said she made her father disappear so I guess so? That is a dangerous quirk, but still, no one let alone a little girl deserves this. Izuka shook his head and tightened his embrace. Eri, did you do it on purpose? Izuka asked her. Eri looked up at him fear still present in her eyes. And no. Then it's not your fault, Izuka said patting her on the head. What? Eri looked at him confused. Why didn't he hate her? She still couldn't understand. All children your age have problems controlling their quirks. It's not your fault, Eri. Eri looked at him like he had ten heads and asked. Why? This time it was Izuka's turn to be confused. Why what? Why are you being so nice to me? Eri cried. Izuka looked at her confused before putting on a kind smile. Because you deserve it. Eri didn't know how to respond. No one had ever been nice to her. At least no honestly. This person. He was so nice. Eri clung onto him not letting go for dear life in fear that this was all a dream and overhaul was still alive and the boy would disappear. Izuka smiled at this adorable sight before realizing he should probably bring her home. Eri. I know you said your father was gone but is your mother still around? He asked. Eri flinched. Mama, didn't want me anymore. If Eri had any tears left she would most likely still be crying. Which reminded Izuka he should probably get her something to drink. All right then. Eri, I'm going to bring you to the police station where Dash. No. Eri hugged him tighter and Izuka grunted in pain as Eri's horn was hurting his already bruised ribs. The police are bad. I saw Overhaul taking to them and he gives them a bunch of money. Izuka sighed. 
Great. Corrupt police. I'll have to deal with that later. Well, then I'll bring you to the heroes then, Dash. Ari hugged harder. They're being paid off too, aren't they? Ari nodded. Izuka groaned. Well, at least that explains why no one showed up when I was fighting Overhaul. Izuka wondered what to do next when Ari asked. Can I, can I stay with you, please? She looked so unsure about asking that but her eyes were so full of hope. Izuka sighed. He knew saying yes was a bad idea. He had no home. No money. He was dealing with his own issues and was probably really mentally unstable. He also knew that there was no way he would be able to say no. Of course, Izuka said. Eri's eyes widened. Ah, really? Izuka smiled. Yes. Eri sunk her head into his chest and muttered a thousand thank yous. Izuka's heart melted at this, and he picked the girl up and held her in his arms. Let's see if I can find you something to eat. Turns out there was indeed food in the bunker lab. The whole place was the size of a small house and was located underground. It contained a small bedroom with one bed and a tea, well as a kitchen of sorts that only had a refrigerator, a stove, a few pantries, and a sink, as well as one bathroom and a lab. The refrigerator and the pantries were stocked with all kinds of food and water. Most likely this place was meant so the Yakuza could perform tests undisturbed, but seeing as they were all dead now Izuka figured this place would be his new house of sorts. Given how out of the way it was it seemed like a perfect place for a murderous vigilante to live. He made him an airy like five sandwiches each because they were both really hungry and that was all Izuku had the energy to make. Izuku also found some medical supplies and used them to patch himself up as Eri watched. Izuku took Eri and put her down in the bed. All right, I know you're tired so just go to sleep. I'll be in the other room. You promise you'll be here when I wake up? She asked. Izuku gave her a smile. I promise. With that Izuku turned off the lights and walked into the kitchen. He sat down. Now he could grieve. Izuku let the tears roll down his eyes as he picked up where he left off. Why are you crying? Izuku turned his head and Eri was standing there. Eri, what are you doing up? He asked. Eri looked down. I couldn't sleep. I was scared. Then I heard you crying. I'm sorry. No, no, Eri, it's okay. I'm just, I did something bad, Eri. Izuka confessed too emotionally spent to continue being strong. Bad? Eri asked. What could he have possibly done that was bad? To Eri, he was the nicest person on earth. I, I killed my mom. I did something I wasn't supposed to and she died. I'm a monster. Tears were now pouring down faster than he could wipe them away. Eri looked at him for a moment before asking. Did you do it on purpose? What? No, Izuka said panicked. Then it's not your fault, Eri said simply going up and hugging the crying boy. Izuka was confused for a second before releasing what just happened. You're like me, Eri said looking up at him. So if you're a monster then I'm a monster. Am I a monster? Eri looked at him fearfully worried he would say yes. No, of course not, Izuka said instantly. Then you're not a monster. Eri said. Checkmate. Izuka couldn't believe he had just been out logiced by a girl who couldn't be any older than seven. Izuka did truly believe that Eri wasn't at fault for her father's death. But at the same time, he did believe he was responsible for his mother's death. Sure there were differences in what happened and how but in the end the result was that neither of them wanted to kill their parent but did by accident. Izuka was at a loss for thought. And so he laughed. He laughed at the fact little girl made him feel like such an idiot, and his tears of sadness turned into tears of laughter. Eri looked at him confused as to what was so funny. Izuka's laughter stopped, and he looked down at Eri and smiled. Eri could tell this smile was much more real than the ones before. The pain in his eyes was still there but it seemed like there was less of it than before. And for the first time, Eri felt proud. Izuka picked her up once more. Thank you, Eri. I feel much better now. Eri nodded and Izuku walked back to the bedroom and put her in bed once more. Izuku turned to leave but Eri grabbed his shirt before he could. See could I sleep with you? Please? She asked fearfully. Izuku looked at her for a moment before nodding. 
Eri moved over and Izuka crawled into the bed. Immediately Eri nestled herself into his chest holding on to him tight. Izuka noticed she still looked slightly afraid before realizing the problem. She's afraid of the dark. Without another thought, Izuku ignited himself. He didn't fully transform, he just made some small flames across his body turning him into a human candle. Eri's fears eased as the girl slowly drifted off. And for the first time, a smile formed on her face. Izuku's heart melted once more, and he felt something for the first time. Pride. He saved this girl. He is the reason she's smiling. A single tear went down his face as he pulled her close. Thank you, Eri. And so he drifted off to sleep. Izuka and All Might in his skinny form were walking to Izuka's house. All Might was carrying the exhausted girl on his back. Good thing she was light. All Might, Izuka said tiredly. You didn't have to carry me. You're right. I didn't have to carry you, is what I would say if you didn't overexert yourself and collapse again. All Might replied annoyed. Sorry, Izuka groaned. All Might sighed. I can't be too hard on her. After all, I acted the same way when I was her age. All Might. I really am sorry but I have to be better. Izuka said looked away from the number one hero. Young Midoriya you are already strong. All Might reassured. With your telekinesis alone you are a force to be reckoned with. And when you receive one for all I have no doubt you'll be the top of your class. But I need to be more than that. Izuka said without missing a beat. I need to be the best. For Izuku. Guilt. It was an emotion that All Might was familiar with but never more so than now. You need to tell her what you said. All Might thought fearfully. His train of thought was derailed as a certain smell came to his nose. Smoke. All Might looked up and with his surprisingly good eyesight saw in the distance, a fire. Coming from Izuka's house. All Might? Izuka said wondering what was going on. Without another word, Almighty buffed up and rocketed away stopping just in front of the girl home. Izuka saw her house covered in flames and looked on in horror. M.O.M. Izuka cried. All Might set Izuka down away from the fire and ran into the burning residence. Izuka tried to get up but her limbs refused to listen and instead all she could do was watch and cry. All Might searched through the house looking for the girl's mother when he saw a large hole in the wall. Walking through it he found the unmoving body of Inko Midoriya. No. Please. She's been through enough. All Might crouched down and looked for any sign that the women was still alive. He found none. He held his head down and mourned the women he never met. Izuka. I have failed you again. All Might picked up the woman's body and carried her away. Izuka, who could barely see through her tears, saw All Might's figure coming towards her. It was blurry, but it looked like he was holding someone. Mom. Izuka smiled as relief filled her. But as All Might came closer, she saw something that destroyed that relief. She wasn't moving. Out of desperation, Izuka used her quirk to force herself to her feet and ran towards the hero, ignoring the pain throughout her entire body. All Might! Izuka yelled, facing him. Is. Is she? All Might looked at her tears dropping from his eyes. I'm sorry. Izuka dropped to her knees a measurable sadness and rage running through her. Once again all she could do in the face of loss was scream. Rilla. Hours later. The police had arrived on the scene and the firemen showed up to put out the flames. Izuka was brought to the Bakugo's house as they were her godparents. All Might went to the police station where he asked his friend. Detective Naomesa Tsukachi, what had happened? Well, from what we can tell, the fire was started during a cooking incident. Something went wrong with her stove, the detective explained. It seemed like someone tried to save her by taking her outside and putting out the flames, but unfortunately they were too late. How do you know that? All Might asked. The burns on her body would have been far more severe unless someone put them out. Not to mention Mrs. Midoriya had no means of breaking down a wall. Naomesa said. Do you know where her father is? All Might asked wanting to know where the man was. Dead. He died when his children were six. Naomesa said with a heavy sigh. That poor girl. It's like the universe has it out for her. All Might nodded. Guilt eating away at him. 
I can't imagine things will get much better, though, Naomesa elaborated. Her godparents are the Bakugos and formed the file. I read it seemed like her and the boy have a bad history. A really bad history. Bakugo. All might remember that name. Izuka talked about him a few times and from what he heard he sounded like someone he did not want Izuka to be around right now. She suffered enough. What if I took her in? All might asked. Naomesa's eyes widened. Wait, are you serious? Tosh, if the media ever found out about this, there would be a connection between you and the girl and one for all could be Dash. Please, All Might said cutting him off. I can't fail her again. Tears poured out of his sunken eyes. Naomesa sighed. He had known Tashinori for a while and knows that once he starts blaming himself for something he won't feel better until he's done something to balance it out. You would have to get permission from the Bakugos as they are her current legal guardians, Naomesa explained. All Might wiped the tears out of his eyes. How do I do that? I can set up a meeting between you two if you would like, Naomesa said. All Might smiled at his friend. Thank you. A few days later. Sitting in the living room of the Bakugo household were All Might in civilian form and Naomesa. Across from them was a very stern-looking Natsuki Bakugo. Izuka was up in the guest room. She had barely left it since she got here. Katsuki was in his room doing his best to avoid Izuka as well as people in general. And Masaru was buying food, leaving Natsuki alone with the hero and detective. So, you want to explain to me why I should let some random asshole I've never met take care of my best friend's kid? She said. Both men were off put by the bluntness and profanity. Naomesa was first to give a response. Well, Mrs. Mr. Yagi is dash. All Might cut him off by standing up and revealing his buff form. Naomesa was blown back. Tosh! What are you doing? Whatever it takes, was his response. Mitsuki was unimpressed. So you have a shape-shifting quirk. So what? Naomesa was ready to try and save face by saying yes, but before he could All Might ran behind Mitsuki at speeds so fast either could see him. Mrs. I assure you I am the real All Might he said from behind her. Mitsuki freaked out. What? Then what the fuck was with that skinny thing? All Might reverted back into his smaller form. This is my true form you could say. I keep it secret from the public for self-explanatory reasons. Mitsuki raised an eyebrow. Then why the fuck are you showing me? Because I can't fail her anymore, All Might confessed. Mitsuki looked confused by this. What the hell does that mean? All Might looked at the floor between his knees as he sat back down. I couldn't save Mrs. Midoriya from the fire. Mitsuki's confused look stayed on her face. Yeah? And? Inko's death was horrible. But in no fucking way was it your fault. Even you can't save everyone. Naomesa flinched. He knew what was going to happen next. Mitsuki's confused face turned into a suspicious scowl. There's something else. I can see it on your faces. Well, come on, spit it out. All Might took a deep breath and swallowed his guilt. When I met Izuka, I found her crying on a park bench. All Might explained. I went up to her in my hero form and asked her what was wrong. She started freaking out and fanderling and I got a sense of deja vu. She looked very similar to a boy I had met only a couple of weeks ago. Mitsuki's eyes widened at what All Might just implied. She told me that her brother had committed suicide a couple of weeks ago. All Might continued. Her brother was indeed the one I had met on the day of his death. Wait. Mitsuki butted in. So you feel bad cause you couldn't stop him from killing himself? Don't. No one knew he was gonna do something like that. And you just met him that same day. All Might gulped. That's not all. When I met Izuka he asked me something. Can I be a hero without a quirk? Suddenly everything made more sense. And you told him no, Mitsuki said already knowing where this was going. All Might nodded. The room was silent for a moment. Then Mitsuki got up and slapped All Might across the face. Gah! All Might spit out some blood. Mitsuki then sat back down and said, All right, you can take her. To say the two men were shocked would be an understatement. I'm sorry, what? Naomesa said his mouth hanging open. You can take Izuka, Mitsuki reiterated. 
Mitsuki looked at the two's dumbfounded faces and explained. You weren't the first to tell Izuka that his dreams were just that. Dreams. Basically, everyone but his sister told him that, and even she cringed whenever he brought it up. You were just the straw that broke the camel's back. He looked up to you. Hearing his hero tell him that was probably too much for the poor kid. But Dash. All Might tried to get a word in but Mitsuki wasn't having it. That's why I slapped you dumbass. You should know that as a hero your words have weight. Mitsuki continued. All Might looked down. Ashamed. But, Mitsuki went on, you only knew the kid for probably what five minutes? You had no way of knowing what Izuku's life was like. You probably said that to keep him from doing something dumb and getting hurt. Right? Well, yes, but Dash. Well, there you go, Mitsuki said cutting All Might off again. You're no more responsible for Izuku's death than my brat. All Might was so confused. Naomesa coughed to remind the two that he was indeed still there. Well, that's all well and good, Mrs. Bakugo, but can you explain why you're choosing to give Izuka up so quickly? Mitsuki groaned. If I had to guess, it's the same reason you wanted to take her. My brat's son! The room went quiet again until Mitsuki elaborated. Look, I know my son has been an ass. And because of that, he and Izuka never got along, and the last thing that girl needs right now is stress. Look, I may not 100% trust you with kids after what you said to Izuku, but you're still all might. I know you care about her otherwise, you wouldn't have revealed your secret. Plus you're my only other option anyway. The two men didn't know what to say. Everything she said was correct but the way she said it was so blunt. Well, Naomesa said recovering from his stupor. I'm glad we could come to an agreement. We'll pick up Izuka tomorrow morning then. Thank you for being so understanding. Have a nice day. And with that, the two men got up and were about to leave when Natsuki stopped them. Wait just one fucking second. The two men did just that. Have you told Izuka about what you just told me? About Izuku? It wasn't a question. She already knew the answer given how he was so hesitant to tell her about it. All Might shuffled his feet in discomfort. Um, not yet. I had been training her for the past few weeks, and she knows about this form. I had been meaning to tell her but... But you're a massive pussy. She sighed. You can go. She said pointing at Naomesa. You stay. She said pointing at All Might. The two looked hesitant but the look on Mitsuki's face indicated she was not taking no for an answer. Naomesa left leaving All Might and Mitsuki alone. Without another word, Mitsuki went upstairs. All Might nervously looked around the room. He knew what was going to happen and he was not ready. Mitsuki came back down, and behind her was Izuka. Her green hair was not in her usual ponytail, but instead, it was messy and all over the place. Her normally green eyes were now red and had bags underneath it. Her clothes were messy and dirty as if she hadn't changed in days and her streaks were still present on her cheeks. Overall, she was a mess. She looked at him, and her eyes came to life with befuddlement. Good news, Izuka. All Might here has agreed to take you in. Mitsuki said not bothering to explain the situation. Huh, she said. Um, well due to how you spoke of young Bakugo I thought it would be a bad idea to keep you two under the same household. So I asked Mrs. Bakugo if I could take custody of you. In order to gain her trust, I revealed to her my secret. Izuka looked at him in disbelief. You, you revealed your secret. For me? All Might gave her a sad smile. Of course. I would show the whole world this form if it meant making you happy. Izuka said nothing as she just looked at All Might in shock. Then tears once again rolled down her cheeks as she ran up and hugged the skinny man. T thank you. All Might returned the hug as the two embraced. After a few seconds, Mitsuki coughed getting All Might's attention. She gave him a look telling him what he had to do. All Might breathed in deeply tightening the hug. Young Midoriya. No. Izuka, I have kept something from you. Something I should have told you a while ago, but I didn't have the strength to say it. Izuka took her head off of his chest and looked at him. What? Your brother. I met him. Izuka looked at him confused. You met Izuku? When? He definitely would have said something about Dash. It was the day he died. Izuka's eyes widened and she broke up the hug. 
What happened? Her voice was deadly serious. All Might looked at her, his eyes full of remorse. He, he asked me if he could be a hero. Even if he was quirkless. Oh. Izuka didn't need to hear the rest. The room was quiet as Izuka digested this information. I, I understand if you don't want to come with me. I just want you to know. All Might's tears returned as he faced the last living family member of a boy, who in his mind he had killed. I am so, so sorry. Izuka didn't say anything for a moment before she turned to Mitsuki. And Mitsuki, could we have some privacy? The girl asked. Mitsuki nodded and went upstairs. After that came another few minutes of silence. Did you mean to? Izuka said suddenly. What? All Might asked. Did you mean to kill him? Izuka reiterated. What? No. Of course not. I had meant to discourage him from putting himself in danger, came All Might's panicked response. Then it's not your fault, she said without hesitation. All Might stared at her with silent shock. She should hate me. Why? How can she be so forgiving? Izuka sat down on the sofa and glared at the ceiling where unknown to All Might Katsuki's room was located. There are a lot of people who are responsible for my brother's death. So many I can't even remember them all. But you are not one of them. All Might had nothing to say to that. Izuka patted the spot next to her on the sofa, signaling him to sit which he gladly complied with tired from the emotional weight he had been holding on his chest for weeks. Izuka rested her head on his shoulder and for a few minutes, the two of them sat in comfortable silence. Hey. All Might? Yes. Can we go home now? Of course. Bakugo wished he was someone's else. This was strange since if you looked at the boy two months ago, he wouldn't want to be anyone but him. But when Deku died the way Bakugo looked back on his life in a different light. The times he put Deku in his place now seemed like nothing more than senseless beatings on someone who couldn't even defend himself. The times he made fun of Deku, saying that he could never be a hero now seemed cruel. As Bakugo looked back he started to see just how much damage he did to Izuka both physically and mentally. Bakugo used to have a rather simple thought process. Heroes win. Villains lose. But who won here? Izuka didn't. He was dead and Bakugo certainly didn't feel like a winner. No one. No one won anything. This was all pointless. And the worst part was Deku. No Izuka didn't even do anything wrong. For so long he had thought that Deku was looking down on him, thinking that a quirkless loser could compete with him. He thought that all the praises, all the looks of admiration were all fake. That Deku was making fun of him. But if that was the case, why would he kill himself? Bakugo was forced to face the reality that everything he knew was wrong. And now all those compliments sank into him like hot knives as he now knew they were all genuine and that he beat the shit out of someone who was once his friend for literally no fucking reason. Bakugo walked to school that day and as usual, all eyes were on him. Except this time things were different. They looked at him as if he just killed someone. Because you did? They looked at him like he was the scum of the earth. Because you are. They looked at him like they could be next. They might be. Bakugo sat down at his desk while the other students around him whispered. I didn't think he would actually do it. I always knew Bakugo was a villain. Someone like that can never be a hero. They all whispered and acted like they didn't all laugh and make fun of Izuka themselves. But they never went as far as you. The teacher walked in. But it wasn't the same teacher as before. Ah, Bakugo. Welcome back, the teacher said. You have absent for a little over a month. Understandable considering how close your family was to the Midorias. Well, you should know that you old teacher was deemed unfit to teach after the incident so I'm here to fill in until they can find a proper replacement. That makes sense. All right, class, I have an announcement, the teacher said. As you all know, Izuka Midoriya's brother has passed. However, something just as unfortunate happened and yesterday her mother was unfortunately killed in a fire. She will be moving to live with a friend and as such will no longer be attending this school. The eyes of all the students went wide as they began to whisper once more. What the hell? What kind of bad luck do you have to have for that to happen? Luck my ass Bakugo probably did it. 
Yeah, that asshole has always headed out for the Midorias. She died in a fire. His quirk can start fires. Coincidence? They think I killed auntie. I wouldn't. You didn't think you would kill Izuka either, but look what happened. After lunch, there was an anti-bullying seminar. Apparently, there had been a lot of these after Izuka died. The school must be trying to save face. And they had one just on the day you came back. How subtle. After school Bakugo walked home. He walked slowly into his room and crawled into his bed. He stayed there for hours, reflecting on his deed, on his life, until his mother walked in. She looked at him and sighed. It had been getting worse. At first, he was just shocked. He still went about his day as normal, but everything he did was half-hearted. Then he started zoning out staring at nothing while lost in thought. He started calling her mom instead of old hag. He did what he was told without uttering a single curse. Then he just shut down, going into his room and only coming out to eat. This had to stop. She walked over and sat on the bed next to her son. I'm not gonna say that you're blameless. Because you aren't. You didn't listen to me when I told you to stop. And now look what happened. Katsuki didn't move. But, Mitsuki continued, you're not completely at fault either. There were a lot of reasons Izuku did what he did. There may even be more than I know of. But still, it's not like you told him to jump. For the first time since he was six, Bakugo Katsuki flinched. Mitsuki felt her heart skip a beat. Katsuki, you didn't tell him to jump, right? Bakugo turned his head to look at her, his eyes haunted by his own mistake. I didn't think he would. The room was silent. Inko, I'm sorry. I failed as a parent. Mitsuki didn't even know how to react. She didn't think her own son could ever do something so horrible. So she just stood there staring at him in shock. I thought he was looking down on me all this time. It pissed me off. I thought that he was trying to taunt me every time he said I was awesome or amazing or some shit. But if that's true, why? Why the fuck would he kill himself? Tears started making their way down Katsuki's cheeks. Mitsuki had not seen her son cry since he was five. Why? Why did he let me do that to him? Why did he keep following me? Why did he keep saying how great of hero I was gonna be even after I kicked his ass into the dirt? Bakugo was screaming now but he didn't care. He was letting out all the rage, sadness, confusion, and regret he had felt since Izuku died. Why? Why was I such an idiot? Why did I say that? I didn't want him to fucking jump. So why? Why the fuck did I say that? Why didn't I fucking listen when you told me to stop? Why didn't I fuck didn't I stop when I saw the look on Auntie Inko's face whenever he came home hurt? Why didn't I get the hint when Izuka started calling me a monster? Why? He couldn't continue. He just cried. It was then Mitsuki knew what she had to do. She would ground him. She would yell his ear off. She would beat his ass till it turned crimson. But she would do all that later. Because right now her son was hurt. And there was no fucking way she was going to leave him like that. So that night Mitsuki Bakugo held her son in her arms and for the first time since he was five. He led her. Later, after Bakugo had gone to sleep Mitsuki went to her bedroom and grabbed her phone. She dialed a number and hoped the person she was calling was still awake. Andi? What happened why are you calling so late? The voice was none other than Izuka who had been staying up late training. Izuka, I just talked to Katsuki and I'm sorry, Mitsuki said. So he told you what he said, Izuka said her tone getting darker. Mitsuki's eyes widened. You knew? How many people were keeping secrets from her? First All Might came down and said he told Izuka he couldn't be a hero. Then her son said he told Izuka to kill himself. And now Izuka said she knew about that the whole time. Seriously, what the fuck? Yeah, he said it right in front of me, Izuka said. And I threw him out a window. Why didn't you tell anyone? The school gave me after-school detention for... You know, throwing another student out the window with my quirk. By the time I got out Izuku was, telling someone wouldn't have done any good at that point. Still you should have said something. I was worried you wouldn't let him go to Yue. What? 
Mitsuki was confused now. Why would she want Katsuki to get what he wants after what he did? Izuku always thought he would make a great hero. Almost every time we talked about heroes Izuku fantasized about him and Katsuki being friends again while they took down villains. Obviously that will never happen, but I want to at least make some part of that dream come true. So for that Katsuki needs to become a hero. Oh, was Mitsuki's response. She wasn't really sure if this was a bad sign or not. Anyway, please let him go to Yue Auntie. For Izuku. Ah, uh, sure. Mitsuki felt really uncomfortable about where this could be going. Thank you. Please make sure he gets back to training. I want him to be at his best when I permanently beat him into second place. And there was the red flag. Anyway, I have to get back to training. Bye, Auntie. Click. Mitsuki sighed as she put down the phone. Okay, now I have to find both of them a therapist. A few weeks later. Inko's funeral was much like Izuku's. It even had the same amount of people with All Might attending. Or at least that's how it looked. In actuality, there were two more people in the background. Izuku and Eri looked at the funeral from a few yards away behind a large tree. Izuku had his hood up so no one could recognize him and Eri was sitting on his bike watching the whole thing unfold. Why don't you go closer? She asked in a whisper. Izuku had a hard time answering that question. In truth, he still felt responsible for his mother's death and felt that everyone was better off without him. But he couldn't tell her that. Because it's better this way, he said vaguely. How? The girl asked confused. You'll understand when you're older, Izuka replied. It wasn't really a lie. She very well might understand what he was doing when she got to his age Izuku just hoped she would forget about by then. Izuku and Eri watched as they lowered his mother's body into the grave next to his which they had fixed after his resurrection. Izuku was extremely confused as to what All Might was doing here and why he seemed so close to Izuka. He watched as everyone said their goodbyes and the Bakugos left. Afterward, it was just Izuka and All Might. I'm sorry I wasn't there, Izuka said looking at the grave remorsefully. If I had I could have saved you. All Might put his hand on her shoulder. Don't start blaming yourself, Izuka. There was nothing that could have been done. Guilt stabbed Izuka in the heart as he had to try hard to keep himself from crying. Eri saw this and went up and hugged his leg. Izuka smiled at this and looked back at the two with renewed strength. You're right, Izuka said before turning back to the graves. Don't worry. Mom. Izuku. I'll be the best number one hero the world has ever seen. I swear. I'll make you both proud. Nope. Any emotional defense Izuku had broken apart, and tears spilled from his eyes. Izuka. I'm sorry. You'll be better off without me. Hey, Izuku? Eri said. Yeah, Eri. Izuku responded trying to wipe the tears from his eyes. Why does that lady look like you? She asked. Oh, she is my sister. Izuku answered. Eri looked at him puzzled. What is a sister? Damn you overhaul. Um, a sister is. Well, a sister is someone you are very close to. Most of the time they have the same parents, but not all the time. When you do have the same parents you'll probably look similar. Izuku explained trying to encompass every possible definition. Eri's eyes lit up. Does that mean you're my sister? For how excited she was Izuku was tempted to say yes. Boys can't be sisters. The boy version of a sister is called a brother, Izuka said. Oh, then you're my brother? Eri asked. Izuka smiled. Do you want me to be? Eri nodded. Izuka gave her a pat on the head. Then yes. Since I'm older that makes me your big brother and you're my little sister. Eri smiled. A rare sight that always warmed his technically dead heart. Eri felt a warmth inside her chest. Having a big brother made her really happy for some reason. But then a thought popped into her head and she frowned again. But! You already have a sister. Izuku shook his head at this. You can have more than one brother or sister, Eri. Oh, Eri said understandingly. If he weren't at his mom's funeral, Izuku would have laughed at her naivete. With that explanation done, Izuku turning back to his other sister and All Might. All Might was leaving and Izuku was following him. 
Izuku was now really confused as to what was going on with those two but he trusted All Might. When they left Izuku came out of hiding and removed his hood. He and Eri walked up to his mother's tombstone. Izuku kneeled down and stared at the writing. Here lies Inko Midoriya. Friend. Mother. Mom. I'm sorry I can't take back what I did. If I knew the deal would cost you your life I wouldn't have taken it. But I can't change the past. But I can help the future. Izuku signaled Eri to come and she stood next to him. Mom this is Eri. She was in a bad place with bad people. I saved her. I know that doesn't make up for what I did but I hope that one day, if I save enough people, one day you'll forgive me. The tears returned with force and poured from Izuka's eyes once more. And maybe one day, I'll forgive myself. Eri hugged him once more. Izuka smiled tears still pouring. He picked up Eri and rose back up. Goodbye. Mom. As Izuka walked away Eri waved at the grave. By Izuka's mama. Izuka ruffled her hair. You are too good for this world, Eri. Eri didn't know what that meant but she liked it when Izuku did stuff like ruffle her hair or hug her. Whenever one of the Yakuza members touched her it was forceful and always hurt a little. And whenever Overhaul touched her it hurt a lot. When Izuku touched her it was always so gentle and caring and when he was in his skeleton form he was always so warm. For the first time, Eri found herself smiling twice in one day. She was so glad Izuka murdered all the Yakuza. They walked back to Izuka's bike, set Eri down on the seat, and then sat down in front of her. Eri wrapped her arms around him and Izuka picked up the motorcycle helmet on the ground next to them and placed it on Eri's head. The helmet was pink with butterflies on it and was far too big for Eri. Izuka bought it with money he took from some drug dealers he killed. Izuka put his hood back up after making sure Eri wasn't going to fall the two rocketed away back home. Home. The former Yakuza hideout had been transformed into a comfy living space for Izuku and Eri. Eri insisted on sharing the same room and bed, so the bedroom mostly consisted of hero merch that he and Eri lacked. The kitchen now had a small table with a basket of apples in the center. When Izuku first gave Eri an apple, she said it was the best thing she had ever tasted. In response, Izuku always made sure there were apples in the basket and apple juice in the fridge. Because Izuku was always willing to spoil her, and he had killed enough villains to have a large amount of money. Izuku had also got Eri multiple gaming consoles, including a computer to keep her occupied whenever he was out killing villains. After teaching her how to use them, he showed her a bunch of educational games that Eri immediately gravitated towards. Every time Izuku came from a busy day of manslaughter, Eri would always run up to him and tell him all the new things she learned, and Izuku would always listen with a smile on his face as he cleaned the blood off his clothes. Izuku had also bought a new TV and sofa, which was a nightmare to carry on a motorcycle and put into an underground hideout without anyone noticing, but somehow he managed. Before bed, Izuku and Eri sat down and watched hero fights on the news, and Izuku would analyze their quirks, causing him to go into a muttering storm and Eri would watch and jump in with her own analysis which while inaccurate and far-fetched were always cute. The lab had been turned into Izuka's workroom. Izuka kept his weapons and motorcycle there as well as all the medical supplies. He destroyed most of the formulas and beakers and burned all the papers after reading them. Izuka was slightly disturbed by how Eri had no problems walking into the room whenever he came in there considering the room always smells like blood. Eri had become much happier and more energetic since Izuka found her. She still wasn't used to smiling, but she was learning. Izuka made it his goal to make her smile at least once a day, although he had yet to make her laugh. He had gotten her a bunch of new clothes to replace the dirty dress he found her in. Most of them were hero-themed. After looking through Krano's papers, Izuka found that Eri's quirk wasn't just an age regression quirk, it was a biological rewind quirk, or just rewind for short. It could turn someone into a baby, or a monkey, or nothing. She could also destroy someone's quirk by rewinding their body to the point before humans had evolved and gained quirks. Ever since then Izuka had been trying to teach her how to control her quirk and act Eri was very grateful for. Izuku, on the other hand, hadn't really changed all too much. Thanks to being the spirit of vengeance Izuku didn't really have a problem with killing criminals. He treated it basically like community service which to him it was, even if he did take some money from his victims. Overall they were doing well for a boy who died, lost his mother and now has to kill criminals and a little girl who's been through hell. 
The two were sitting down watching the news when suddenly the picture on the screen changed from a group of heroes to Izuku in his skeleton form. Izuku went to get the remote to change the channel. He didn't like the idea or Eri watching the news talk about his job so whenever he came on Izuku changed the channel much to Eri's annoyance. Except this time the remote was gone. And Eri was smiling. Eri where did you put the remote? Izuku asked. Eri said nothing and kept watching the screen smiling at finally getting to see her new brother on the news. Thinking that people would praise him like they did the heroes. There were four more murders tonight. Or at least four that we know of the newswomen said. All signs point to the villain that had been terrorizing the city. Ayers simile faded and turned into a confused frown. Terrorizing? Villain? This skull-headed pyromaniac was been given many names on social media, the most popular one being Hell Flame. However, those people were swiftly sued by Endeavor for using the name of his quirk. So the police have decided to call him by his second most popular name Ghost Rider, said the newsman. Ghost Rider? Izuka thought. That sound like something from 1972. Ever since his first appearance destroying the Yakuza organization he has been murdering criminals left and right. Heroes have attempted to stop them but with his flaming motorcycle he has proved to fast for all who have tried. The newsman continued. Eri was starting to get really confused. Why are people trying to stop him? However number three Hero Hawks released a statement on this matter. A rare occasion which we will show you now. The image changed to show Hawks with a microphone looking as nonchalant as ever. Uh, yeah, Ghost Rider. I'll take care of it. And then he flew away. And the screen changed back to the news people. While the statement was brief it gives us hope that this maniac will finally be put behind bars. The newswomen said. But he doesn't need to be behind bars. Eri yelled at the TV. Izuka sighed and left to start looking for the remote elsewhere. I know I have hope, echoed the newsman. I can't wait till this is all behind us and this man faces the consequences for his actions. He didn't do anything wrong. He's helping. Eri screamed tears shining in her eyes. Now we have a special guest tonight whom we mentioned earlier. Ladies and gentlemen, it's number two hero Endeavor. The screen shifted to Endeavor sitting on a couch with another news lady. Hi, I'm Musa Teori here with Endeavor, she said introducing herself. First I would like to thank you for accepting this interview. You're welcome, Endeavor said looking like he didn't want to be here. I would like to ask you if you plan on helping Hawks take down the Ghost Rider? Teori asked. Endeavor glared at her. I don't need that layabout's help. I will deal with this villain like all the others. He's not a villain, Eri started pounding on the TV screen. Well, with both the number two and number three hero on the job, I'm sure, Dash. Boop. Eri looked around to find Izuku had found the remote. The bowl of apples. Really, Eri? I am ashamed I didn't find it sooner, Izuku said. Eri ran to him and Izuku knelt down to let her hug him. Why? Why are they saying such mean things? Eri cried into his torso. Izuku sighed. He knew this would happen eventually. He just hoped that it would have happened later. Eri, I'm not a hero. To be a hero you have to go to hero school and obtain a hero license. If you try to fight crime without a hero license then you are considered a vigilante, which is illegal. I would be a vigilante but because I kill people I am considered a villain, Izuku explained. But you save people, Eri argued. And you only kill bad people. Izuku shook his head. It doesn't matter Eri. You could save a thousand people and only kill one person and you would still be a villain. That's how the world works. That's not fair. You're not a villain. Overhaul was a villain and you're not like him. Eri screamed. Eri, regardless of everything else, I kill people. Yes, they do deserve it but not everyone sees it like that. You're not supposed to kill people. Even heroes are told to avoid killing if they don't have to. Why? If they hurt people they should die. Why is that a problem? Izuka stared at her speechless. Did she, did she just say that? It was then Izuka realized something. The only people Eri had ever known were killers. And him. The only person to ever be nice to her was a serial killer. No wonder killing was so normal to her. 
No wonder she was able to walk into rooms that smelled like blood and not even flinch. She was used to it. And even if she showed a problem with killing innocent people that didn't mean she felt bad for not so innocent people dying. Izuka pushed Eri back a bit and put his hands on her shoulders. Eri, killing is not normal. I do it because I have to. It's my job as the spirit of vengeance. But people shouldn't just kill because they feel like it. I know you may not understand this right now. But you will. I promise. Eri sniffed her head tilted in confusion. But but it's not fair. You saved people. You saved me. You should be a hero. A tear of joy ran down Izuka's cheek and a smile found a way onto his face. That was the first time anyone ever told him that. Thank you, Eri. Izuka looked at the clock. It read 11.30. He stood up and looked back at Eri. Hey, let's go to bed. Eri nodded and raised her arms telling Izuka she wanted to be picked up. Izuka did just that as he carried her to bed. He opened the bedroom door before closing it again. He turned off the lights and walked over to the bed. He placed her in the bed before crawling in there himself. Eri placed her arms around his waist and Izuka turned on his green flames. And in no time Eri was asleep. Izuka looked at her. She was holding on to him tighter than usual. I really need to get her to meet some new people. Of course, this was easier said than done. Because while Eri has happier and more energetic around him he had a feeling that she would not be the same way around other people. Not to mention the problem that was finding a person he could trust around Eri in the first place. He would get her a therapist but that would be even more difficult considering he was legally dead and Eri didn't legally exist. Izuka closed his eyes. Maybe I should get her a cat. Meanwhile elsewhere. A man watched the news feed and smiled. With how the media portrays him perhaps I can turn this incarnation of the spirit of vengeance into an ally. After all these years you still don't know how the spirit of vengeance works. Well, I am only human Blackheart. A demonic laugh echoed. Oh please. We both know you gave up your humanity long ago. All for one. The two old friends laughed at this before all for one brought up the elephant in the room. So then. How are we gonna kill this one? A few weeks later. Inko's funeral was much like Izuka's. It even had the same amount of people with all might attending. Or at least that's how it looked. In actuality, there were two more people in the background. Izuku and Eri looked at the funeral from a few yards away behind a large tree. Izuka had his hood up so no one could recognize him and Eri was sitting on his bike watching the whole thing unfold. Why don't you go closer? She asked in a whisper. Izuka had a hard time answering that question. In truth, he still felt responsible for his mother's death and felt that everyone was better off without him. But he couldn't tell her that. Because it's better this way, he said vaguely. How? The girl asked confused. You'll understand when you're older, Izuka replied. It wasn't really a lie. She very well might understand what he was doing when she got to his age Izuku just hoped she would forget about by then. Izuku and Eri watched as they lowered his mother's body into the grave next to his which they had fixed after his resurrection. Izuku was extremely confused as to what All Might was doing here and why he seemed so close to Izuka. He watched as everyone said their goodbyes and the Bakugos left. Afterward, it was just Izuka and All Might. I'm sorry I wasn't there, Izuka said looking at the grave remorsefully. If I had I could have saved you. All Might put his hand on her shoulder. Don't start blaming yourself, Izuka. There was nothing that could have been done. Guilt stabbed Izuka in the heart as he had to try hard to keep himself from crying. Eri saw this and went up and hugged his leg. Izuka smiled at this and looked back at the two with renewed strength. You're right, Izuka said before turning back to the graves. Don't worry. Mom. Izuku. I'll be the best number one hero the world has ever seen. I swear. I'll make you both proud. Nope. Any emotional defense Izuku had broken apart, and tears spilled from his eyes. Izuka. I'm sorry. You'll be better off without me. Hey, Izuku? Eri said. Yeah, Eri. Izuku responded trying to wipe the tears from his eyes. Why does that lady look like you? She asked. Oh, she is my sister. Izuku answered. Eri looked at him puzzled. 
What is a sister? Damn you overhaul. Um, a sister is. Well, a sister is someone you are very close to. Most of the time they have the same parents, but not all the time. When you do have the same parents you'll probably look similar. Izuku explained trying to encompass every possible definition. Eri's eyes lit up. Does that mean you're my sister? For how excited she was Izuku was tempted to say yes. Boys can't be sisters. The boy version of a sister is called a brother. Izuku said. Oh, then you're my brother? Eri asked. Izuku smiled. Do you want me to be? Eri nodded. Izuku gave her a pat on the head. Then yes. Since I'm older that makes me your big brother and you're my little sister. Eri smiled. A rare sight that always warmed his technically dead heart. Eri felt the warmth inside her chest. Having a big brother made her really happy for some reason. But then a thought popped into her head and she frowned again. But! You already have a sister. Izuku shook his head at this. You can have more than one brother or sister, Eri. Oh, Eri said understandingly. If he weren't at his mom's funeral, Izuku would have laughed at her naivete. With that explanation done, Izuku turning back to his other sister and All Might. All Might was leaving and Izuku was following him. Izuku was now really confused as to what was going on with those two, but he trusted All Might. When they left, Izuku came out of hiding and removed his hood. He and Eri walked up to his mother's tombstone. Izuku kneeled down and stared at the writing. Here lies Inko Midoriya. Friend. Mother. Mom. I'm sorry I can't take back what I did. If I knew the deal would cost you your life I wouldn't have taken it. But I can't change the past. But I can help the future. Izuku signaled Eri to come and she stood next to him. Mom this is Eri. She was in a bad place with bad people. I saved her. I know that doesn't make up for what I did but I hope that one day, if I save enough people, one day you'll forgive me. The tears returned with force and poured from Izuka's eyes once more. And maybe one day, I'll forgive myself. Eri hugged him once more. Izuka smiled tears still pouring. He picked up Eri and rose back up. Goodbye. Mom. As Izuka walked away Eri waved at the grave. By Izuka's mama. Izuka ruffled her hair. You are too good for this world, Eri. Eri didn't know what that meant but she liked it when Izuku did stuff like ruffle her hair or hug her. Whenever one of the Yakuza members touched her it was forceful and always hurt a little. And whenever Overhaul touched her it hurt a lot. When Izuku touched her it was always so gentle and caring and when he was in his skeleton form he was always so warm. For the first time, Eri found herself smiling twice in one day. She was so glad Izuka murdered all the Yakuza. They walked back to Izuka's bike, set Eri down on the seat, and then sat down in front of her. Eri wrapped her arms around him and Izuka picked up the motorcycle helmet on the ground next to them and placed it on Eri's head. The helmet was pink with butterflies on it and was far too big for Eri. Izuka bought it with money he took from some drug dealers he killed. Izuka put his hood back up after making sure Eri wasn't going to fall the two rocketed away back home. Home. The former Yakuza hideout had been transformed into a comfy living space for Izuku and Eri. Eri insisted on sharing the same room and bed so the bedroom mostly consisted of hero merch that he and Eri lacked. The kitchen now had a small table with a basket of apples in the center. When Izuka first gave Eri an apple she said it was the best thing she had ever tasted. In response, Izuka always made sure there were apples in the basket and apple juice in the fridge because Izuku was always willing to spoil her, and he had killed enough villains to have a large amount of money. Izuku had also got Eri multiple gaming consoles including a computer to keep her occupied whenever he was out killing villains. After teaching her how to use them he showed her a bunch of educational games that Eri immediately gravitated towards. Every time Izuku came from a busy day of manslaughter Eri would always run up to him and tell him all the new things she learned and Izuku would always listen with a smile on his face as he cleaned the blood off his clothes. Izuku had also bought a new TV and sofa which was a nightmare to carry on a motorcycle and put into an underground hideout without anyone noticing but somehow he managed. Before bed Izuku and Eri sat down and watched hero fights on the news and Izuku would analyze their quirks causing him to go into a muttering storm and Eri would watch and jump in with her own analysis which while inaccurate and far-fetched were always cute. 
The lab had been turned into Izuka's workroom. Izuka kept his weapons and motorcycle there as well as all the medical supplies. He destroyed most of the formulas and beakers and burned all the papers after reading them. Izuka was slightly disturbed by how Eri had no problems walking into the room whenever he came in there considering the room always smells like blood. Eri had become much happier and more energetic since Izuka found her. She still wasn't used to smiling but she was learning. Izuka made it his goal to make her smile at least once a day. Although he had yet to make her laugh. He had gotten her a bunch of new clothes to replace the dirty dress he found her in. Most of them were hero-themed. After looking through Kronos' papers Izuka found that Eri's quirk wasn't just an age regression quirk it was a biological rewind quirk, or just rewind for short. It could turn someone into a baby, or a monkey or nothing. She could also destroy someone's quirk by rewinding their body to the point before humans had evolved and gained quirks. Ever since then Izuka had been trying to teach her how to control her quirk and act Eri was very grateful for. Izuku, on the other hand, hadn't really changed all too much. Thanks to being the spirit of vengeance Izuku didn't really have a problem with killing criminals. He treated it basically like community service which to him it was, even if he did take some money from his victims. Overall they were doing well for a boy who died, lost his mother and now has to kill criminals and a little girl who's been through hell. The two were sitting down watching the news when suddenly the picture on the screen changed from a group of heroes to Izuku in his skeleton form. Izuku went to get the remote to change the channel. He didn't like the idea or Eri watching the news talk about his job so whenever he came on Izuku changed the channel much to Eri's annoyance. Except this time the remote was gone. And Eri was smiling. Eri where did you put the remote? Izuku asked. Eri said nothing and kept watching the screen smiling at finally getting to see her new brother on the news, thinking that people would praise him like they did the heroes. There were four more murders tonight, or at least four that we know of, the newswomen said. All signs point to the villain that had been terrorizing the city. Eri's simile faded and turned into a confused frown. Terrorizing? Villain? This skull-headed pyromaniac was been given many names on social media the most popular one being Hell Flame. However, those people were swiftly sued by Endeavor for using the name of his quirk. So the police have decided to call him by his second most popular name Ghost Rider, said the newsman. Ghost Rider? Izuka thought. That sound like something from 1972. Ever since his first appearance destroying the Yakuza organization he has been murdering criminals left and right. Heroes have attempted to stop them but with his flaming motorcycle he has proved to fast for all who have tried. The newsman continued. Eri was starting to get really confused. Why are people trying to stop him? However number three Hero Hawks released a statement on this matter. A rare occasion which we will show you now. The image changed to show Hawks with a microphone looking as nonchalant as ever. Uh yeah ghost rider. I'll take care of it. And then he flew away and the screen changed back to the news people. While the statement was brief it gives us hope that this maniac will finally be put behind bars, the newswomen said. But he doesn't need to be behind bars, Eri yelled at the TV. Izuka sighed and left to start looking for the remote elsewhere. I know I have hope, echoed the newsman. I can't wait till this is all behind us and this man faces the consequences for his actions. He didn't do anything wrong. He's helping. Eri screamed tears shining in her eyes. Now we have a special guest tonight whom we mentioned earlier. Ladies and gentlemen, it's number two hero Endeavor. The screen shifted to Endeavor sitting on a couch with another news lady. Hi, I'm Yusa Teori here with Endeavor. She said introducing herself. First I would like to thank you for accepting this interview. You're welcome. Endeavor said looking like he didn't want to be here. I would like to ask you if you plan on helping Hawks take down the Ghost Rider? Teori asked. Endeavor glared at her. I don't need that layabout's help. I will deal with this villain like all the others. He's not a villain! Eri started pounding on the TV screen. Well, with both the number two and number three hero on the job, I'm sure dash. Boop. Eri looked around to find Izuku had found the remote. The bowl of apples. Really, Eri? I am ashamed I didn't find it sooner, Izuka said. Eri ran to him and Izuka knelt down to let her hug him. Why? Why are they saying such mean things? 
Eri cried into his torso. Izuka sighed. He knew this would happen eventually. He just hoped that it would have happened later. Eri. I'm not a hero. To be a hero you have to go to hero school and obtain a hero license. If you try to fight crime without a hero license then you are considered a vigilante, which is illegal. I would be a vigilante but because I kill people I am considered a villain, Izuku explained. But you save people, Eri argued. And you only kill bad people. Izuku shook his head. It doesn't matter, Eri. You could save a thousand people and only kill one person and you would still be a villain. That's how the world works. That's not fair. You're not a villain. Overhaul was a villain and you're not like him. Eri screamed. Eri. Regardless of everything else. I kill people. Yes, they do deserve it but not everyone sees it like that. You're not supposed to kill people. Even heroes are told to avoid killing if they don't have to. Why? If they hurt people they should die. Why is that a problem? Izuka stared at her speechless. Did she, did she just say that? It was then Izuka realized something. The only people Eri had ever known were killers. And him. The only person to ever be nice to her was a serial killer. No wonder killing was so normal to her. No wonder she was able to walk into rooms that smelled like blood and not even flinch. She was used to it. And even if she showed a problem with killing innocent people that didn't mean she felt bad for not so innocent people dying. Izuka pushed Eri back a bit and put his hands on her shoulders. Eri, killing is not normal. I do it because I have to. It's my job as the spirit of vengeance. But people shouldn't just kill because they feel like it. I know you may not understand this right now. But you will. I promise. Eri sniffed her head tilted in confusion. But but it's not fair. You saved people. You saved me. You should be a hero. A tear of joy ran down Izuka's cheek and a smile found a way onto his face. That was the first time anyone ever told him that. Thank you, Eri. Izuka looked at the clock. It read 11.30. He stood up and looked back at Eri. Hey, let's go to bed. Eri nodded and raised her arms telling Izuka she wanted to be picked up. Izuka did just that as he carried her to bed. He opened the bedroom door before closing it again. He turned off the lights and walked over to the bed. He placed her in the bed before crawling in there himself. Eri placed her arms around his waist and Izuka turned on his green flames. And in no time Eri was asleep. Izuka looked at her. She was holding on to him tighter than usual. I really need to get her to meet some new people. Of course, this was easier said than done. Because while Eri has happier and more energetic around him, he had a feeling that she would not be the same way around other people. Not to mention the problem that was finding a person he could trust around Eri in the first place. He would get her a therapist but that would be even more difficult considering he was legally dead and Eri didn't legally exist. Izuka closed his eyes. Maybe I should get her a cat. Meanwhile elsewhere. A man watched the news feed and smiled. With how the media portrays him perhaps I can turn this incarnation of the spirit of vengeance into an ally. After all these years you still don't know how the spirit of vengeance works. Hmm, well, I am only human Blackheart. A demonic laugh echoed. Oh please. We both know you gave up your humanity long ago. All for one. The two old friends laughed at this before all for one brought up the elephant in the room. So then. How are we gonna kill this one? A mouth before the UA entrance exam. Izuka laid there on Dagoba Beach. Utterly exhausted. The last test before she could receive all for one was to clean up Dagoba Beach. That had been covered in trash. Without her quirk. All Might didn't really think this through as Izuka would stay at the beach for as long as she could and would sneak out at night to continue her task. You see Izuka was almost a perfect student. She didn't complain, she did what she was told, and she was passionately devoted to her training. The only problem was she was a bit too devoted to training. When she wasn't busy studying, she was training and this caused a few problems. She would often collapse and would have to take a couple of days off to recover. She had started doing this less and less but it was still an issue. Well, that was quick. All Might said looking around the now clear beach. Well, the time has come. Izuka quickly pulled herself off the ground and stood at attention. 
All Might chuckled. He reached for the top of his head and plucked out a hair before holding out to Izuka. Eat this. Izuka stared at the hair confused. What? All Might rubbed the back of his head sheepishly. In order to inherit my power you have to take in my DNA. Izuka deadpanned. That's kind of underwhelming. I was expecting more lights and flashiness. Well, reality is often disappointing. All Might responded. Izuka sighed and took the hair. She looked at it hard before she slowly put it in her mouth and swallowed. Ugh! Why was it sour? Izuka asked disgusted. All Might shrugged his shoulders. Getting over the taste of sour hair, Izuka looks at herself. I don't feel any different. It will take a couple of hours to go through your digestive system, All Might explained. Oh, well in the meantime I could train my cork dash. Rest, All Might yelled not having any of her nonsense. Izuka sighed. Fine. The day before the UA entrance exam, Bakugo had to make up for lost time. After confessing to his mother Bakugo felt better. He wasn't back to his old self. It's almost impossible to think he could go back to his old self. But he was at least able to function. Right now he was practicing his aerial mobility. However, something was off. He was slowly flying away from his house. At first, Bakugo just thought that his trajectory was off. But when Bakugo was out of sight his body flew far away from everyone else. The invisible force pushed Bakugo into the woods where it promptly slammed him into the ground. Bakugo groaned and rose up to see Izuka with a face so smug it could rival Bakugo in his prime. Hey, Kaken, she said putting extra emphasis on the nickname while speaking in a sickly sweet voice. Bakugo shivered both at hearing that nickname and from the way she said it. Something is wrong. He quirk was never this strong. Bakugo got up but was quickly pushed back down by Izuka's quirk. You know I think I've been acting a bit unprofessional, Izuka said. If we are both going to be heroes then we might have to work together. And the way things are now I don't think that would go well. Bakugo did not like where this was going. So, I thought of a way to ease the tension between us. Izuka lied. Let's spar. Kaken. Bakugo tried to say something but he felt Izuka's quirk keeping his mouth shut. Izuka started the battle by raising Bakugo into the air and hurling him through several trees. Bakugo got up. His back hurt like hell. Wait. Izuka did no such thing and picked up the trees that she had thrown Bakugo into and threw them at Bakugo. Bakugo used his quirk to maneuver himself out of the way of the attack. Bakugo tried to escape but Izuka used her quirk to try and pull him back in. Bakugo increased the power of his explosions trying desperately to escape. Izuka saw this and smirked and released Bakugo from the effect of her quirk causing Bakugo to rocket full force into a tree. When the dust cleared it showed Bakugo laying there, his head bleeding from the impact. Bakugo tried to get up but Izuka picked up the fallen tree beside him and dropped it on top of him. Gah! Bakugo screamed in pain. Using her quirk Izuka floated over to him. And she was pissed. Pathetic. This battle is done. I can't injure you too much before the entrance exam. Bakugo stopped trying to escape and hoped Izuka was telling the truth about the battle being over. Izuka saw this and was even more infuriated. Now you don't want to fight. Where the hell was this pacifism when my brother was alive? Izuka used her quirk and lifted the tree off of him and lifted him into the air. What happened to you? She shouted. Bakugo felt a force pressing against his neck choking him. For so long I tried to get you to stop and now, now when I actually want you to fight, now you choose to not fight. Fuck you. It's like you only exist to make my life harder. Bakugo started to see black spots fading in and out in the corner of his vision. He had no choice. Bakugo faced his palm towards Izuka. Boom. A large explosion unleashed from Bakugo's palm releasing him from Izuka's quirk and sending both of them flying. Bakugo grunted in pain. He forced himself to his knees and looked towards the cloud of smoke Izuka had been sent flying into. Bakugo got up and readied himself for more of Izuka's attacks. When the smoke cleared Bakugo didn't see Izuka. He saw Izuku. A twelve-year-old Izuku. The young Izuku had bruises and burns all over his face. Marks that were familiar to Bakugo. Dideku? 
Bakugo asked confused and scared. The young boy looked up at Bakugo with tears in his eyes. Kakan! Why? Bakugo walked towards him but little Izuka looked at him in fear and back away. Wait! Bakugo yelled. Don't go! Please! I'm sorry I didn't dash. And then he was picked up and slammed into the ground. Bakugo ignored the pain and quickly got back up to get Izuku. Only to find he was gone. Like he was never there in the first place. What the fuck was that? Instead of Izuku, there was Izuka standing in the exact same spot Izuku had stood in before. You just started freaking the fuck out. She screamed. What the hell is wrong with him? He thought I was Izuku? Has lost his mind? Then a thought came to her mind. Izuka lifted Bakugo off his feet and brought him in front of her. She forced his hand to rise up, his palm in front of her face. This sight was too familiar to Bakugo. Suddenly everything changed. Instead of the pissed of Izuka, there stood the scared Izuku. Kakan, please stop. Bakugo started breathing heavily and tried to back away forgetting that he was levitating. Suddenly something slaps him in the face and Izuku was gone. You lost your fucking mind, Izuka said with a look of disbelief on her face. That disbelief turned to rage as threw Bakugo back into the ground. And this time he stayed down. Useless! You're just an empty husk. A shell of your former self, Izuka raged. You can't even hit me without going fucking nuts. Izuka stormed away screaming curses all along the way. Bakugo waited until he could no longer hear her. Then slowly he got up and walked home limping. What the fuck was that? I could use my quirk just fine. But when Izuka was there, Bakugo reached home and his mother freaked out. What the fuck happened? She asked slash demand. Bakugo said nothing for a few seconds before responding. I had a training accident. The next day, Izuka walked up to the gates of UA absolutely pissed. That goddamn monster. What right does he have to grow a goddamn conscience now? Izuka wasn't blind or stupid. She knew that Bakugo didn't actually want her brother to die despite what he had done and said. She also knew that he had been affected by her brother's death. But she thought he would get over it. She thought that once the shock went away he would go back to being the same heartless monster he always was. But no. Apparently, he wasn't going back to normal which drove Izuka insane as beating the shit out of him was now nowhere near as satisfying. Izuka was so distracted that she didn't even notice the small rock in her way causing her to trip. Before she hit the ground she tried using her quirk to stop her fall and she felt someone touch her. Suddenly she was rocketed into the sky. Ah! Izuka flew through the air not knowing what was going on. She deactivated her quirk and suddenly she fell like a rock. As she got closer to the ground she activated her quirk and she felt someone touch her again and once more she flew. This continued for quite some time until the UA staff managed to stop it and had brought her and a brown-haired girl to speak with the staff. Apparently, the brown-haired girl, Achiko Uraraka, had a zero-gravity quirk and had been attempting to stop her fall at the same time Izuka activated her telekinesis. The sudden loss of weight made it so when Izuka used her quirk, the force that would normally just be enough to hold her weight sent her flying. Seeing as it was all just an accident the staff sent the two off with a warning. As soon as the staff left Achiko turned towards Izuka and bowed. I am so, so sorry. Izuka shook her head. No. There's no need to apologize. You were just trying to help. If anything I should be thanking you. But I didn't actually help. Achiko said sheepishly. Yeah. But it's the thought that counts. Izuka responded. Achiko smiled. I guess so. I have to go. Maybe we can hang out later? Izuka was taken aback. She had never really had friends. Most people avoided her due to how many people she sent to the nurse's office because they made fun of her brother. So to have someone ask her if she wanted to hang out was strange. Sure, Izuka responded. They exchanged phone numbers and went their separate ways. Something about her reminded me of something. Flashback. A ten-year-old Izuku was crying after getting beat up defending someone else. After beating him up the bullies then proceeded to beat up the other kid until Izuka showed up and kicked their assess. Izuka! 
I'm sorry, he cried. Izuka patted her brother on the back. It's okay. It's not your fault. Izuka shook his head rapidly. But but I didn't even help. Izuka gave him a hug. Yeah, but it's the thought that counts. Izuka sniffed. Really? Izuka smiled. Really? Back to the present. Izuka shed a tear and gave a sad smile at the bittersweet memory. I really hope me and Achiko can be good friends. Later. Izuka pumped herself up. Now was the time for her to get first place. She looked towards the door when she saw something out of the corner of her eye. Achiko. Izuka was about to say something to her when suddenly she felt a hand on her shoulder. She turned her head to see a tall boy with blue hair staring at her with disapproval in his eyes. She is clearly trying to concentrate. Are you trying to distract her? If so, then leave immediately. Yue has no room for such deplorable people, he said. All the other kids in the room looked at her and laughed writing her off as no competition. And that made her blood boil. She quickly sent a wave of telekinetic force to all the empty spaces in the room causing those spaces to crack open, and she sent out wave right beneath her causing the ground to crack. You assholes have something you want to say to my face! She yelled at the participants. No one said anything due to a combination of shock and fear. Izuka turned to the blue boy and gave him a deadly glare. And you! What kind of asshole goes around assuming what people are doing and judging them based off that? Get off your high horse fuck face. I was trying to tell her good luck. Before he could respond the doors opened. What are you waiting for? Came the voice of present Mike. In real life there is no countdown. Get your assess moving. Without another word, Izuka flew off into the fake city to take her anger out on some robots. She found two one-pointers and smashed them together. You see Izuka's quirk was called telekinesis. She could move things with her mind. The heavier the things she's picking up the fewer things she can pick up. She can only move things that she can see and if she overuses her quirk she will get very painful headaches. If she keeps using it after that she will pass out. Normally she could only lift something as heavy as a car. However, after receiving one for all her quirk became supercharged. However, this has its problems. When Izuka first used her quirk after receiving it she passed out and didn't wake up for three days. However, with some time and training, Izuka learned how to control one for all to some extent. It reminded her of the time she had to learn to control her quirk. Right now she can only use 5% of her full power. However, 5% was still a massive improvement to her quirk, as she displayed by flying around and easily destroying any robot that came into view and with her ability to fly she was able to destroy robots much quicker than anyone else. Eventually Izuka got so many points that she just stopped counting. She already knew she won so instead she decided to find Achiko. Achiko saw her and waved before going back smashing robots. Izuka used her quirk to place as many robots in front of her as possible and kept them immobile but didn't destroy them. Achiko looked at her confused for a second before shrugging and destroying the robots. Meanwhile back with the teachers. Uh, is that cheating? Midnight asked. Of course not. All Might answered a bit too quickly. She is simply assisting another participant. She already has more than enough points so the fact that she is helping others is a sign of a true hero. Yeah, but it's unfair to everyone else. Remarked Eraserhead from the back of the room. The brown-haired girl is currently gaining points she doesn't deserve. This is why we put students from the same schools in different testing grounds. All Might scowled. The young lady has already proven she can destroy the robots by herself. Azuka is simply speeding up the process. Niza sat in the back of the room sipping his tea. I think it's time to release the zero pointer. Back with Izuka and Achiko. After destroying a bunch of robots with Izuka's help, Achiko decided she had done enough and took a break. H. Hey, Achiko said, looking at Izuka clutching her stomach. Not that I'm complaining, but why are you helping me? Shouldn't you be out getting points yourself? Izuka shrugged. I got enough. Before Achiko could respond she felt the ground rumble, and this caused her to lose her balance and fall. Suddenly almost right next to the gravity-defying duo came the zero-pointer rising out of the ground. Its emergence caused parts of the nearby building to fall off. A few of the pieces almost fell on Achiko but Izuka pulled her out of the way in the nick of time. 
After that Azuka lifted her into the sky next to her. Thank you, said Achiko very glad she had not been squashed. Izuka flashed her a smile. After a good amount of time, the test was over. Later. Izuka walked out of the gates of Yue confident in her results. She was about to walk home when suddenly she heard someone shout. Hey! Izuka! Achiko ran up next to her slightly out of breath. Hey! I thought we were gonna hang out! Achiko pouted. Izuka stepped back. Oh. Sorry! I forgot. I'm not really used to people asking me to hang out with them. Achiko flashed her a determined smile. Well, I can't not hang out with my new friend. Izuka's eyes widened. We are friends. Achiko looked at her strangely. Well, duh. I'm pretty sure the only reason I passed the entrance exam. Izuka blushed. Never before had she received so much praise from anyone but her brother? Don't say that. You destroyed plenty of robots on your own. Achiko shook her head. Yeah, but thanks to you I was able to destroy a bunch more. But dash. No more buts. Achiko said interrupting her. Now you want to hang out or what? Izuka looked at her for a second. Bewildered before she smiled. Sure. Later. Izuka and Achiko sat down in a machi shop and talked. So why did you help me during the exam? Achiko asked. Izuka scratched the back of her head sheepishly. Well, I got more than enough points and you were so nice to me when we met so I just said why not. Well, Achiko responded. You must be super strong. Izuka flashed her a smug grin. Yup. Suddenly Achiko's smile disappeared. Uh, hey. So why did you, you know, do what you did with that blue-haired guy? Izuka sighed. Let's just say I really, really hate bullies. After all one killed my brother. Meanwhile with Izuku. Izuka looked around the now bloody warehouse. He had just finished killing a group of small-time killers and was looking to see if there was anyone he missed. Not finding anyone Izuku got back on his bike. Well, you are a hard demon to pin down. Zeratos. Izuka quickly turned his skull behind him to find that the source of the voice was none other than the number three hero himself. Long time no see. Izuku immediately summoned his bike and rocketed away. Hawks was somehow hot on his trail as he was flying much faster than anyone has seen him fly. Come on, Zeratos, I don't have all day, said the winged hero. Who is Zeratos? Izuki yelled behind him. Geez, did Mephisto tell you anything? Hawks asked. Who is Mephisto? What are you talking about? Izuki yelled. Hawks sighed. The hero then proceeded to wrap his wings around himself and disappeared in a puff of feathers. Huh. Since when could he? Crash. Izuku's bike was stopped as Hawks appeared in front of him and held up his foot to keep the wheel from moving. Chill, Hawks said. I'm not here to fight. Izuka looked at him cautiously and took his foot off the gas or whatever this thing needed to keep moving. Izuka got off his bike. You said to the media you were going to deal with me? Hawks waved his hand in a dismissive manner. Yeah, I just said that make them feel better. It's my job to manage the spirit of vengeance so I kinda have to keep tabs on you. What? How do you know about that? Izuka asked surprised. Hawks sighed. Suddenly he started to glow, and a burst of light. After the light died Hawks' clothes were replaced by dark armor. Guess I have to explain some things since Mephisto decided to be even more of an asshole than normal. Hawks said. Hawks looked around and made sure no one was looking. Hey, can we have this talk at your place? I really don't need people seeing me talking to you. No offense. Izuka was hesitant. But he needed answers. Who was Mephisto? Who was Zeratos? What was up with that strange armor? Izuka took out his chain and unfolded it. He then swung it around in a circle until the space within the circle began to distort and change and a ring of fire formed in the air. And then the image inside the circle changed and turned into the inside of his base. So you figured out how to make gates. Nice, Hawks said. They walked through and entered Izuku and Eri's humble home. Eri ran to the sound of the portal. Welcome, B.A. Dash. She took one look at Hawks before hiding behind Izuku's leg. Gee, go away, 
she yelled. Airy. For now, he is our guest. Please go play in the bedroom while we talk, Izuka said. Airy gave him a worried look. Trust me. Begrudgingly, Airy separated from his leg and went away. Cute kid, Hawks said smiling. Is yours? Izuka shook his head. Saved her from the Yakuza. They were doing unspeakable things to her. Hawks nodded. He looked around and saw that they were in Izuka's workroom. Not really a place kids should be around, Hawks remarked looking at the blood-covered room. Not like I have much of a choice, Izuka shot back. Now start talking. Please. Hawks cleared out his throat. First thing. The person you made a deal with. Wasn't the devil. What? Yup. The person you made a deal with was Mephisto. He is a lord of hell. God gave him the responsibility of giving the spirits of vengeance host. Spirits? As in more than one? Oh yeah, there used to be a ton of those. They were weapons forged in heaven made of God's wrath and they were put in hell to receive the powers of hell. God then gave Mephisto the job of distributing these spirits to pure souls. Basically, it goes like this. A pure soul dies and God takes it and puts it in purgatory. Then Mephisto comes offers them the power and if they take it they become a spirit of vengeance and rid the earth of all those sinners God hates so much. Wait. If that's true then, why did Mephisto kill my mother? Oh, that's simple. You see, Mephisto is an asshole, and sometimes, while he is giving people the power of the spirit of vengeance, he also bonds them with the demon Zeratos, which can sometimes give them extra power. However, he doesn't directly say that and will do something that makes whoever he made the deal with miserable for kicks. There was a pause as that info sank in. So you're saying that my mother was killed for fun? Well, I said he was an asshole. Rack. <sighs> Eri ran back into the room worried for her brother only to find him with his skull erupting in flames. Eri quickly hugged his waist in an attempt to get him to calm down. This worked, sort of. He was still brimming with rage, but he no longer looked like he was going to set the room on fire. Izuku, no longer caring about Hawks being here, transformed back into his human state to keep himself from burning the base. Huh. You're just kid. It's rare that we get children as spirits of vengeance. Hawks remarked. After several minutes of Izuka calming himself down, clutching Eri close to him, he asked a question. You said there were other spirits of vengeance. What happened to them? Hawks sighed. Blackheart. He is the son of Mephisto, and he absolutely hates his father. So to get back at him he allied with a powerful human who calls himself all for one and together they destroyed almost all the spirits of vengeance. Just as the last one was about the slaughtered he transferred his power to someone else who then escaped. Later on, that person went on to help All Might take down All for One but they were unable to kill him. That person died eventually and the last spirit of vengeance went back to hell and now you have it. This was a lot to take in. Izuka had so many questions but really only one that he needed answered. Okay. How do you know all this? Oh. Yeah. Well first off my real name is Tzadkiel and I'm what you would call a fallen angel. You see, when the war broke out in heaven I sided with Lucifer. Turns out he was evil so I betrayed him and as punishment for siding with him in the first place, God made me lead heaven's black ops squad with the spirits of vengeance as my weapons. But then I fell asleep and suddenly, well you know. Hawks explained. Wait. Izuka stopped him. Are you saying that they all died because you fell asleep? Yup. Whoops. Hawks shrugged. Izuku didn't really know what to say to that. This was starting to be too much for Izuku to understand. Is there anything else you would like to tell me? Izuku asked trying to quell his headache by holding Eri closer. Not really. Just that I'm gonna be keeping an eye on you. I really can't have you dying or else God will smite my ass. Hawks said. Right. Izuku nodded. Hawks looked at the two. Eri's face was now buried in Izuka's chest. It was one of the cutest things he has seen in years. Well, Hawk said stretching his arms. Guess I'd better go. If you need anything just open a gate to my place. See ya. And with that, the fallen angel disappeared in a puff of feathers. Izuka sighed. This was too much. There is a demon inside him. He is apparently a weapon of God. 
He didn't make a deal with the devil just a demon lord who tricked him into making an unnecessary extra deal. Izuka needed to vent. He needed to get rid of some stress. And there was only one way to do that. Hey, Eri. She looked up at him, her face still full of concern. I have something you are really gonna like. Have you ever heard of candy apples? Eri's mouth watered. Later. There really was only one way for Izuka to vent. By spoiling Eri. Honestly, there was nothing that made him happier than seeing her smile. Once the candy apples were finished Izuka took a camera. The look on her face when she bit into the treat was something that almost made Izuka forget about the last hour of expression entirely. Izuka put the picture and put it in his photo book that contained other precious moments from the girl, like the first time she used a computer and Eri's first time trying on new clothes. However, there was one picture Izuka always kept on his person. The first time he gave Eri an apple. The picture was of him holding Eri while she held an apple with a bite mark in it. Her face was filled with indescribable joy as tears of joy rolled down her face. Whenever Izuka was feeling down, whenever the media was giving him hell, whenever he encountered villains doing something truly disgusting, whenever he missed his family, he took out this picture. Of course, he had an extra copy for the photo book but he still liked keeping it on him. As he watched Eri eat the apple he felt that innocent blood had been spilled. Izuka sighed. Eri I'm going out. Meanwhile a week later with Izuka. Izuka looked proudly at her results. First place. With her combination of rescue points and villain points, she had utterly flattened the competition. She looked at the rest of the results. Achiko had gotten third place. Something Izuka was sure she was happy about. Her eyes scrolled over the list until she found Bakugo. She didn't have to look hard as the boy was only in fourth place. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Suddenly her phone rang. She already knew who it was and answered. Izuka, I passed. Achiko screamed into the phone. Izuka smiled at who excited her friend was. Over the week the two had gotten rather close. Izuka had shown her around the city after hearing that she was new and the two had a lot of fun. Even if she had only known her for a week Izuka had gotten really attached to the girl. Perhaps it was because she was the only friend she had ever made, or perhaps it was because she reminded her of her brother in some ways. Either way, Izuka had already deemed the girl her best friend. After all those robots you destroyed of course you passed. Jeez, have some pride girl. Izuka responded. One trait Achiko had that annoyed Izuka was how humble she was. Yeah, it was good to be a little humble so you don't end up how Bakugo used to be, but Achiko always seemed to doubt herself. It was something that reminded her of her brother in a bad way. Lucky Achiko seemed very bubbly and optimistic so Izuka didn't have to worry about her going down the same path. I mean yeah but I was still super nervous, Achiko said. Well, I think we should go out for dinner to celebrate, Izuka said. Sure. Any place you want to go? Achiko asked. How about Hantoni Takai? Izuka responded. What? Isn't that place like super expensive? Achiko asked shocked. Yup. But considering the occasion, I think it's more than worth the money. Izuka responded. In truth, All Might had a lot of money. As the number one hero, his paychecks were huge and even though he gave a lot to charity he still had a whole lot of money. He had given Izuka a debit card with a whole lot of money. So Izuka had a lot of cash. I. You. I can't let you pay for all that and I don't have the money to dash. Just let me pay. Trust me I'll be fine. Izuka said cutting her off. Achiko sighed. She didn't really have a choice in the matter. Okay. The brown-haired girl said giving in. Izuka smiled. All right, I'll meet you at your place at eight. They hung up and Izuka went to go find All Might. All Might's apartment was not what you would think it would be. It was rather humble being a decent size with a bedroom, kitchen, two bathrooms, a living room, and a guest room which was now Izuka's room. Izuka walked into All Might's room. It was actually rather plain with not much stuff in it aside from a few photos. All Might was currently taking a nap when Izuka came in and woke him up. Hey, All Might! Me and Achiko are gonna go to Hantoni Takai, Izuka said informing her legal guardian of her plans. Oh, 
All right. All Might responded tiredly. He was just happy she had made a friend. Izuka smiled and went off to get ready. Later at Hantoni Takai. Izuka and Achiko had gotten a table. Both of them had felt somewhat out of place in such a high-class environment, although that discomfort quickly dissipated when the food arrived and the two saw why this place was so expensive. So why do you want to become a hero? Izuka asked her friend. Achiko looked up from her food and swallowed. She gave her a worried look. Well, um, it's not super noble or anything, but I want to get enough money so my parents can live comfortably. I mean, I still want to save people, but my parents have done so much for me I want to give back. Izuka raised an eyebrow. What are you talking about? That is super noble. Achiko blushed. Really? Izuka nodded. Of course. Achiko smiled, still blushing. T, thank you. Um, why do you want to be a hero? Izuka looked away. She had been avoiding talking about her situation with her family, or lack thereof. But even if she had only known her for a week, Izuka felt she could tell her. If she wanted to be her friend, she was bound to know anyway, so might as well tell her now. Izuka took in a deep breath. I, I always wanted to be a hero. It was me and my brother's dream. Oh, you have a brother? Achiko interjected. Izuka gave her a sad look. Had. With that one word, the mood fell and Achiko's smile disappeared. I'm sorry, Achiko said quickly. I didn't mean to bring up something so painful. Izuka gave her a sad smile. It's okay. You didn't know. After a short pause, Izuka continued. It was mine and my brother's dream to be a hero. My brother just always wanted to help people for no other reason than to help people. I was just going along with him. He was always getting picked on so it was my first instinct to protect him. I figured if I became a hero too then I could keep protecting him. Tears were going down her face. But I couldn't protect him from everything. One day all the bullying was just too much for him to take. Some monster told him to jump off the roof and he did. So now I need to be a hero. So that way I can fulfill my brother's dream. Izuka started softly crying. She thought she would be able to confront this. She thought that talking about it would get easier as time went on. But she was wrong. She felt arms wrap around her. She looked up to see Achiko hugging her. Izuka wiped away her tears and smiled. It was so nice to have a friend. Sorry for making this a pity party. Izuka apologized. Achiko looked at her and gave her a sweet smile. It's fine. If any of my family died I know I would be a wreck for God knows how long. I can only imagine what your family is going through. Izuka's face went dark. Achiko looked at her darkened expression and became confused. My dad died when I was six, Izuka confessed. And my mother died month after my brother did. Achiko didn't know what to say, so she just hugged her friend. After a few more minutes Achiko sat back down and the two finished their food. As they walked back out Izuka apologized for bringing down the mood. It's fine, Achiko reassured. You must be going through a really hard time and I'm sure you could use a friend. I'm more than happy to help you out. After all, you helped me out a whole lot. Izuka looked at the girl for a second and hugged her. Achiko returned the hug and after a minute they broke apart. After Izuka walked Achiko home she reflected on her life. She had lost a lot. Her dad, her brother, her mother and her home. But she also gained a lot too. A mentor, a new home, a new quirk, a friend. Of course, she still missed her family, but maybe she could cope. Izuka walked home looking forward to what the future had to offer. Izuka walked towards her class with a smile on her face. Her ponytail was wrapped in her usual green bow. Her uniform was immaculate, and her face showed no sign of tears. Today was her first day at UA, and she was extremely excited. Finally, she would be able to properly test and improve her skills. Because while All Might's training was good, it was nothing compared to what Izuka assumed Yui training was going to be like. Less excited was Achiko, who Izuka had dragged out of bed early to walk to school with her. Why did we have to come so early? Achiko complained tiredly. Because if we come early, then we won't be in danger of being late. Plus, we might get brownie points with the teacher. Izuka responded. The two found the door that said 1A. Well, 
Achiko said looking at the massive door. It's huge. Izuka shrugged. It probably because some students might have quirks that make them bigger that they can't turn off. Izuka walked through the door expecting the class to be empty. This was not the case however as the blue-haired boy from the entrance exam sitting there. What the hell? Izuka yelled in shock. How did you even get here so early? Achiko exclaimed just as shocked as her friend. A good student must arrive at the earliest time possible, the boy said waving his arms around. Is this guy even human? Izuka and Achiko thought at the same time. The boy rose from his seat and marched up to the two girls before giving an apologetic bow. My name is Ida Tenya and I would like to apologize for being presumptuous the first time we met. Clearly, you two are close friends and you had no intention of disrupting her, he said. Izuka scowled. Of course, he's sorry. Now that he knows who strong I am, he wants to get on my good side. Izuka walked past him and sat at her desk. Achiko sighed. Sorry about that. She is going through a bit of a rough patch and you did something that kind of hit a sore spot for her. Ida shook his head. No. It is perfectly understandable. What I did was unacceptable. I will need to work to earn her forgiveness. Izuka scoffed. Achiko went to Izuka leaving Ida by himself. Come on Izuka at least give him a chance. He seems like he genuinely made a mistake and is trying to fix it. Izuka crossed her arms. Achiko I know these types of people. They are so willing to pick on whoever looks the weakest and if someone strong comes around they swarm around them. He's not sorry because he made a mistake. He's sorry because he sees that I'm not the weakling he thought I was. Achiko gave her friend a deadpan look. Now look who's being presumptuous. I am not being presumptuous, Izuka said sounding offended. Achiko raised an eyebrow. How long have you known this guy? I only met him at the exam, Izuka answered. Right. So you've known this guy for like fifteen minutes and now you're assuming that he is some sort of parasite. And you say you're not being presumptuous, Achiko said. There was a pause as Izuka was forced to take in her own hypocrisy. Damn your logic, Izuka yelled in defeat. Fine. Izuka stood up and pointed at Ida. You. Ida looked at her surprised. I accept your apology, but I'm keeping an eye on you. Izuka pouted as she sat back down. Ida looked shocked. I see. I will do my best to be deserving of your forgiveness. Izuka scoffed once more and looked away. Achiko face bombed. Well, I guess this was progress. Suddenly the door opened. And in walked in Bakugo Katsuki. Izuka groaned. You're fucking kidding me. Two of these assholes. Everyone minus Bakugo was shocked at her sudden outburst. Bakugo, on the other hand, just silently sat down and spoke to no one. Achiko sighed. So what's your problem with this guy? Izuka gave her a deadpan look. Do you have all day? Achiko wanted to rip her hair out. Let me guess someone else you've known for five minutes? Try my entire life. He's one of the assholes how gave my brother a hard time, Izuka said. Oh, Achiko responded. Uh, sorry. Izuka sighed. It's fine. After that Achiko just sat down, and they all sat in silence until the other students came in. Later. All the students have arrived, and yet there was no sign of the teacher. Honestly, what kind of teacher is this late? Izuka thought to herself. The students had been talking until suddenly what looked like a giant caterpillar came into the classroom. Then a homeless-looking man emerged from what now appeared to be some sort of sleeping bag. It took you three seconds to quiet down. You lot sure love wasting time, huh? Said the hobo-looking man. I am you teacher Shota Aizawa. Get dressed and meet me outside. The class was alarmed at this sudden command. Wait. What about the orientation? Achiko cried. Aizawa rolled his eyes. Waste of time. Now hurry up. Izuka smirked. He's blunt but he doesn't waste time. I like that. Maybe this won't be so bad. Later outside. All the students lined up in their UA gym uniforms with Aizawa looking at them. Today we will be having quirk apprehension tests. Aizawa explained. The students gave their teacher a confused look. You know those fitness tests you took in gym class? Well, this is the exact same thing but you can use your quirks. 
the teacher lazily explained. He took out a baseball and looked at Izuka. Izuka Midoriya, you got first on the entrance exam so you can demonstrate. Stand here. He pointed at a small circle on the ground next to him. Izuka did as told and awaited further instructions. Aizawa offered her the ball and Izuka picked it up with her quirk. Just throw this as far as you can with your quirk, said Aizawa. Izuka smirked, and with no other words, she threw the ball using her quirk and five percent of one for all. The ball soared through the air. Izuka forced it away from her with her quirk until the ball went past the range of her quirk. Aizawa looked at a small device that seemed to be tracking the ball before holding it up for the class to see. Seven hundred meters. The class was shocked at this ridiculously high number. Whoa, way to go, Izuka! Achiko cheered. Izuka put on a smug face as she received all the praise and amazed looks. This looks like it could be fun, cheered the pink girl called Mina. This apparently hit a nerve with Aizawa as he gave them all a glare. Fun? If you think your time at Yue is going to be a walk in the park then you are sadly mistaken. How about this? The person who places last in the test will be expelled. What? cried all the students with the exception of Izuka, Momo and Bakugo who didn't buy it as well as Todoroki who did not care. Achiko was about to say that, that wasn't fair but the second she opened her mouth she felt it close again. She looked at Izuka who mouthed the words. He's bullshitting. Achiko looked at her confused. How does she know that? Izuka seeming knew what she was thinking and mouthed. Trust me. Achiko gulped. Well, she hasn't led me wrong so far. And so the test went on with Izuka using her quirk to get impressive results, although she grew somewhat frustrated seeing that Momo and Todoroki get scores close to or above hers. After all, the tests were done and the class looked nervously at the results. Momo had gotten first and Todoroki and Izuka were tied for second. And Mineta had gotten last place. No! cried the short grape boy as he got on his knees and started crying. Oh, by the way... Aizawa said getting everyone's attention. I was bluffing about the expulsion. Huh! cried most of the class. It was a logical ruse, Momo said simply. I'm surprised no one else figured it out. Bakugo didn't care to correct her and Izuka was too busy staring in shock at the result. I, I got second. And I tied for it. She wasn't angry or anything she was just shocked that after all that training and receiving one for all, she didn't first. Quickly pulling herself back together, Izuka pointed at Momo. You! Momo jumped a little at how suddenly she yelled at her. Izuka walked toward her. You are now my rival! You had better stay on your toes because you won't be on top for long. Momo did not quite know how to respond to this so she just said, Uh, okay? Bakugo looked up at the board. He got third place however he was actually behind four people. A while back this would have filled him with rage. He would be cursing and popping off explosions. But now he felt nothing. Later. Aizawa had dismissed the class and they all went to go home. Well except for Izuka who was going to hang out with Achiko at her house. However, as they walked home they heard someone behind them. Uraraka! Midoriya! It seems we are all headed to the same train station, said Ida who had walked next to them. Would you mind if I walked with you? Izuka scowled. Yes, actually we will WW. Of course you can, Achiko said elbowing Izuka in the arm. I would love to have as many friends as possible. Izuka would to even if she is a bit of a grump. I am not a grump, Izuka said rubbing her arm. You are a grump and that's okay, Achiko said not having any of it. If you truly do not want me to walk with you that is fine, Ida said chopping the air. I did say I would work towards forgiveness and I intend to honor those words. Really it's fine, Achiko reassured. Right, Izuka? Achiko gave her a look indicating that there was only one right answer to that question. Izuka sighed. I did say I would give him a chance. Fine, Izuka groaned. Ida smiled. Well then let us go. We must not be late. Later with Bakugo. Bakugo walked home slowly trying to answer a question that has been haunting him as of late. He got home and opened the door. His father was sitting on the couch reading a newspaper which he put down when he heard his son walk in. Katsuki! 
How was your first day? He asked. It was fine, Katsuki said before walking past his father and into his room. Masaru sighed. One of the many bad things that happened in the wake of Izuka's death was the absence of noise in his household. While most people would love the peace and quiet Masaru rather enjoyed hearing the voices of his wife and child, even if they were yelling at each other. But now that was all gone. Now the only sound that came from the Bakugo house was Mitsuki's occasional outburst. The man walked up to his son's room and knocked on the door. It opened due to the fact Katsuki had not fully closed it. Inside was Katsuki laying on his bed staring at the ceiling. Masaru walked over and sat next to his son. Tell me what's wrong, Masaru said. Nothing's wrong, Katsuki said in a monotone. There was a pause before Masaru decided on what to say. Your mother told me what you said to Izuku, Masaru admitted. Katsuki didn't say a word and instead continued looking at the ceiling. Like your mother said, Masaru continued. I can't say you're blameless, but you are no more at fault than we are. This made Bakugo look over at his dad in confusion. Dad? What the fuck are you talking about? You and mom didn't do shit you dash. And that's the point, Masaru said cutting his son off. Our son was murdering an innocent boy for years, and all we did was apologize and say it wouldn't happen again. We failed, as parents, and now you're hurting because of it. Masaru put his arms around Katsuki and embraced his son. Me and your mother refused to fail you again. She is already trying to fix the mistakes we made. And I have to try as well, Masaru said tightening the hug. So please, tell me what's wrong. How could Katsuki refuse? I, I don't know what to do, Katsuki admitted. Izuka wanted me to be a big hero. And now Izuka is trying to get me to be one too. I know I still want to be a hero, but how can I be a hero when I have fucking blood on my hands? There was another pause. Katsuki, do you really want to be the kind of hero Izuka thought you could be? Masaru asked. I, I do. I think, I owe it to him to try. But, I don't know how to do it. I was so focused on trying to the best. I thought it was my destiny or some shit. But because I was like that, Izuku died. So now what? If everything I've spent my life doing leads to that, then what the fuck am I supposed to do? Katsuki answered. Help people, Masaru answered. Katsuki looked at his father confused at the simple answer. All Izuku ever wanted was to help people, Masaru explained. So if you really want to be the kind of hero Izuka could be proud of, all you need to do is help people to the best of your ability. It sounded so simple. But at the same time, it felt so right to Katsuki. Thanks, Dad, Katsuki said. Masaru smiled. You're welcome, son. Izuku had barely stepped inside when Eri ran up to him. Izuku! Izuku! Look! The excited little girl grabbed his leg and attempted to pull him toward their room. Eri, calm down, Izuka said pulling her off of him. Let me clean the blood off me first. After doing just that and putting those clothes in the hamper he went to the room to see Eri pointing at the computer. All right, what did you want to show me? Izuka asked. Eri played a video showing a very well-dressed man robbing a convenience store. What kind of idiot films his own crimes? Isn't it cool? Eri said. Sure, Izuka lied. His name is Gentle. He's really cool. He's a villain but he doesn't hurt anyone or steal anything. Eri gushed. Wait, what? Izuka watched as in the video Gentle beat two pro heroes and proceeded to leave without taking anything. If he's not taking anything then what's the point? Izuka was very confused however Eri was happy so that was really all Izuka needed to know anyway. Eri frowned. Izuku, you kill villains, right? Does that mean? Izuku realized what she was insinuating and quickly shook his head. I only kill killers, Eri. So long as he doesn't spill the blood of the innocent, he will be fine. Eri smiled and hugged Izuku. Izuku smiled and gave her a pat on the head. Meanwhile at Yue, it was finally time. The class that all of 1A had been waiting for. The heroics class. I am coming through the door like a normal person, cried All Might as he burst into the room in a very not normal way. 
The class was in awe at the sheer campiness that was All Might. All right, everyone, it's time for hero class, All Might said. But first you'll need to change into these. Suddenly suitcases came out of the wall. These are your hero costumes, All Might explained. The number on the suitcases match your seating order. So get dressed. Plus ultra. Plus ultra, cheered most of the class. About fifteen minutes later. Most of her class had already finished getting dressed and had met up with All Might in a surveillance room. Achiko had already gotten in her skin-tight space suit-like costume and was waiting for her friend. Suddenly she heard Izuka's voice. Sorry for the wait. Izuka walked in with her new costume. It was a green and black skin-tight jumper with a small jacket vest. It's young Jean Grey's costume but green and black. Her hair was still in a ponytail and went over her shoulder. Wow, you look great, Achiko said. You got that right, thought a certain purple-haired great boy. Yeah, I know, Izuka said showing off her costume. You look great too. Achiko blushed. I mean I wasn't very specific when I made a request so they just gave me a skin-tight costume. Well, you look great, Izuka said. After all the students had gathered All Might started explain that they would be sparring against each other in two-on-two fight between heroes and villains. The villains would be defending a bomb and the heroes would have to get past the villains and touch the bomb. Each team could also win if they managed to wrap their opponent in capture tape. However, capture tape. However, only the heroes would be provided the capture tape. After that, All Might revealed the teams. Achiko and Izuka had been paired up and the two high-fived. All Might revealed that the matches would be determined randomly. Sir, Ida said, is it wise to leave this to chance? How else did you want us to decide? Pick and choose? Izuka said sarcastically. Villain attacks are often random and the heroes who are around just need to fight them. I see, Ida said before bowing. I apologize for interrupting. After that, they drew numbers to decide the first matchup. All Might pulled the two balls with the team numbers. Oh. On the balls were the numbers for Team Izuka and Achiko and Team Bakugo and Ida. All Might considered just putting the balls back in and redoing it however if he did it would draw suspicion from his students. Hesitantly All Might announced the matchup. Team Izuka and Achiko as heroes versus Team Bakugo and Ida. Fuck. Thought Bakugo. Bakugo looked at Izuka who was looking right back at him. However. Her expression was not quite what Bakugo expected. It wasn't absolute fury or sadistic glee. Instead, she looked bored. This confused Bakugo greatly. Normally, Izuka would relish the chance to beat the shit out of him, especially after what happened to Izuku. So why did she look so uninterested? Achiko looked between the two with a concerned expression. This is not going to end well. She thought to herself. Looked at all of them and had no idea what was going on. Later with Bakugo and Ida. Bakugo was perplexed. What was with that expression? Bakugo looked back and tried to think why Izuka looked like that. Bakugo, Ida said snapping him out of his thoughts. We need to come up with a plan. Oh, sorry, Bakugo said. You and Midoriya seem to know each other. Do you happen to know anything about her quirk? Ida asked. Bakugo nodded. Yeah. Her quirk is telekinesis. She can move things with her mind. The heavier the things she's lifting, the fewer objects she can lift. She can only move things she can see through, but she only needs to see part of something to lift it. That's why she has her ponytail over her shoulder. So long as she can see her ponytails she can basically fly. Ida took in Bakugo's analysis. I see. Do you know how much she can lift with her quirk? Bakugo sighed. Not anymore. She suddenly got this boost in power. She used to only have been able to lift a small car a few feet off the ground but now, I don't know. Ida pondered this information for a minute before turning back to Bakugo. I have a plan. With Izuka and Achiko. Izuka and Achiko stood outside the building, waiting for All Might to say they could enter. So, what's the plan? Achiko asked. Izuka shook her head dismissively. No need. All we have to do is find the bomb. Ida and Bakugo have no way to hide the bomb. Achiko sighed. 
Yeah, but how are we gonna get past Ida and Bakugo? You're strong and all, but they are pretty tough too. Izuka rolled her eyes. Come on. Bakugo's no threat. Like at all. And Ida's fast, but the small hallways limit how fast he can go without crashing into a wall. Achiko wanted to smash her head into the building. Yeah, but you never know if dash. Begin, said All Might over the communicators. Izuka walked casually into the building as if there were no time limit. Achiko facepalmed. Well, on the bright side, if we lose, it might knock her ego down a peg. Back in the monitor room. All Might sighed. He knew something like this would happen. After he got one for all, he went through the massive ego phase as well and said ego caused his only loss to Endeavor back when he trained at UA. Funny enough you think Endeavor would have been happy about that, but for some reason it made him get angrier. All Might didn't get that guy. All Might turned his attention back to the match. He told himself that he would be completely neutral and would not favor any sides. That did not stop him from rooting for Izuka inside his head. Back with Izuka and Achiko. The two girls had been walking through the building and had not seen a trace of their opponents. Izuka shook her head. You see, Achiko. We have nothing to fear. I bet you Bakugo is hiding somewhere like the dash. Boom. Suddenly a massive explosion shook the building spreading dust and smoke everywhere. Achiko lost her footing and fell to the floor. What the heck? Izuka looked around frantically for Bakugo who she knew had to be the cause of the explosion, but the smoke was hindering her view. Then she felt something crash into her a breakneck speed sending both her, and whatever hit her, to the ground. When Izuka looked up she saw Ida holding her capture tape. Izuka looked down to find not only had Ida taken her capture tape, but he also had already wrapped it around her waist. What? thought Izuka. Then All Might's voice came on the communicator. Both Izuka and Achiko have been captured. The villain team wins. What? The fuck just happened. With Ida and Bakugo five minutes ago. I have a plan, Ida said. Midoriya's quirk requires a line of sight so our best plan of attack would be to ambush her. Can you create an explosion big enough to fill a floor with smoke? Bakugo looked at his gauntlet. Yeah. If we hit the side of building it should create enough smoke and kick up enough dust to keep Izuka from seeing anything. Good, Ida said. So you and I will wait for Midoriya and Yurarika on the floor below. Then when they come close you will create the explosion to block their view. Then I will charge at Midoriya, steal her capture tape, and use it to eliminate her. After that, you use your quirk attack Yurarika and dash. No, Bakugo said interrupting. I'm not using my quirk on her. Ida was shocked at this statement. But Dash. I'm not using my quirk on her. Bakugo barked looking at Ida with anger he had not felt in a while. The two were silent as the shock of Bakugo's sudden outburst set in. Sorry. Bakugo apologized. The impact of the explosion might knock her off her feet. If that happens I'll take her tape and capture her. Ida paused for a moment before responding. I see. If that's the case then it will be fine. Bakugo looked at his palms. Yeah. After his fight with Izuka, Bakugo figured out that whenever he used his quirk on another person memories of Izuku would pop up. Had the entrance exam not been against robots then he might not have got in. Begin! Came the sound of All Might's voice over the communicators. Bakugo we must get into position! Ida yelled as he ran out of the room. Back to the present. Everyone stood in the monitor room. Izuka was staring at the ground. After the match ended she hadn't said a word. All Might looked at her, concerned and made a mental note to speak to her later. So can anyone explain who was most instrumental in that battle? All Might asked. I believe it was Bakugo, sir, Momo said. Thanks to him they were able to completely catch their opponent off guard and win the match before they could even come close to the bomb. I couldn't have said it better myself, All Might said. Bakugo looked back at Izuka, whose face was unreadable. He had a feeling that the walk back home would be more difficult than normal. After school. Perhaps he had been too worried. Bakugo was almost at his house and there was no Izuka in sight. After the lesion, Izuka left in a hurry. She didn't even wait for Achiko. Perhaps he could get home without any. Whoosh. Suddenly Bakugo was hit hard on his side by an invisible force. 
Bakugo managed to stop himself before he hit the ground with his explosions. Landing on his feet Bakugo looked around to see that Azuka had been standing in an alleyway no doubt waiting for him. That was a fucking fluke, Izuka said. With those words, Izuka used her quirk to lift Bakugo into the air. If it weren't for Ida you wouldn't have stood a chance against me. She screamed as she went to slam Bakugo into the ground. In response, Bakugo used a series of small explosions to slow his fall before landing back on his feet. Izuka growled before sending two trash cans flying at Bakugo. Bakugo blew them both up before they could hit him, creating a cloud of smoke in the process. Bakugo took a breath. He couldn't escape. The area was too open and the second the smoke dissipated she would be able to toss him around like a ragdoll. However, Izuka couldn't use her quirk forever. If she overused it then she would start getting headaches until the pain made her pass out. He would have to push for that. Bakugo steeled himself. There was no ambush this time. So when the smoke dissipated Bakugo looked his opponent in the eye. And was hit with a wave of familiarity. The look in her eyes. The rage. It reminded him of himself. It reminded him of the rage and anger he felt whenever Izuka almost beat him in a fight. And that's when everything made sense. As Bakugo came to this realization Izuka flung him against the wall. Bakugo hit the wall hard. Izuka! Bakugo yelled. Don't do this! Do what? Izuka asked, her voice filled with venom. Kick your ass! Bakugo ducked as Izuka sent another garbage can at him. One of the advantages Bakugo had was that Izuka did not really have a lot to throw at him without damaging the environment. Don't turn into a goddamn monster! Bakugo responded. Bakugo felt himself get thrown back as Izuka hit him with a blast of telekinetic force knocking him to the ground. Monster! Izuka yelled now even angrier than before. You of all people have no right to be calling anyone a monster! Bakugo picked himself up slowly. You're wrong. I have every right to scream monster when I'm looking at a mirror. There was a pause for a moment as Izuka processed those words and their meaning. Then her face twisted in rage and Bakugo knocked back down by a strong blast of telekinetic power. Gah! cried Bakugo in pain. You and I are nothing alike! Izuka yelled at the top of her lungs. I am the future number one hero. I am destined for greatness. You are a pathetic piece of shit. A useless monster, Dash. A pebble on the side of the road. Izuka froze. She and Bakugo had said that last part in perfect unison. I know, Bakugo said pulling himself up once more. I used to think the same thing about Izuku. A look of horror crossed Izuka's face before quickly turning back to rage. You think you can compare yourself to me? Once again they said the exact same thing. The horrified look returned to Izuka's face. We are not the same. Izuka yelled her tone carried underlying desperation, indicating she was telling this to herself as well as Bakugo. You're right, Bakugo said walking closer to Izuka. I hurt people. I bullied people. I killed someone. You haven't done any of that, yet. I see where this is going. You feel like you have to be the best. Like you have to be above everyone else. And with that power boost you got you started to believe you're the best. But when someone challenged you, you felt like you had to put them in their place. That look you gave me back at Yudata. It was because you thought I was so weak after our fight the day before the entrance exam. Izuka's look of horror furthered. As Bakugo repeated her thought process back to her, she felt fear grip her. You haven't hurt anyone yet, Bakugo said. Other than me and I deserve it. But it doesn't stop at one person. I saw the looks you were giving to that Ida guy. Just stop. You are better than me, so act like it, please. At this point, it wasn't about the fight. Bakugo could care less if he got pounded into the ground. He said he was going to help people and now was a good place to start. Suddenly Bakugo was thrown back by another blast of invisible force, this one much weaker than the ones before but still enough to knock Bakugo on his ass. Izuka quickly turned the other way and ran leaving Bakugo behind. Bakugo stayed there on the floor hoping that his words got through. If only life were that easy. A child's body fell to the floor. He had only wanted play around the docks. How would he have known that villains were making a deal in a warehouse that night? You shot him! One of the criminals shouted. Of course I fucking did! 
said the villain who shot the kid. He was a witness. He was a kid, one of the other villains exclaimed. Honestly, do you even have a soul? Interesting question. Let's find out. Every villain looked back at the entrance of the warehouse to find Ghost Rider standing there looking at the body of the child. Shit, it's Ghost Rider! One of them screamed. Run! All the villains ran toward the back door. One of them reached it and was about to open it when suddenly a ball of green fire blasted him, burning him alive and blocking the exit in a wall of flames. They all looked back fearful at Ghost Rider to find him still looking at the child's body with his hand outstretched. This was a child. The villains trembled in fear at his hellish voice and terrifying presence. One of the villains got on his knees and into a prayer position. What the hell are you doing? One of the other villains asked. Hoping there's a God, and that he forgives me, said the praying villain as tears poured from his eyes. The other villains decided he had gone nuts and that they should ignore him in favor of fighting for their lives. One of the villains used his quirk and made a sword out of the concrete floor below him, and then charged at the flaming skeleton. The rest of the villains followed him and together twelve villains rushed Izuku. The sword-wielding villain closed in on Izuku and swung. Snap. Every villain froze as the sword the villain's sword snapped in half against Izuku's skull. Before the sword villain could do anything Izuku grabbed him by the mouth. This was a child. Suddenly the fire from Izuka's hand started burning the man's face. His screams were muffled by Izuka's bony hand as his face burned more and more until his face turned black and his skin charred off. His screams stopped as his flesh burned away leaving only a skull. Izuka dropped the villain's body and the blood poured out of his burn neck stump. All the villains were frozen with fear, shock, and horror. You killed a child. All the villains looked at the villain who shot the child, still holding the gun in his hand. The villain quickly dropped the gun but it was too late as the rest of the villains rushed him. The other ten villains brought the child killer down to his knees in front of Izuku, hoping that with him dead he would spare them. You bastards! You think he'll spare you! You're all dash! The villain was interrupted by Izuku putting the barrel of his shotgun in his mouth. How ironic! You all are so willing to betray each other. Yet you die together. Before the villains could react to that Izuka pulled the trigger. Boom. A large explosion enveloped all the villains and much of the warehouse. When the explosion cleared there were bodies everywhere. Burnt broken, blown apart. Now all but one of the villains were dead. Izuka turned his skull toward the praying villain and walked up to him. Have you made your peace? The villain didn't look at him. Whether that be because he was focused on his prayer or because Izuku was too terrifying to look at was anyone's guess. Do do you think I'll be forgiven? Izuku pointed his shotgun at the man. No. Because I'm still here. Just as Izuku was about to pull the trigger something wrapped around his gun and yanked it out of his hand. I don't really think that's for you to decide. Izuku looked to the catwalk above him to his left to find Eraser Head holding his gun. Izuku turned his head back to the villain. Perhaps God has forgiven you after all. God has nothing to do with it, Eraser had said. We heard a gun being fired, most likely by whoever killed this child. I'm assuming it wasn't you. You're right. I came when I felt the blood of the innocent had been shed. It seems my work is done here. But ours isn't, Eraser had retorted. Ours? Eraser had activated his quirk. Ed shot now. Ed shot? Where is? Oh. Izuku made the normally passive flames active. Suddenly Izuku saw a small thread quickly shot out of him and form into Ed shot. Gah! The hero screamed as his entire body was on fire. Izuku quickly used his powers and instantly put out the flames leaving a barely conscious Ed shot on his knees. It didn't work. He's just bones and fire, Ed shot said taking in deep breaths. Eraser had jumped down from the catwalk and helped stand Ed shot up. I don't know what you were trying to accomplish, but you should probably get him to a hospital. The burns won't kill him, but they probably hurt like hell. Then again, I wouldn't know. He's the first person to be hit with my flames and not die. Izuka felt the blood of the innocent being spilled elsewhere. I'm going to have a busy night. So please don't bother me. Also, I'll be taking my gun back. 
Eraserhead looked at the gun. And what makes you think I'll give it back? Suddenly the gun fired and was blasted out of Eraserhead's capture tool. The gun then spun around firing several more times before landing back in Izuka's hand. Without another word, Izuka summoned his bike which emerged in a tornado of flames. Izuka hopped on and sped through the wall of the warehouse leaving Eraserhead and Edge shot in the dust. Meanwhile in a shopping district. People were screaming as they tried to escape the scene. The villain Muscular had shown up and started attacking and the only two heroes in the area were the Waterhouse duo. Damn it we're not making a dent! Yelled Hosu Izumi to his wife. We don't have to! Responded Mizu Izumi to her husband. We just have to hold him off until the people can escape. Right. Hosu responded. The water hose duo had quirks that complement each other. Mizu's quirk allowed her to create water and Hosu's quirk let him control water. Together they made a formidable duo. Two on one, huh? Good twice the fun, said Muscular. Muscular charged at the two but Hosu used the water on the floor to trip him up. Whoa! cried Muscular as he fell. Hosu then the water underneath Muscular to carry the villain away from them. Muscular stopped himself by grabbing onto the ground and digging his fingers in. Muscular then launches himself at Hosu at speeds too fast for Hosu to react. Just as Muscular was reeling back his muscle fiber enhanced fist, ready to hit Hosu, he was suddenly launched back by a highly pressurized jet of water made by Mizu. Hosu now! Mizu yelled. Hosu knew what to do and used the water now covering Muscular's body to try and hold him in place. Gah! Muscular cried as he struggled against the water on his body holding him in place. It won't hold. He's too strong. We have to get out of here. Hosa said doing his best to keep the villain in place. Damn. Not everyone has been evacuated yet. Misa said. If we leave then he'll just kill all of them. You got that right. It was at that point Muscular broke free of his bindings and charged at Hosa ramming his fist into his torso knocking him back into a building. Hosu! Mizu shouted in horror. Mizu looked back at Muscular with an expression of pure rage. She launched a jet of water with all her strength pushing Muscular back slowly. In response, Muscular used his quirk and enhanced his legs with his muscle fibers. Slowly he pushed on against the force of the water coming closer and closer to Mizu. As Muscular pushed on Mizu's jet of water grew weaker as Mizu was unable to keep up the water pressure. Soon Muscular got close to Mizu, and he grabbed her by the head and threw her down onto the street. Snap. A silent scream emanated from Mizu as the wind was knocked out of her, and her spine snapped in half. Muscular punched the downed hero, again and again until at the third punch his fist was blocked my barrier of water. Leave her alone you son of a bitch! Muscular looked behind him to see an injured Hosa standing behind him. Muscular turned around and went to punch Hosu but was blocked by another water barrier. But it couldn't hold up forever as after three punches his fist went through the barrier, hitting Hosu in the face. Hosu fell to the floor and Muscular punched him several more times until Hosu was bleeding barely conscious mess. Muscular grinned. He stopped punching Hosu and moved to unconscious Mizu. He picked up her limp, broken body and tossed it next to Hosu. You know. You two weren't half bad. Tell you what. As a reward for showing me a good time you two can die together how about that? Muscular said standing over them. Hosa spits in his eye. Ugh. Really? Was that H-H-H-H-H-H? Muscular held his eye as Hosa used his quirk to drive the spit into his eye. After a couple of seconds Hosa lost control of the spit due to the pain he was feeling and Muscular uncovered his eye revealing a bleeding hole where his eye once was. You know what? Muscular said increasing the number of muscle fibers in his arm. Fair enough. Muscular cocked his arm back and was ready to kill the two of them. Hosa looked at his wife and said, I love you. Hosa closed his eyes and readied himself for death. I'm sorry. Koda. Muscular swum. But the pain never came. At least not for Hosu. Gah! Muscular cried. Hosu opened his eyes to see a chain was wrapped around Muscular's enormous arm. Get over here! Muscular was thrown into the air and landed right at the feet of Ghost Rider. Before Muscular could react Izuka kicked him into a building. 
Not wasting a second Izuku sent a ball of fire at the building muscular was knocked into causing it to explode. Izuku knew he wasn't dead but he had more pressing matters. Izuku ran over to the water hose duo and placed his hands over Mizu's wounds. Mizu grunted in pain as Izuku burned the injured parts of her body. He's cauterizing the wounds, Hosu realized. After closing her wounds Izuku went to do the same thing to Hosu but suddenly his head was grabbed by muscular. Damn it! I stopped paying attention, Izuku thought. Normally Izuku could sense whoever had spilled the blood of the innocent. However, if he was focused on something else he could momentarily not be able to sense them. However the moment he remembered them he would be able to track them. Muscular tried to crush Izuku's skull but to avail and Izuku increased the power of his head flames and turned into a geyser of fire. Gah! Muscular let go of Izuku and looked and his burned hand. Huh. Looks like you're pretty strong. Muscular grinned. Guess I'll have to go all out. Muscular fully powered his arms. Let's do this. Muscular charged at Izuku and tried to punch him only for Izuku to grab his fist. Izuku spun him around and threw him into the air. Muscular landed on a car and Izuku took this time to summon his motorcycle. Izuku attached one end of his chain to his motorcycle. Muscular had recovered and attempted to shoulder tackle Izuku but Izuku used his other hand to pull out his shotgun and shot him in the face. Boom. Gah! Muscular yelled. His face was now burnt and partially melted and his other eye had been destroyed. Izuku took his chain and threw it the stunned muscular wrapping it around his left arm. Izuku then grabbed his other arm and used his powers to activate his motorcycle. His motorcycle started pulling on muscular's arm, but he didn't move because Izuku was holding on to his other arms. Fiber by fiber muscular felt his arms being ripped apart as he screamed in pain. After a few seconds blood started leaking from between the muscle fibers as the base of his arms were being torn from his body. The both his arms were completely severed from his body as the motorcycle and Izuku both carried one of Muscular's arms. Ah! Muscular screamed as he felt the most agonizing pain he had ever felt in his life. His screams were halted as Izuku hit him with his own arm knocking him onto the floor. Unable to get up due to the lack of arms Muscular could do nothing but bleed as Izuku beat him with his own massive arm. Thwomp. 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 Squish. After the fourth hit, Muscular's head was crushed and his blood, broken bits of his bones and pieces of his brain splattered onto the street. Izuka looked at his work for a moment. Muscular's headless, armless body leaking blood from all three new holes Izuku had created on his body. Izuku turned back to the Waterhouse duo and ran towards them. Mizu was still unconscious and Hosu was barely hanging on. He was bleeding far too much. Will she be all right? Hosu asked. Yes. You need to dash. It's too late. Hosu interrupted. Izuku knew he was right. Even if he opened a portal they wouldn't be able to save him. He had lost too much blood. I'm sorry. Don't be. You saved my wife and killed that bastard. I can't thank you enough. Hosu said. Izuku could see the life in his eyes start to leave him. You were a great hero. I'm sure you will be honored after your death for all the people whose lives you saved today. Hosa smiled and closed his eyes. You're not as bad as they say you are on the news. Thank you for everything, Ghost Rider. And with those last words, he passed. Izuka lowered his head. Another person he could not save tonight. Izuka looked at the still alive Mizu next to him and picked her up. Izuka took out his chain and used it to open a portal into a hospital. The hospital staff panicked both at the vigilante and at the injured hero he was holding. Izuku walked up to the desk. Get her help. Now! Not wanting to see what would happen if they didn't the staff of the hospital worked as fast as they could and got Mizu onto a stretcher. After that Izuku left back through the portal and gave them Hosa's dead body. The Izuku went on the other side of the portal and closed it. He hopped on his bike and made a portal home. But before he left he needed to do one thing. The cops and other heroes who had been evacuating the people while the water hose duo fought muscular would soon descend upon the scene so Izuku had to be quick. He took out his shotgun aimed it at muscular's mutilated body and said, Fuck you. Boom. 
bits of flesh, bone, and blood now rained down onto the streets as Muscular was reduced to pieces. After that Izuku put his shotgun onto his back and left through the portal. Izuku's base. When Izuku got home Eri was already there waiting for him. Welcome ho dash. She stopped when Izuku transformed back into his human form and tears were already going down his face. He kneeled down as the weight of his perceived failure brought him to his knee. Eri hugged him immediately and Izuku cried for the next hour. The worst part about being the spirit of vengeance is that you can only show up after blood has been spilled. Never before. Later that night. Izuku and Eri were watching the news when the topic switched to what Izuku needed to hear but at the same time didn't want to see. Breaking news! The newswomen said. Tonight a tragedy occurred as the villain known a muscular attacked a local shopping district, and the only heroes who were suitable to fight him off were the water hose duo, Hosu, and Mizu Izumi. Unfortunately Muscular was too strong for the duo and the two were almost killed by the villain. Fortunately, Ghost Rider showed up and killed Muscular while also saving the life of one of Mizu Izumi. Unfortunately, Hosu Izumi had passed by the time Ghost Rider, who according to the hospital staff is able to open portals, brought him in. Mizu Izumi sustained injuries to her spine and is paralyzed by the waist down and as such will be retiring from hero work. Our hearts and minds go out to Mizu and her family and Dash. Pew. Eri turned off the TV because Izuku was already crying. This happened from time to time. Izuku would come home crying from being unable to save someone. He would turn on the news until he found someone talking about it, and then he would cry. Eri hated it. She hated being unable to help her brother, she hated being powerless again. What's worse is that Izuku would cope with this by spoiling the heck out of her for the next few days and Eri hated it. Let's go to bed, Eri said. A week later. Hosu's funeral was held in secret. With the only people that attended being Mizu in her wheelchair, Kota his son, and the wild wild pussy cats because one of their members, Mandalay was the cousin of Mizu. What they didn't know was that Izuku was there performing his usual tactic of hiding behind a tree. Eri was also there as well because she refused to let Izuku go alone. The public had been given a false date for the funeral so that way his family could mourn in peace. Fortunately for Izuku, a few villains had figured out the real date and were going to ambush them. Izuku showed them exactly what he thought of that idea and the police were currently searching for what was left of their leader. Izuku looked sadly at the scene of Hosu's family mourning his death. I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. Izuka thought as more tears went down his cheeks. After everyone said their peace all the officials left the family in peace. I still don't get why you won't talk to them, Eri said. Because I'm not really supposed to be here, Izuka whispered. Well, you got that right. Izuka panicked and activated his transformation instinctively and went skull to face with Ragdoll. I forgot about her quirk. Ragdoll jumped back and all the other attendants looked at what was going on. Ghost Rider? Almost all of them yelled. Immediately Mandalay got in front of her cousin in a defensive position and the rest of the wild wild pussy cats got ready to fight. No one moved. Izuku didn't want to fight and the pussy cats didn't think they could take Ghost Rider in a fight so they just stood there looking at each other. Wait! Mizu yelled. Everyone looked at her and Mizu moved her wheelchair towards Ghost Rider. Mandalay panicked. Mizu, what are you, Dash? Mizu raised her hand, signaling Mandalay to stop before turning her attention back to Ghost Rider. I doubt you would save my life just to kill me later, Mizu said. So, why are you here? Izuka looked down. No one could read his expression seeing as his head was a skull. I, I wanted to pay my respects and apologize. For what? Mizu asked. For not saving him. Misa sighed at this. Many heroes who were in the area evacuating citizens apologized that they didn't help the two in fighting muscular. Guess Ghost Rider is more compassionate than people think. Misa thought. Misa decided to say to him what she said to all these heroes. It's fine. You did what you could. But I didn't. Everyone flinched at the hellish scream Ghost Rider gave off but were shocked as Ghost Rider fell to his knees and transformed into his human state no longer being able to keep the feeling required to stay in his Ghost Rider form. Tears slid down Izuka's eyes as everyone looked right at him. His hood was up so no one could see his face but everyone there could tell, 
this was a child. He's a kid? Tiger asked in confusion. He can't be any older than fifteen, Pixie Bob gasped. I could have saved him, Izuka revealed. If I had used my portals then I, I would have been able to kill Muscular in time to save him. I didn't want to show anyone that power and I thought my bike would be fast enough. But there were too many civilians in the way and I couldn't get through. By the time I got there you two were already bleeding out. I tried to stop the bleeding but I could only help you because I wasn't paying attention and let Muscular get the jump on me. Then I took too long killing him and wasn't able to stop his bleeding. I made so many mistakes. And because of those mistakes, your husband died. I am so sorry. Everyone looked at him with looks of pity. This poor kid put too much pressure on himself. Mandalay thought to herself. Mizu went up to the kid until she was right in front of him. Izuka looked up at her making his face visible to only her. Huh? You're a child. It doesn't matter what kind of power you have. You will still make mistakes, Misa said. And you were still able to save my life and let me see my son again. For that, I can't thank you enough. But I'm not just a kid, Izuki yelled his frustrations finally coming out. I am the spirit of vengeance. The only reason I got these powers was to save people. So why? Why can't I save anyone? All the pussy cats gave him shocked looks but Mizu just shook her head. You saved me. And you've saved others too. As a hero, I know what it feels like when you fail. And someone dies. But you have to remember that you have saved people. Izuku didn't have anything to say to that so he just cried and Mizu gently rubbed his head. After a minute Izuku regained his composure and stood up. Sorry about that. He said. Thank you for your time and sorry for interrupting. Eri, let's dash. Izuka looked around but Eri was nowhere to be found. Eri? Izuka surreyed, wondering where she could have gone. Who's Eri? Pixie Bob asked. Was she that little girl you brought with you? Ragdoll asked. Yes. Where is she? Izuka asked. She's with Koda, Ragdoll answered. Everyone looked around to see that Koda had also at some point disappeared. When did he leave? Mandalay asked. Just before Ghost Rider showed up. Oh, look, they're coming back, Ragdoll said, pointing to the right. Everyone looked to see Eri and Koda coming towards them, Eri pulling Koda by his hand. Izuka's eyes widened. She's touching him? Eri normally didn't like being around other people, let alone making physical contact with them. The two came up to the adults and Izuku. His big brother made a friend, Eri yelled, pointing at Koda. Izuka sighed in relief as it seemed Eri figured out not to call him his real name in front of several pro heroes. You have a sister? Tiger asked. Yes, Izuka answered trying not to be too detailed. Eri, we have to go. Eri frowned. Okay. She let go of Koda and went to Izuka's side and waved to Koda. Bye. Bye, Koda said shyly. Wait, Pixie Bob shouted. We just can't let you go. Mandalay gave Arun are you serious look. None of you ask can beat him and do you really want to start a fight in a graveyard? Pixie Bob groaned knowing she was right before turning to Izuku. Kid you have to stop. Turn yourself in. We can help you. Izuku gave her a sad look. I'm sorry. I can't stop. I don't have a choice. With that Izuku opened a portal back to his base and Eri jumped through it. Just before Izuku was about to leave, he felt Mizu arm stop him. Wait, she said before making the gesture to lean down. Izuku did so and Mizu whispered in his ear. Are you sure? he asked. Mizu nodded. Please. Okay, Izuku said before walking through the portal and closing it behind him. What did you say to him? Mandalay asked her cousin. If I wanted you to hear that I wouldn't have whispered, Mizu responded. Mandalay frowned. Mizu, we need to help catch this kid so we can help him. He's clearly suffering. And putting him in a jail cell helps him how? Mizu asked sarcastically. They're not gonna stuff him in a jail cell especially if he's not doing this of his own free will. Mandalay argued. He said he didn't have a choice. That he couldn't stop. It sounds like there is more to this than meets the eye. Pixie Bob said. Maybe. Mizu responded. I'll find out soon. Ghost Rider. 
You saved my life and let me see Kota again. I promise I will help you. So would you mind explaining what happened after you encountered Ghost Rider? Woof, said the police chief to erase her head and edge shot. The Ghost Rider task force had gathered in a police meeting room with a projector and a blackboard. Along with the police chief and the two heroes that had fought Ghost Rider were Endeavor, Empty Lady, Death Arms, Backdraft, Best Genus, and Night Eye. Ed's shot was still covered in bandages due to all the burns. From what we can tell some villains were performing some sort of illegal transaction at a warehouse on the docks when a child showed up and was shot by one of the villains. Eraserhead explained. TSK. What scum? Death Arms said clenching his fist in rage. Yeah, honestly I'm tempted to high-five Ghost Rider for killing these guys. Empty Lady remarked. Yeah, and while we're at it might as well wait a few days so we can congratulate him on his triple-digit murder count too. Eraserhead said sarcastically. The police chief said. Back to the report. Right. Anyway, so when I showed up Ghost Rider had already killed all but one of the villains. Eraserhead continued. Yes, the survivor. Endeavor interrupted. Ghost Rider has never left a villain alive up until now. So the question is what's so special about him? From what we can tell the villain has no association with Ghost Rider. Woof. The police chief said. When we interrogated him all he said was thank the lord. I have been forgiven. That actually matches up with what happened at the warehouse. Eraser had said. Explain. Woof. Said the police chief. Eraser had nodded. When I got there the villain seemed to be praying and when I stopped Ghost Rider from killing him, he said that the man was forgiven. So he's religious? Night Eye pondered. That's somewhat humorous considering he looks like something that crawled out of hell. So perhaps he kills for religious reasons? Best Genus questioned. Maybe. But the most important part of that night was what Ed shot and I discovered about him. Eraserhead said. He's a skeleton, Ed shot said. Everyone gave him a strange look. Uh, yeah, we noticed, Nimty Lady said. Kind of hard not to. No, I don't mean he looks like a skeleton. I mean he is nothing but fire and a skeleton, Ed shot clarified. We all thought that he was using some sort of illusion quirk or that he had his organs in a different place than normal people would, but no, he is nothing but a human skeleton. No eyes, no lungs, no heart, no muscles. Just bones and fire. This time everyone was giving him strange looks for completely different reasons. That's impossible, Night Eye said. Yeah, you kinda need organs to live. Also, how would he move without muscles? Death Arms asked. Yes, and how does he see without eyes or hear with no ears? Best Genus asked. I don't know, Edshot said. Everything about his physiology is impossible. Even his flames don't make any sense. Reports stated that Ghost Rider can control when his flames burn. This is true as when I hopped into him the flames didn't hurt me at all. However, when Eraser had signaled me to take him down he figured out my location and burned me. Also, his flames have no source. They just seem to come out him rising from his feet. Maybe Ghost Rider is just a puppet or something, Backdraft said. Maybe he's some kind of robot or something that's being controlled by someone else's quirk. Eraserhead shook his head. No. Firstly, there is no material on Earth that is strong enough to allow for a robot to do the things Ghost Rider did. Secondly, I used my quirk on him which would have stopped any signals coming from someone else's quirk. This also rules out the possibility of this being a transformation quirk. Meaning that he always looks like this. Well, that's not true. Everyone looked at the door to find the wild, wild pussy cats in uniform. Lock on with Dash. What do you mean that's not true? Eraser had asked no caring about their intro. Hey, Pixie Bob said. We were in the middle of our new into. Yeah, we worked super hard on it, Ragdoll said. Yeah, I'm sure the news will love it now explain, Eraser had said having none of the nonsense. Pixie Bob pouted. How rude. And after we came all the way here with a bunch of juicy info. Mandalay shook her head. No, he's right. We have to get to work helping this kid. Eraserhead raised an eyebrow. Kid? It will be best if I just tell you the whole story, Mandalay said. There is a lot to unpack, trust me. Proceed, 
Woof, the police chief said. Mandalay nodded and cleared her throat. When we were with my cousin at her husband's funeral, Ragdoll noticed someone hiding behind a tree. This turned out to be Ghost Rider. Why would Ghost Rider come to a funeral? Night, I asked. Was there a criminal around? Mandalay shook her head. No. At first, we were defensive, but no one attacked. We knew we couldn't beat him, and lucky for us, he wasn't there for a fight. Mizu asked him what he was doing there. Then he broke down. Broke down? Endeavor repeated. For what reason? He was distraught about not being able to save Mizu's husband. Mandalay clarified. He seemed to blame himself for not showing up faster. So he does care about saving people, Best Genus said. Mandalay nodded. Very much so. He was so upset he accidentally transformed back into what is most likely his real form, and he was just a kid. No older than maybe fifteen. This information spread shock around the entire room as Mandalay had just told them that the villain with a body count that would be entering the triple digits, and that they had seemingly no way of stopping other than all might, was a child. That isn't funny, Night I said looking down. You think? Eraserhead shouted. That's impossible. My quirk would have deactivated his quirk if it was transformation-based. It must have been some kid with a shape-shifting quirk or something. Mandalay shook her head sadly. No. Later he made a portal that was identical to the one the hospital staff said Ghost Rider made. This was him. That's fucked up. Empty Lady said with a horrified look on her face. She didn't particularly adore children but for a kid to be going around doing this. This was just wrong. The police chief looked away. There had been a few child villains in his time. Each and every one of them made him wish he had any other job but this one because a child villain was always a tragedy. Not to mention he doesn't seem too happy about what he's doing either, Pixie Bob said. He said he got these powers to save people and later he said he couldn't stop. That he didn't have a choice. Meaning someone is forcing him to kill, Eraserhead said through clenched teeth. This information sunk in and everyone in the room felt anger fill them at the thought of a young boy being forced to commit such heinous acts. Death Arms smashed one of the desks. Damn it! Is there anything that could lead us to his location? Eraserhead asked the pussycats desperately. Did you see his face? Anything we could use to identify him? No, Mandalay said sadly. He was wearing a hood that kept us from seeing his face. But there was one more thing, Tiger said. There was a little girl with him. His little sister. Everyone looked at Tiger. Did you see what she looked like? Night I asked. If so, we may be able to find him by looking for her. Yes, Tiger confirmed. She had white hair, red eyes, and a horn sticking out of her forehead. She looked to be around eight, maybe younger. Naitai's eyes widened. I can't be. Eraser had noticed Naitai's expression. You know something, Naitai? Yes, Naitai said. While I was investigating the Yakuza, I had once seen a girl that Overhaul claimed to be his daughter after she had run into Mirio. She looked exactly like who you just described. And Ghost Rider was the one who killed the Overhaul and destroyed the Yakuza, Best Genus said. So what you're saying is that whoever is forcing Ghost Rider to do what he does also took this girl, Edshot said. She didn't seem to very upset though, Pixie Bob informed. She called him Big Brother and seemed to be in high spirits. And when Ghost Rider said it was time to go she only seemed upset because she made friends with Koda. To be fair, I doubt Overhaul was what one would call a good parent, Naitai interjected. For all, we know she might be grateful for Ghost Rider killing her father. M.T. Lady shivered. This just keeps getting worse. Eraserhead sighed. I'm going to need all the alcohol I can get tonight. Is there any more information you gathered from that encounter? Woof. The police chief asked. Well, he called himself the Spirit of Vengeance, Mandalay said. Also, while he didn't seem to love the idea of killing, he also didn't seem to hate it. It was like he was used to it. Also, his portals interfere with my quirk, Ragdoll said. Once he stepped through it, I couldn't sense him. And that's it, Pixie Bob said. Eraserhead sighed. So, we are dealing a with a possibly insane child with a quirk no one fully understands and that defies all logic and is insanely powerful with seemingly no limits 
who is being forced by either another person or his quirk to commit acts of murder on villains. Also, he has the daughter of Overhaul who appears to be very happy that her father is dead. And what we don't know is his identity, where he's hiding, the full extent of his quirk and how his quirk even works. Don't forget the fact that he can open portals making it even more impossible to trap him. Death Arms groans. Enough, Endeavor says. You're all acting like this is an impossible scenario. I mean it sounds pretty impossible me. My, Lady muttered. The flame hero ignored her. He is a child. Meaning he is prone to act rashly. When we figure out how he finds these criminals is when we can strike. Eraser had rolled his eyes. And I'm sure you're not just saying this so we don't call All Might. Endeavor glared at him. We don't need All Might. The police chief intervened. All Might has a lot on his plate. Woof. Only when we're sure we can't handle this will we call All Might. Woof. Eraserhead knew why this was. He knew that All Might was running on fumes and had to deal with teaching, hero work, and apparently raising a teenager. Of course, this didn't want to make him smash his head into the wall any less. We're fucked. Later at Night Eye's agency. Night Eye smashed his head against his desk. When Night Eye found that the Yakuza, the villainous organization he had been watching and trying to take down for years now, was suddenly and unceremoniously destroyed by some random vigilante, he almost wanted to laugh at the sheer irony of the situation. What was not so funny and was, in fact, the thing that kept him from laughing was the fact that a powerful and lethal vigilante was now on the streets. His vigilante status was then upgraded to villain due to the sheer amount of people he'd killed. So Night Eye decided to investigate Ghost Rider, but to little avail. Ghost Rider left no evidence to his true identity or his location. He had tried looking for patterns in the locations he appeared or a part of the city with high Ghost Rider sightings. But once they figured out he could make portals he'd given up these methods. He had looked through whatever footage there was available of Skeleton, tried to discover any weakness, any point in which his quirk showed its flaw. But he found nothing and from the feats, he has shown he was not even fully sure if All Might could beat him in his current state. Night Eye sighed. He knew what needed to happen. He needed to go to All Might and he needed to convince him to give Mirio one for all. If not then who knows what may happen. Later with Izuku. Splat. About three minutes ago a villain had started attacking an office building. He had used his quirk and managed to kill two people. Then a portal opened and Ghost Rider came out with his motorcycle and ran him over. Izuka looked back at the mess of flaming remains of the villain. Well, that was fast. Izuka thought to himself. I guess I'll just go home then. I'm sure Eri will. Stop right there. That voice. Izuka recognized it immediately. All Might. Izuka looked to his left and found that All Might was indeed standing there in the hole the villain had made in the building. It's time you and I had a talk, All Might said. As much as an honor that would be I have a feeling it would end with me going to jail so I'll have to pass, Izuka said. I'm afraid that I wasn't asking, All Might responded. To say Izuka was nervous would be an understatement. First of all, he was meeting his favorite hero, again. Two, his favorite hero was trying to arrest him which brought him to his next reason to be nervous. He would have to fight All Might. Or not. Izuka thought. If we were to fight in here then the civilians would be killed in the crossfire. If I play my cards right then I can escape. You know. If we fight then the collateral damage will kill everyone around us. I don't want that to happen and I know you don't either. Izuka said. All Might shook his head. I'm not here to fight. I know you're scared. I know you feel like you don't have a choice. But there is a way out. You don't have to be like your father. What is he talking about? My father? What does he? Wait. Hawks told me all might and the last spirit of vengeance fought against all for one together. We must look so alike that he thinks we're related. I think I found my way out. You're mistaken. The person who you fought all for one with was not my father. He was my predecessor. Izuku explained. All might looked stunned. What? Izuka took this opportunity and rocketed past All Might while he was distracted, falling out of the office building and onto the street below. Damn it! All Might said before giving chase. 
All Might and Izuku raced at extremely high speeds on the streets each of them avoiding the cars and civilians in their path. He can't keep this up forever. I just need to hope he already used up most of his time limit. Izuku thought to himself. He was faster than All Might but All Might had the advantage in being able to move around freely while Izuku had a huge bike he had to maneuver around. Unfortunately, Izuku would soon be coming face to face with his worst enemy. Traffic. Coming up was a gridlock of cars which had no space for Izuku to maneuver through. Nope. Not this time. Izuku took his chain and threw it at the side of one of the building and in one fluid motion he yanked himself onto that building and started driving on the sides of the buildings. What the? All Might thought as he saw this. He had to do something otherwise he would lose him. Thinking fast All Might jumped onto the roof of the opposite building and ran across the rooftops still chasing Izuku. You are just as amazing as always All Might. Izuku fanboyed in his head. And I'm really sorry about this. Izuku aimed his hand at All Might and shot a fireball at the hero. All Might dodged and barely managed to keep his footing. Damn it. He can shoot me all he wants without hurting anyone but I can't hit him back without hitting the building. Izuku launched several more attacks and All Might felt himself get weaker. Steam started coming off of him. My time is running out. I missed my chance to catch him the second I let myself get distracted. You win this round, Ghost Rider. But next time I will catch you. With that, All Might gave up the chase. Izuku let out a sigh of relief. Finally. Izuku rode upwards onto the roof of the building. Time to go home. Izuku pulled out his chain and made a portal before riding through it and into his workroom. He transformed back into his human form and let himself collapse onto his handlebars. If it were not for the fact that he had no heart in his ghost rider form Izuku was almost certain he would have passed out from how nervous he was. I just beat All Might in a race. Izuku thought to himself in amazement. He had the biggest smile on his face as he sat back up. Only in his wildest dreams did Izuku ever picture himself being faster than All Might. Beep beep beep. Izuku looked at his watch. Oh right it's time to meet with Mizu. Izuku hated the idea of keeping people waiting so he pulled out his chain and made another portal. Eri! He yelled. A few seconds passed before Eri came running through the door. Yes, she said looking at him curiously. Izuku smiled. We're gonna go see Kota. At Mizu's house. Mizu liked to consider herself a nice person. As a hero she did whatever she could to help people and she almost laid her life down to save the civilians in the fight with Muscular. So it may be surprising that she actually didn't mind Ghost Rider all too much. Sure at first she thought he was dangerous but after he had shown that he was only interested in killing villains she had actually come to appreciate him a little. It wasn't like he was killing purse snatchers or jaywalkers. It was all murderers. And to be honest Mizu didn't care all too much if they were dead so long as they were off the streets. Maybe it was because she was a mother, and the thought of someone like Muscular coming close to her son, it made her very glad that the bastard was dead. Her opinion of him only elevated after he saved her life. When she was in front of her husband's grave while looking down at her crying son she had wondered what exactly would it be like for Kota if she too had died. After that though, she was sure she would have quit even if her legs still worked. And she held deep gratitude towards Ghost Rider. Not just for saving her life but for making sure Kota wasn't alone. Then he had shown up at her husband's funeral in a state no one had seen him in before. Emotional, weak, vulnerable. Mizu had to help him. She would never be able to forgive herself if she did nothing while the child who had done so much for suffered. And unlike her cousin, she knew damn well that the best way to help him was not to get him arrested. It was very rare that villains got any sympathy. And with how dangerous he was Mizu knew that the most likely outcome of him being arrested was him getting thrown in Tartarus for the rest of his life. He should be showing up any time now. She thought to herself as she sipped some tea. The house was a modest one. With two floors the upper on only containing two bedrooms and a guest room and a bathroom and the lower floor consisting of a kitchen and a living room. Mizu was currently in the living room on her couch sipping the tea on the table in front of her. Fwoosh. Mizu turned her head to see a ring of fire forming behind her. The ring turned into a portal and out stepped Izuku wearing his hood and Eri who was vibrating with excitement and holding a basket of apples. 
Kota apparently heard the sound too as he came down the stairs from his room. Eri? Kota! Eri yelled as she ran up to him taking his hand. Let's play! Uh, okay? Kota said not sure what was happening. Kota took Eri upstairs to his room and the two started playing whatever games were available. Izuku and Mizu smiled at this before looking back at each other. As so, Izuku said awkwardly. He didn't really know why Mizu had asked to meet with him, and he was kind of nervous that this was a trap and all might or endeavor would spring out at any moment. But at the same time, Izuku was all but certain that anyone other than all might was no threat to him. After all, when you beat a dude the size of a skyscraper with nothing but a chain, a motorcycle, and shotgun you tend to feel pretty invincible. Plus it's not like he could just say no. Not after failing to save her husband. You don't have to wear the hood, Misa said. I saw your face back at the graveyard. Izuku was struck by panic. What? You don't need to worry, Mizu reassured. I won't tell anyone. I don't plan on helping anyone catch you. Trust me. Izuku looked at her for a moment before closing his eyes. After about a minute had passed Izuku opened his eyes again and slowly took down his hood. All right. I believe you, Izuku said. Misa smiled. Well then let's talk. Meanwhile at All Might's house. All Might walked into his house before immediately crashing onto the couch. If only I hadn't used so much time, no? Even if I had more time he would have lost me eventually. When All Might first saw Ghost Rider on the news he was in shock. It was impossible. He had seen him die all that time ago. How could he be here? Then he noticed differences between Ghost Rider and the so-called spirit of vengeance he had met back then. The most notable difference being the color of his flames. They had been orange back then as opposed to green. The second difference was that he was smaller. It was hard to notice seeing as he was a skeleton, but when All Might came face to skull with him he could tell he was shorter and his bones were smaller. Lastly was he was weaker. If All Might was in his prime then he would have caught up to him no problem but back then All Might remembered the two of them being about the same in terms of strength and speed. So All Might came to the conclusion that this was not the same man. However, the similarities between the two were far too striking for them not to be related. And given that he was smaller and weaker than the man he met All Might deduced that he must be that man's son. It had seemed like sound logic. Then today happened. When Ghost Rider revealed that he was that man's successor many thoughts flew through his head. Does he have a quirk that's able to be passed down too? Is that why he has so many powers? How did that man pass on his power if All Might saw him die? Why was he only showing himself now? And now here he was, with more questions than answers, and no Ghost Rider to answer them. I really have hit rock bottom. All Might thought to himself. First I end up killing a kid and now I can't even do my job as a hero right. Ding dong. All Might sighed as he got up and walked to the door. Must be Azuka, he thought. All Might opened the door, and immediately was paralyzed with fear. Because standing on the other side of his doorway was his former sidekick, Sir Night Eye. Hello, Tashinori, he said. It's been a long time. And Naita, All Might yelped in alarm. W.W., what are you doing here? All Might would have sooner expected all for one to come knocking than his former sidekick. All these years the two had been avoiding each other so to say All Might was shocked when he just showed up at his front door out of the blue would be an understatement. Ghost Rider, Night Eye said looking away from All Might. He needs to be stopped. Uh, yeah? All Might said in a confused tone. He didn't really know what to say this was all so sudden. Have you heard of Mirio Togata? Night I asked. All Might nodded. Yes. I've heard that he is an excellent student who is considered to be number one even amongst pros. Well, except for me. Have you met him? Night I asked. No. All Might answered. We have yet to meet in person. I've heard that he has been working with you. Night I nodded. Correct. Tell me, have you considered him as a possible successor? All Might nodded. I have. From what I've read and seen of him he sounds like he would be perfect. Bright personality, comforting presence, unflinching determination, and he is already plenty powerful. Well then you'll understand when I say, you need to give one for all to Mirio, Night I said. 
Ghost Rider is seemingly unstoppable, and I'm not even sure you can beat him. Mirio is our only surefire way to take down Ghost Rider. All Might thought back to his battle against All for One. Specifically about his ally in that fight the man that resembled Ghost Rider. In the state All Might was in now, he was sure he would lose easily to that man. And even though Ghost Rider was weaker than his predecessor, he still might be strong enough to beat him in his current state. And that's assuming that he's not holding back. All Might knew that if anyone was going to beat Ghost Rider it would have to be his successor, and Izuka was not anywhere close to being ready. But Mirio sounded like if he got one for all he could take in Ghost Rider right now. But, could I really give up on Izuka? All Might pondered. And then suddenly the face of Izuka Midoriya flashed in his mind. The boy he killed. Suddenly All Might felt the crushing weight of his own guilt, and any consideration of Naitai's proposal flew out the window. I'm sorry Naitai but I already have a successor. All Might set his head hanging low. Naitai's eyes widened and for a moment he looked at All Might before immediately looking away again. Who? Naitai asked. Izuka Midoriya. All Might answered. She's a first year at UA. She lives here but she's out right now. A first year. Naitai shouted. A first year cannot take down Ghost Rider. I need you to look at the bigger picture here. I'm not just going to give up on her, All Might said. I've made my decision. But why can't you just have her give the cork to Mirio and then he can give it back? Night I asked. All Might shook his head once more. One for all does not work like that. Once you pass down one for all you can't get it back. It's like trying to reignite a used match. Night I shot All Might a frustrated look. But dash. No buts. All Might cut him off. The decision is final. Night I looked at All Might. For the first time during the conversation, he stared down the number one hero although he made sure to avoid looking him in the eye. Perhaps I should enlighten you with some facts that were discovered in a recent meeting concerning Ghost Rider. Did you know that he is a child? There was a pause as the information sunk in. What? All Might asked in a quiet voice. He's a child. Night I repeated aggressively. From what the pussycat said he is most likely not any older than your successor. Not only that but we have reason to believe that he may not be killing people of his own free will. And we also have confirmation that he after he destroyed the Yakuza he took in the daughter of their leader who is most likely not even in the double digits in terms of age. To reiterate there is a child who is being forced to slaughter villains by someone or something, possibly his own quirk, and is keeping a young girl in an unknown location. Do you understand the gravity of the situation now? All Might was silent. Night I looked at the number one hero harshly and was about to say something when All Might spoke. I'll do it, he said. Night I was taken aback. Had he done it? Had he finally been able to get his hero to look at things logically? Unless... All Might looked up at Night I. I'll be the one to take down Ghost Rider. Night I sighed. I suppose it was my fault for getting my hopes up. You really think you can beat him in your condition? Night I asked. All Might looked at him in the eyes and Night I stumbled back. I have to. Night I quickly regained his composure and glared at his hero before looking away. Fine. In that case, I will have to keep an eye on this, Izuka. Don't take this as me accepting your decision, but rather me acknowledging that I have no say in this. Goodbye, Tashinori. We will be seeing each other again soon. With that night I left, All Might watching him go until he was out of sight. All Might slammed the door closed and fell to the floor, his heart beating fast. Ghost Rider. I'm sorry. Next time. I will catch you. I can't afford to fail. Meanwhile with Izuka and Mizu. I would like Koda and Eri to have play dates I guess you could call them. Mizu said. Izuka looked down at the table with a solemn expression. Is there something wrong with that? Mizu asked. I will. Eri is not the safest to be around, Izuka said. Mizu raised an eyebrow. What do you mean? She seems fine to me. Izuka sighed. He looked long and hard at Mizu for a few seconds before responding. I guess the simplest way to explain it is by telling you the whole story. You don't mind if it's a bit long, do you? Mizu shook her head. Not at all. Please go on. Izuku took a breath before letting it out and starting his story. 
Do you remember my first appearance? Mizu nodded. Yes. When you destroyed the Yakuza. Izuki gave a sad smile at the somewhat bittersweet memory. Yeah. She was the reason for that. They were planning on making a quirk erasing bullet. Using her blood. Mizu said nothing but her face twisted to show her disgust at the idea of using a little girl's blood to hurt people. But that's not all. Izuka continued. In order to collect the most amount of blood in the quickest way possible the leader overhaul used his quirk to take her apart and put her back together. W what do you mean take her apart and put her back together? Mizu asked. She expected something traumatic but this, this was on a whole other level. I mean he would use his quirk to rip apart her body until it was nothing but a blood splatter against the wall, then putting her back together so he could do it again. Izuku explained through clenched teeth. He basically killed her over and over and over again so he could make money selling the quirk erasing bullets to the villains and an antidote to the heroes. Never in her life had Mizu heard something that atrocious. It would have been horrifying enough to hear that something like that happened to an adult but to think that all this happened to a child. It made Mizu want to throw up her lunch. After I killed them all I took in, Izuka said continuing his story. I basically had no choice. She seemed to distrust basically everyone else. Not that I can blame her. But after I took her in, I started noticing that she had some issues. Well after all she went through that's to be expected, Mizu said. I guess, Izuka shrugged. Anyway, Eri's quirk is called Rewind. It allows her to rewind a person's biological clock in any way she sees fit at alarming speeds with a single touch. She can turn you into a child or a monkey or just make you stop existing altogether. Mizu's eyes went wide. That's a powerful quirk. Izuka frowned. Yes. Too powerful. When it first emerged she didn't know how to control it and accidentally killed her father. Her mother gave her up to overhaul and rest you know. That poor girl. Misa thought to herself. What a coward of a mother she had. Misa could never imagine giving up her own child. No matter how dangerous his quirk was. Overhaul convinced her that she was a monster. Izuka continued. That her quirk was a curse. I managed to convince her otherwise but due to certain similarities. We share if my own self-esteem starts to decline then so does hers. I also noticed later on that she seems rather unfazed by death. Overall, she probably has a lot of mental illnesses, and while I have been training her to control her quirk, it can still go out of control from time to time. I'm telling you this because I want you to understand that being around Ari is dangerous. Her quirk doesn't work on me, so I'm fine. But I need to ask you this. Now that you know all this, do you still want her and Koda to have these play dates? This was a difficult question. She knew Izuka was right. That quirk of hers was very very dangerous. But at the same time, she didn't want to say no because if she did that would basically be turning away two children in need. You said that her quirk was touch-based, right? Mizu asked. Oh yeah, Izuka perked up. An easy way to tell if she's using her quirk is the bright green glow that surrounds her when it becomes active. And you've been teaching her how to use her quirk so she doesn't have any more incidents, right? Mizu asked. Izuka nodded. Yeah. She's only lost control of it once after I started teaching her. We've been making good progress. She might even be able to safely use her quirk on people in a month or two. So what are the chances of anything disastrous happening? Mizu inquired. Low. Very low. Izuku answered. Mizu went over the possibilities in her head. After a few minutes of thinking, she had finally made up her mind. Yes. She answered before giving a polite bow. I still want to go through with it. I think both Koda and Eri could benefit greatly from having a friend their age. Koda's always been a little bit more on the unpopular side and from what you told me I doubt Eri has even seen someone her age before Koda. I understand what you're saying about there being a potential danger but she's still just a little girl. One that's been through a lot. And as a former hero, I can't turn away someone in need. So please, let Eri and Koda play together from time to time. Sniff. Misa looked up to see that tears were rolling down Izuka's cheeks. I sniff thank you, Izuka said tearfully. It sniff it means a lot to me to hear you say that. Izuka couldn't hold back the tears of joy and started sobbing into his arm. 
Mizu watched with a smile on her face knowing that she made the right choice. After a few minutes, Izuka collected himself and managed to stop crying. As sorry. Izuka sniffed. It's just, Eri means a lot to me. I can tell, Mizu said. You two seem to work to make each other happy. Izuka smiled. Yeah, you know, my powers let me know whenever innocent blood is spilled. It has limits. It won't work again until I've killed however it was that spilled the blood, and it only works within a certain range. But this biggest restriction of that power is the power itself. I can only show up after innocent blood is spilled. Meaning that someone needs to get hurt or, or, dash. Die. Mizu finished. I can only imagine how hard it must be to only be able to show up after some dies. It's a hero's personal hell. And then having to kill someone afterward, dash. That's not hard. Izuka cut her off. As sorry about cutting you off, I just didn't want you to get more upset. It's fine. Mizu assured him. But what do you mean that's not hard? I find it hard to believe some who values human life so much would have no problems taking it. Even though Mizu did not have a problem with Ghost Rider killing people she herself would only ever think about killing two people. And luckily for her, they were both already dead. I think, no, I know that my powers change how I feel. Izuku explained. Whenever I think back to any of my targets I find that I can't sympathize with any of them no matter how hard I try. And whenever the time comes to do my job I feel anger. But just my anger I feel, someone else's anger. Whenever someone's in trouble I have to fight the rage to prioritize saving them over killing my target. And whenever there are other villains around my rage makes me want to kill them too, even though I don't have to. But I can't sympathize with them either. Honestly, if I ever lost my powers I would probably be horrified with what I'm doing but right now, killing villains is like breathing for me. That's a lot to unpack. Misa thought to herself. Where do I even begin to ask about something like that? I have so many questions. Ga. Focus Mizu. All right, what to ask first? Mizu took a deep breath and after a few seconds she spoke. Your quirk. You talk about it like it's not yours. Even back at the graveyard, you made it sound like someone gave you your quirk and like it was made for a specific purpose. Izuka sighed. He hadn't meant to start venting his problems out to this poor woman, but he couldn't deny it felt nice to have a conversation with someone who wasn't a seven-year-old. I got my powers from a outside source, Izuka said. I'm not gonna tell you from who or how but just know that these powers aren't mine and they aren't a quirk. As for them having a purpose you're right. My powers are meant to help me with my job as the spirit of vengeance. I'm meant to kill killers. That's my job. I agreed to it so I could help people save people. Suddenly the tone of Izuka's voice changed becoming infuriated and his eyes turned red. But I was tricked, Izuka growled. These powers aren't made for saving people they're made for killing people. And that's not even the worst part. He took advantage of my desperation and he made me agree to a secret second deal. One with a high cost. Tears once again came sliding down Izuka's face except this time there was no joy in them. Only anger, sadness, and regret. Mizu rolled up to him and put her hand on his back attempting to soothe the boy. After a few minutes, the tears stopped and Mizu smiled at the boy. You cry a lot, huh? As sorry. Izuka sniffed. Mizu shook her head. It's fine. You've been through more than most adults. You have every right to cry. Izuka's eyes widened. Nine years ago. Izuka felt so useless. Kakin was bullying yet another random kid and Izuka couldn't do anything about it. He had tried to stop him but all that resulted in was both of them getting beat up. Kakin had left some time ago as did the other victim of his beatings. But Izuka didn't feel like moving. Maybe it was because of the crushing sense of uselessness and despair. Maybe it was the burn wounds. Either way, all Izuka felt like doing was lying on the ground and crying. Izuku? He looked up from the grass to see his sister looking at him with concerned eyes. What happened? She asked, tears shining in her eyes. K. Kakin! Was all Izuka could say before he started sobbing again. Fortunately, that was all that needed to be said as Izuka understood what he meant instantly. Ever since Bakugo got his quirk he started acting differently. Picking on other students and showing off whenever he could. It got even worse after Izuka was revealed to be quirkless 
after that Izuka became a common target for Bakugo's beatings, much to Izuka's dismay. Izuka pouted. Jeez Kakan is being such a jerk. Izuka said nothing, he just continued to cry. Izuka tried to use her quirk to lift him up but all she could manage to do was lift him into a sitting up position. She had to take a second to recover from using her quirk that much, afterwards she crouched and wrapped her arms around her brother. It's okay to cry Izuku, she said. Remember what mom said. Crying is your body getting rid of all the sadness. So cry all you need bro. I'll wait till you're done so we can go home. Izuka hugged his sister back and so he cried and cried until he felt better. Back to the present. Izuka smiled through his tears at the bittersweet memory. It's been a while, since the last time I cried for a long period of time. I've been trying to keep it in to stay strong for Eri. It feels good. Thank you, Izuka said. It's been nice to talk to someone that isn't Eri for once. Mizu smiled. It's no problem at all. And please call me Mizu. This surprised Izuku. Hey, are you sure? Yes, Mizu said. I think it's safe to call us friends, right? Friends? Izuka didn't know what to say. After Bakugo, he never had any friends. And he had assumed after becoming a mass-murdering skeleton that he would remain friendless. So hearing her say that, it made Izuka even happier. Izuka smiled brightly. Okay. Then, please, call me Izuku. Is that your name? Mizu asked not sure if he was giving her a fake name or not. Izuka nodded. Yup. Izuka Midoriya. Sorry it took me so long to introduce myself. Mizu smiled back. Sorry for not asking. Beep 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 beep. Izuka looked down at his watch. Oh. It's dinner time already. Guess we should go then. Mizu frowned. You could stay for dinner if you would like. Izuka shook his head. No, it's okay. Besides, chances are I'm gonna have to work soon anyway. It's unlikely that I can go a whole day without someone attempting to kill someone else in this city. Misa sighed. I guess that's true. Eri! Izuka called. The two heard footsteps coming closer and closer until the two children were in sight. Time to go home, Izuka said. Eri frowned. Ah, do we have to? Izuka looked at Eri's adorable pout and started to reconsider. W.L. Dash. See, can't you guys stay? Koda asked, looking at Izuka hopefully. Izuka sighed. He stood no chance. Fine, we can stay a little low, Dash. Suddenly Izuka stopped and his eyes glowed a demonic red. Izuku? Are you okay? Asked a concerned Mizu. Eri sighed. That means he has to work. Izuku gave Mizu an apologetic look. Sorry. This might take a while. If I don't come back in a few hours would you mind if Eri stayed the night? Mizu gazed at Eri who in return gave her a begging look. Of course not. Achiko was concerned. Normally she and Izuka would walk together but Izuka was nowhere to be seen. She had also not given her a single call from her over the weekend. When she got to class she found Izuka sitting there and ran up to her. Izuka! she said getting her attention. I haven't seen you all weekend. You didn't walk with me to school either. Did you need some time to yourself or something? Izuka gave her friend a warm smile. Yeah. I'm fine now I just needed to think about some stuff. I'm fine now. Achiko gave her friend a concerned look. Are you sure? Do you want to talk about? Izuka quickly shook her head. No, no I'm fine. Really? This did not dispel Achiko's fear. I'm not gonna force you to talk about it. But if you need to talk about it, don't bottle it up. I'm always ready to listen. Izuka looked at her for a moment before standing up and hugging her. Thanks. That means a lot to me. Achiko hugged her back. It's no problem. The two separated and as Achiko was sitting down Ida ran into the room. Everyone. Class is about to start. Take your seats. Ah, uh, you're the only one not sitting down, Ciro pointed out. Ida realized this and quickly got into his seat. Damn it! Soon enough Aizawa walked in. Today you will be choosing a representative and vice-representative. That's so normal, the class thought. They were expecting him to do something crazy with ridiculously high stakes. 
Don't make too much noise, Aizawa said before crawling back into his sleeping bag. Most of the class went on about how they should be representative before Izuka spoke up. Why not just vote? She said. That is an excellent idea, Ida said. But won't we all just vote for ourselves? Kaminari asked. Not all of us want to be a rep, Izuka pointed out. Someone is bound to get more than one point, and if there's a tie we can just vote between the people that tied. Once again excellent idea, Midoriya, Ida shouted. Does he ever stop yelling? Izuka wondered. Paper was handed out to all the students. I mean obviously it should be me, Izuka thought to herself. I mean I may have tripped up yesterday but still, I'm more than capable of being class rep. Knowing Izuka she will probably vote for herself, Achiko thought. And sorry Izuka you're really smart but you really shouldn't be class rep. Ida seems good. Bakugo didn't know who to vote for. Crap. The only person I know in here is Izuka and she really should not be class rep. And I obviously am not fit to do it. Fuck it that Ida guy seems smart he can do it. Suddenly Izuka spoke. Just so everyone knows being class rep does not make you king or queen of the school like on TV it basically just means you have to do a bunch of extra work and that you have slightly more authority than normal. You can't change school uniform or make it so we don't get homework or something dumb like that. What? Yelled a portion of the class. You mean I wouldn't be able to make the girls wear shorter skirts? Mineta cried. You mean I would have to do like paperwork or something? That is correct. Momo said. Being class rep is more of a responsibility than power. You do have some power but it's not all that much. The class deflated at this and some of them crossed out their answers. Izuka smirked. Now that those idiots know they would actually have to handle responsibility they won't want to vote for themselves. Now I have this as the bag. After all the votes were collected and the points were put on the board. Ida 15. Momo 4. Izuka won. Aoyama won. What? Izuka was shocked. But suddenly a thought occurred. What if Bakugo was right and me acting like him made me unpopular? Izuka shook off the thought. No. He just said that to get out of fighting me. There's no truth in that. We are nothing alike. But still, why did no one vote for me then? Izuka pondered that question until she figured it out. I know how great I am. But these guys don't. That must be why. And after Ida's victory yesterday, of course, they would vote for him. Damn it. Aoyama voted for himself thinking that it would be best if the class rep was someone who shines. Many of the other students just looked at Ida and voted for him because he looked like the type of guy to want this. While some of the other students voted for him based off of how well he performed when he fought Izuka and Achiko. Ida also voted for himself because he felt he was best for the job. Momo voted for herself and Mineta, Kaminari and Siro voted for her because they thought she was attractive. I am honored that you all think I am worthy of such a position, Ida said. I will do my best to live up to your expectations. Momo stood up as well and looked around the room, particularly at the perverted gazes she was getting. I have a feeling that I didn't get those votes because of my intelligence. She sighed. Oh well, at least I can prove myself. After that everyone went to lunch. Lunch. Sorry for not voting for you, Achiko said. But to be fair you did cost us the match with Ida and Bakugo. The two were sitting alone as per usual. Izuka sighed. Yeah, I know. Izuka looked over at Ida and sighed. Give me a second. Izuka walked over to Ida and tapped his shoulder. Midoriya, Ida said slightly shocked that she approached him. Is there something you wanted? Izuka nodded. Can we talk somewhere else? Ida nodded and the two walked into the hallway. I, Izuka breathed in deeply. I wanted to apologize for judging you so quickly. And for being such an ass. Language, Ida yelled. And as I said there is no need for an apology. As I said it was my behavior that caused you to act as you did. Yeah, but I was still kind of a dick about it, Izuka said. Look, just accept my apology, and let's say we're cool. I suppose I could do that, Ida said, choosing to ignore her cursing again. Izuka smiled. See, me and Bakugo are nothing alike. Good thing I nipped that in the bud. Meanwhile elsewhere. 
Izuka sighed. Another day another killing spree. Izuka would have said that it had gotten boring after doing it so much but in truth, it was never entertaining. The person whose blood was spilled had survived and ran away so it was just Izuku and the remains of the three villains that had been here in an abandoned warehouse. You know why is it villains always pick an abandoned warehouse or alleyway to commit their crimes in, Izuka wondered. Why don't heroes just hang around these areas? Small-time crime would be almost non-existent. Boom. Fush. Before Izuka even knew what was happening he was thrown off his bike and through the skies of the city. Wait, what? Izuka thought to himself. What the heck happened? Wait. There's only one person who's that strong and that fast. Crash. Before Izuka could finish that thought he hit the street. Ow. Izuka said. He slowly got up and looked around. It looked like he got thrown across the city. There were no people on the sidewalks. No cars on the streets, and no sounds coming from anyone or anything other than him and some helicopters in the air. It was as if this part of the city was completely abandoned. Or evacuated. Boom. Izuka saw something crash down in front of him, and from the cloud of dust emerged all might. The hero wasted no time talking and charged at Izuku. Thinking fast Izuku ducked avoiding the hero's lunge. Isn't this a bit much? Suddenly attacking me, evacuating a part of the city? This isn't like you all might. All Might ran forward and attempted to punch him but Izuka caught it and held back All Might's punch, albeit barely. All Might tried to punch him with his other arm but Izuka caught that as well. Gah! Izuka grunted as he was being pushed back. All Might was stronger than him. I'm sorry but you've left us no choice. All Might said as he pushed Izuka back even more. Drastic times call for drastic measures. All Might, Izuka said. Did you evacuate everyone? There are no civilians, no heroes, no one but just us? Of course, All Might said. Suddenly Izuka's emerald flames began to glow brighter. Good. Kaboom. The entire street was engulfed in flames as the buildings turned to rubble from the massive explosion Izuku unleashed. When the explosion died down Izuku found himself standing alone in a cloud of dust and a pile of rubble inside a massive crater. He's not down. Izuka summoned his bike. He's not going to stop and talk. Probably because of the fact that his time is running out. I need to get out of here now while the cloud is hiding me. Izuka sped away on his bike out of the cloud. As Izuka was attempting to escape the earth rose up forming a massive wall. What? Izuka thought in shock. Pixie Bob. She must be responsible for this. I bet she's watching in one of those helicopters. Damn it if I try to ride up this All Might will catch me in no time. Izuka heard something rushing toward him, and he pulled out his shotgun. Just as All Might came into sight Izuka blasted him with full power. Boom. All Might was launched back into the cloud. Damn it. I'm going to have to fight my way out of this. Sorry, All Might but I can't hold back. Boom 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 boom. Izuka repeatedly shot at where All Might was in order to keep the hero at bay causing huge explosions to litter the battlefield. Boom 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 boom. After many shots, Izuka stopped. Did I get him? A few moments passed, and then Izuka saw a shadow and the smoke getting bigger and bigger presumably coming at him. Izuka let off another shot, revealing that it wasn't All Might but a piece of rubble. Damn it where did he? Crash. Suddenly All Might stomped on him from above. Gah! Detroit smash! Boom! All Might landed a powerful blow on Izuka causing the wind to kick up and a tornado of dirt and rubble to form. Just as All Might was about to punch him again he was rammed by Izuka's motorcycle. Izuka's motorcycle kept pushing All Might until the hero managed to sink his feet into the ground and push back against the bike. All Might grabbed the handlebars of the flaming bike burning his hands before throwing it as far as he could. All Might spat out blood. Damn it! I need to stay close to him otherwise. Boom 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 boom. Another barrage of blasts from Izuka's shotgun left another cloud of smoke, ash, and dust. Izuka stopped his attack. He had no idea how much All Might could take but he definitely didn't want to overdo it. The cloud dispersed revealing All Might still standing covered in wounds. 
I need to get that gun away from him. All might thought to himself. His long-range advantage is too much. Izuka aimed his shotgun at All Might and the hero knew he had to think fast. All Might grabbed a chunk of rubble next to him, and as Izuka pulled the trigger All Might threw the chunk at the bullet causing it to explode. All Might ran at Izuku, picking up large chunks of rubble. Izuka fired his shotgun as fast as he could but All Might just threw more rubble, making it so he couldn't get a direct shot. Before Izuka could switch tactics All Might was already upon him and ripped the weapon from his hand before punching him across the crater. All Might looked at the shotgun. Ghost Rider could control this even if it wasn't in his hands so he couldn't just throw it aside. He needed to destroy it. All Might grabbed both ends of the gun and pulled. He could feel the weapon resist his strength. Whatever it was made of it was much stronger than any normal metal. All Might pulled with all his strength and felt the weapon begin to bend. Gah! With that scream, the weapon snapped in two. Suddenly the weapon burst into flames and turned to ash in the hero's hands. What on earth was that made of? Slash. Gah! All Might cried as he felt a burning pain in his side. He looked down to see a large gash in his side. He heard the sound of a chain rattling and managed to jump out of the way of Izuka's chain attack. He looked to see Izuka swinging his chain. Izuka sent the chain directly at All Might who dodged it once more. All Might charged at Izuka once more but Izuka maneuvered the chain to block him. Suddenly All Might was struck in the back by the part of the chain Izuka he had dodged earlier. He can control the chain. As he tried to ignore the pain from the burning gashes on his body. Suddenly the chain turned in midair heading right for All Might who dodged once more. All Might dodged a few more attacks before he found himself surrounded by the seemingly magic floating, infinitely expanding chain. Izuku didn't give the hero a chance to find a way out as he signaled the chain to wrap around the hero, trapping him. All Might struggled to get out but it was to no avail. Izuku summoned his bike and had it go right in front of All Might before turning to the side. Izuka held out his hand. His fireballs may not be as powerful as his shotgun but they would work for what he had planned. Izuka aimed and shot a fireball right at the bike. And then everything turned white. Kaboom! A massive explosion, bigger than any that had come before, knocking back even the helicopters far above as the pilots tried to gain back control and avoid the mushroom cloud that had erupted. After a few minutes, the explosion died down leaving a cloud of dust and ash that had once been part of the city. For about five minutes the cloud dispersed a little revealing Izuku on the ground, still in his ghost rider form. His bones were covered in cracks and the cracks on his skull were leaking green flames. Slowly Izuku forced himself up, pain shooting through his body as he did so, his brain telling him to stay down. Izuku looked at the dust cloud where all might had been a few minutes ago. Please tell me I got him, please tell me he's down. The cloud dispersed revealing all might. Still standing, if only barely. His costume was in tatters, his body was covered in cuts, gashes, burns, and bruises, his legs were shaking and his body was emitting steam. Damn it! I made a promise, All Might said. I promised that I would take you down, and save you and that girl from whatever fate had befallen you too, and I won't go down until that promise is fulfilled. All Might struck his heroic pose, his signature smile still on his face as blood leaked from his mouth. I'm sorry that it had to come to this. But this is the only way to stop you. So sit tight and know that soon you'll be able to rest and that the girl will be safe. Why? Because I am here. Izuka was in awe. Even with all those wounds. Even after a blast like that. He was still standing tall and smiling. This was the dread every villain faced. This was the symbol of peace. This was all might. All might. Izuka thought to himself. You really are amazing. As long as your spirit is strong then you won't ever go down. Izuka shook his head. Now was not the time for fanbing. He really won't stay down no matter what. At this rate, this will end with either me getting captured or all might dying. Or both. I can't let that happen but what can I do? Attacking him won't make this situation better and all might's will is too strong. Suddenly he got an idea. His will. If attacking his body won't work then I need to attack his spirit, and I know just how to do it. He looked at All Might and cringed internally at what he was about to do. I'm sorry All Might. 
but this is for both our sakes. There was a pause as all might prepare to attack when suddenly Izuku spoke. Save us? He said. You mean like you saved Izuku? All Might froze. What? what? I can see your sins, All Might. Izuku said walking closer to the hero. I know what you've done. You say I need to be stopped because I'm a killer? Hypocrite. You killed someone. A child. A boy who just wanted to be like you. All Might stuttered as he started to shrink. And no, I didn't mean to dash. You were his hero. Izuka continued getting right up in the hero's face. He looked up to you more than anyone in the world. And what did you do? You crushed his dream. Caused him to kill himself. You killed him. All Might tried to respond but the words were caught in his throat as Ghost Rider stared him down. His body had almost completely reverted back to his true form. And what's worse if he was alive he could have helped his mother escape that fire. But because of you, Inko Midoriya was all alone when that fire came. She died because of you. And because of you, Izuka Midoriya is all alone. All Might hung his head in shame as his true form was now fully exposed for all the world to see. All the doubts that kept him up at night were no being thrown in his face. But you want to why I never came for you? Izuka said. Because everything I just said was a lie. All Might looked back up at him with a surprised look. W what? Izuka's death was not your fault, Izuka said. Izuka was killed by his own bad luck and the world around him. There is no single person that can take the blame for years of bullying and being told his dream was impossible. He never blamed you. Not for a second. Whack. Before All Might could respond Izuka backhanded him onto the ground, finally knocking him out. I did it. I beat All Might. Izuka collapsed on the ground, exhausted. He could feel himself passing out. He had no motorcycle and his chain was most likely destroyed meaning he couldn't summon a portal. As Izuka was halfway between passing out and thinking of a way to escape he saw a black feather fly in front of him. And then a swarm of black feathers started circling him, surrounding him entirely and after a few seconds, they dispersed revealing that he was home with Hawks right in front of him. Hey, Hawks said. You're welcome. Izuka smiled. Thanks. And then he passed out. Eri was watching the news as she would when she bored. She liked watching hero fights and writing down their weaknesses in her notebook. Breaking news, the newswomen said. Number one hero All Might has cornered Ghost Rider and the two are now fighting in a small part of the city that was secretly evacuated yesterday. Eri's eyes widened as the image changed to show Izuku and All Might fighting. It was obviously being recorded on a helicopter, but the action was still clear. Kaboom! Izuku! Eri yelled. She knew how strong All Might was and while she had faith in her brother's power she didn't want him to get hurt. It looks like the Ghost Rider has unleashed a massive attack, the newsman in the helicopter said. The streets had been turned into a massive crater and after a minute Izuku could be seen trying to escape but was blocked by a wall of earth. It looks like Ghost Rider had attempted to flee the scene but was stopped by pro-hero Pixie Bob. Who can be seen in that helicopter over there? The newsman said. Eri glared at the screen as it showed Pixie Bob watching the fight in another helicopter. Why can't you just leave him alone? Eri shouted at the screen. She was really beginning to dislike heroes. So far the only one she likes was Mizu and she wasn't even a hero anymore. The camera looked back at the action and Izuka was shooting All Might repeatedly at full power. It looks like All Might is taking several attacks from Ghost Rider's enhanced weaponry, the reporter said. It seems that All Might's lack of long-range attacks is proving to be troublesome against Ghost Rider. Suddenly something else exploded and All Might was on top of Izuku. Eri gasped as tears started forming in her eyes. All Might punched Izuku causing a small tornado to erupt. He did it! the newsman said. All Might has landed a direct attack. I doubt Ghost Rider will be getting up after that. Please, Izuku. Be okay. Eri cried. Just as All Might was about to strike again, he was rammed by Izuku's motorcycle. Did Ghost Rider really take a punch for All Might? The newsman gasped. And does that bike have a mind of its own? Eri was at the edge of her seat as she was now seriously worried for her brother's safety. All Might spat out blood and the newsman gasped. All Might! 
Did he just, did he just bleed? Yes. Bleed more. Eri cheered oblivious to how morbid that sounded. Izuka let off another barrage of shotgun blasts and afterward All Might was covered in wounds. All Might! The newsman shouted in horror. The tone of the broadcast had quickly changed. At first, it was hopeful. They thought that today would be the end of the Ghost Rider but now things were different. Ghost Rider was stronger than anyone had realized. The public had never seen the symbol of peace struggle let alone covered in wounds. Now people were shocked and horrified. All except for Eri who was cheering for Izuku to shoot him some more. All Might charged at Izuku throwing rubble to block his shotgun blast before grabbing the weapon and knocking Izuku aside. The newsman cheered as All Might snapped the weapon in two. No! Eri cried. Jeez calm down kid! Eri looked behind her to see Hawks standing there. Hawks sat down and watched the news next to her. Wow, he really got himself in a pickle, huh? Go help him, Ares shouted. He needs help. He's getting hurt. Hawk sighed. Can't. I'm a hero. I can't just go helping villains in public. But don't worry. I'll get him out of there if he's about to get captured. This made Ari feel a bit better but not much. Her brother was still out there getting punched by one of the most powerful people on the planet. All Might was dodging Izuka chain attacks but the chain eventually surrounded him and trapped him. Everyone watched with bated breath. The news people hoping All Might would break free and take down Ghost Rider, Hawks hoping All Might would go down, and Eri was hoping All Might would explode. Izuka brought his bike in front of All Might. Oh no, Hawks said. That's gonna hurt. What? What's gonna hurt? Eri asked. Kaboom. Suddenly everything shook. It was like a miniature earthquake had run through the city and even in the secret underground former Yakuza base, Eri could still feel a slight shaking. Izuku! Eri yelled at the TV as tears started falling down her face. The helicopter spun out of control as the driver tried desperately to regain control and the cameraman had to use his quirk in order to keep hold of the camera. Once everything had died down the pilot managed to get control back. What happened? The cameraman asked. After some of the dust cleared they were able to see Izuku whose bones were covered in cracks. Eri was sobbing now she tried to call out her brother's name again but it was stuck in her throat. More dust cleared showing All Might still standing but heavily damaged. All Might then stood up in his signature stance, filling the news people with hope and Eri with dread. She looked back at Hawks and gave him a desperate pleading look but he ignored her and just kept on watching. Just as it looked like All Might was about to attack. He froze. Izuku started walking over to All Might and the hero just stood there frozen. W what's going on? The newsman asked. Why isn't All Might moving? Eri held her breath with newfound hope as Izuku walked closer and closer to the hero. And then All Might started to shrink. What? The news people cried. Soon All Might had fully deflated into a skeleton-like man and the news people were in shock as was Eri and Hawks. What the hell? Hawks said. There were few things that surprised him anymore. The number one hero turning out to look like a bag of bones with skin and blonde hair. Izuku was right in front of All Might and after a few seconds where it looked like Izuku was talking, he knocking him out. The news people were speechless. Eri, on the other hand, had one word to say. Yes. Eri's tears changed from tears of sadness to tears of joy as she jumped up and down on the couch in celebration of her brother's victory. Hawks rolled his eyes and stood up, smiling just a little bit. Suddenly black feathers surrounded Izuku and appeared in the base before dispersing and revealing Izuku. Hey, Hawks said. You're welcome. Izuku smiled. Thank you. After that Izuku passed out. Eri ran over to him and hugged him crying into his hair with her little arms wrapped around his head. Hawks saw her horn begin to rise up and a green glow surrounded her. What? Hawks said. Suddenly there was an explosion of green light making Hawks look away. When the glow died down, Hawks looked back to see that Izuku was back in his ghost rider form without a crack in sight. Eri was still crying seemingly not noticing what had just happened. Eri? Izuku asked, confused as to what was going on. Eri stopped sobbing and looked up to see that Izuku was okay. Izuku sat up and Eri lunged at him. 
hugging him as hard as she could. Ayazuku! Eri cried. I was so scared. I thought why you were gonna you were gonna. SH says SH, Izuku said calming the girl as she cried into his chest. He noticed she was glowing a put together what happened. Hawks, however, was still confused. So you wanna explain how all your injuries healed? Eri's quirk lets her rewind a person's biological clock, Izuku explained. Or to put it simply it lets her bring a person back to a previous state. However she has difficulties controlling it so when she gets extremely stressed it can activate on its own, this more often than not will lead to her accidentally rewinding someone to before they were born and killing them. Luckily this form is immune to it and will instantly kick in whenever Eri is about to accidentally kill me. She must have accidentally used it and healed my injuries and just before it started killing me my powers activated. Huh, Hawks said. Neat. I am sorry I lost control. Eri cried trying and failing to get control over herself. It's okay, Eri, Izuka said. It's okay. Meanwhile, a few minutes ago, Izuka was suspicious. All Might had been busy lately and had barely paid her any mind. So she decided to watch the news and see what happened. Safe to say whatever she was expecting, it wasn't this. She hadn't really thought much of the Ghost Rider at first. She could care less for the lives of villainous assholes and since she wasn't a hero yet she didn't have to deal with him. Yeah, he was strong but All Might existed so who cares. Then it was broadcast a few days ago that he had a sister. A little girl. That made her kind of sad. The poor girl probably couldn't go out in public anymore after that. Hopefully, she got put into a good family after her brother was captured. Now here on the news, All Might and Ghost Rider were fighting. And Ghost Rider was holding his own. It's fine. Izuka thought to herself. He's probably holding back. He may not have one for all anymore, but he's still All Might. That train of logic didn't last long as she saw All Might struggling against his long-range attacks and it looked like he was even getting hurt. All right, so Ghost Rider is way stronger than I thought. Still, All Might is gonna win. Once that stupid gun is gone, he's a goner. All Might shared that train of thought as he disarmed Ghost Rider and destroyed his weapon. Unfortunately for All Might, Ghost Rider still had his chain which he used to cut and trap All Might. Then Ghost Rider brought his bike in front of All Might and extended his hand. Then the explosion happened which Izuka could feel from her own house made her remember something. All Might was just as human as anyone else. And then fear filled her. Once the explosion died down and the dust cleared both combatants were heavily injured and Izuka was on the edge of her seat. Her confidence in All Might winning this fight was gone and now she crossed her fingers in hopes that All Might would be alright. All Might stood up proudly and was about to attack when he suddenly froze, and Ghost Rider started walking towards him. Why isn't All Might moving? Izuka thought. Is he? Is he saying something? It was hard to spot due to the camera being so high up, but if you look close enough you could see Ghost Rider's jaw moving. Izuka's eyes widened in horror as All Might began to deflate. No, 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 no. All Might jump away. Run. Fuck the fight you need to get out of there. But All Might stayed still, completely frozen as Ghost Rider closed in on him. When Ghost Rider was right in front of All Might, Izuka felt dread she hadn't felt since her mother died as tears went down her face as the fact that Ghost Rider only kills villains escaped her mind. All she saw was a killer standing right in front of a weakened All Might. Please no. Not again. I can't lose anyone else. Luckily for her ghost rider just knocked him out before falling to the ground himself. Izuka let out a breath she didn't realize she was holding as a few tears dripped down her face. Thank God. I forgot he only kills villains. Izuka thought wiping the tears away. All Might's true form got exposed. But at least it's over. Ghost Rider may have won the fight but he lost the war and now he's gonna be captured and... Before Izuka could finish that thought Black Feather surrounded Ghost Rider and took him away. God damn it. A few minutes ago elsewhere. Misa didn't need this much stress in her life. She had just been cooking when Kota called her to say that Izuka was fighting All Might. When she heard that her heart skipped a beat. She knew Izuka was strong. After all, he did kill Muscular. But All Might had just an insane amount of power. 
but to her surprise when she started watching she found that Izuku was holding his own. All Might may have been a little stronger but Izuku had a massive range advantage that he was making full use of. Yeah, Ghost Rider kick his butt. Koda cheered. He didn't hate or dislike All Might, he did a little after this. But Izuka saved his mom. He was one of the coolest people on earth in Koda's mind, and he knew if something happened to Izuka then Eri would be heartbroken, and the image of a heartbroken Eri made Koda upset. Eventually, Izuka got hit which made Mizu cringe a little bit but Izuka managed to get All Might off him and take back his range advantage. Not for long though as All Might eventually got through the blast and snapped the shotgun in two. Koda and Mizu didn't say anything but his eyes were glued to the TV, hopeful that Izuka would win. I never thought that I would be rooting against All Might. Mizu thought to herself. Soon All Might was trapped by Izuka's chain and Izuka brought his bike in front of him. And then the entire house shook slightly as a massive explosion covered the screen. When the house stopped shaking the two were quiet. When some of the dust cleared and they were able to see Izuka they were horrified to see Izuka's bones covered in cracks. But Mizu was slightly relieved to see All Might wasn't much better. All Might struck a confident pose but Mizu knew he was on his last legs. As a former hero, she knew that it was standard to never show that you were in pain. All Might was about to attack when suddenly he froze. And Izuka started walking towards him. Why isn't he moving? Koda asked. It was hard to see but Mizu had a well-trained eye and could tell that Izuku was saying something. It was impossible to tell what because the camera was too far away to pick up the sound and Izuka had no lips to read, but Mizu was pretty sure she knew what was happening. Psychological warfare, Mizu said. Sometimes when you can't overpower your opponent the only way to win is with words. Sometimes it's to distract an enemy, but if you know something about your opponent, something really personal, you can stop your opponent outright. So, Izuka knows something personal about All Might? Koda asked. Misa paused. I think so. Then All Might started to deflate. Koda's eyes widened. What's going on? Mizu's eyes widened as well. I don't know. Before either of them knew it, All Might had deflated into a skeleton-like man. Izuka walked right in front of him and knocked him out. This shook the two out of their shock and Koda cheered. He won! He won! Misa smiled at her son's enthusiasm but her smile fell immediately as she realized something. Izuka doesn't have his chain. How is he gonna e-space? Luckily she didn't have to worry for long as Black Feathers took him away. Meanwhile a few minutes ago, Blackheart sighed. What is this? Blackheart had been called by All for One, and when he came he saw All for One sitting on a couch in front of a TV with a bowl of popcorn. The heroes have been secretly evacuating a part of the city. All for one said. They only do this if they know that there is going to be a very destructive battle in that area. It's a very rare event, and with All Might here they never thought they would have to do it again. So my friend, who? Is the only person that can make All Might use enough of his power that he would have to evacuate the area? The spirit of vengeance, Blackheart answered. This will be fun. All for one chuckled. Indeed. Blackheart hopped onto the couch. I'm rooting for Ghost Rider, what about you? All for asked as he reached for the remote. All might all the way. Blackheart said as he took a piece of popcorn, grew a mouth and then ate it. It's starting. All for one said as All Might and Ghost Rider faced off. How can you even see this? Blackheart asked eating some more popcorn. I have my ways. All for one answered. All Might and Ghost Rider clashed, and it seemed like All Might was a bit stronger. Use your back, Blackheart shouted. Headbutt him. Izuki used his powers and exploded. That idiot had no range. Blast him to hell, all for one cheered. When the two recovered Ghost Rider did just that, pelting All Might with shots from his gun. Yes. Shot him. Shot him, all for one yelled. All Might distracted Ghost Rider with a piece of rubble before landing on him. Yes. Use that tiny brain of yours, Blackheart said. All Might landed a powerful punch on Ghost Rider, but before he could do any more damage, All Might was rammed by Ghost Rider's bike. Gah! Damn that oversized children's toy! Blackheart cursed. All Might threw the bike aside and was hit by many blasts from Ghost Rider's shotgun. 
Looks like All Might just can't keep up. All for one chuckled. All Might's rubble blocking Ghost Rider's blast and getting close enough to grab the shotgun and punch Tezuku aside. Break it, break it! Blackheart chanted. All Might snapped the weapon in two. All right. Let's see how the spirit fares now! Blackheart exclaimed. All for one would have rolled his eyes if he had them. I imagine he will just use his chain. And indeed he did. Cutting All Might while at the same time keeping him at bay and eventually trapping him. Blackheart looked back at All for One who had a smug grin on his face. I hate when you're right. That unfortunate considering I'm always right. All for One boasted. Izuka brought his bike in front of All Might and destroyed it, unleashing a massive explosion. You think that killed them both? Blackheart asked. All for One sighed. Hopefully not. All Might can die but we need Ghost Rider for our plans. The smoke cleared and neither of them were dead just heavily injured. But All Might stood up taller smiled. Looks like I win this one, Blackheart said with a laugh. All for one side. He didn't really think Ghost Rider was going to win but he couldn't stand the thought of rooting for All Might. But then, All Might froze. And Ghost Rider started walking towards him. Wait, what? Blackheart exclaimed. Oh? All for one said. It seems like Ghost Rider is saying something. Perhaps Ghost Rider knows something we don't. I call bullshit, Blackheart yelled as Ghost Rider got closer to the deflating All Might. Looks like the public is about to see how pathetic All Might really is, All for One said with a smile. All for One fully deflated and Izuka knocked him out. Damn it, Blackheart cursed. He then grabbed the popcorn bowl and ate the entire thing in rage, including the bowl. Well, it looks like things are wrapping up. All for one said ignoring his friend's freak out. I wonder if Dash. Suddenly Black Feather came and warped Ghost Rider away. There we go. Looks like Tsabkio finally got off his behind. All for one said. Yeah about time that lazy bastard. Blackheart said. It looks like the fight weakened both of them should we really go through with the plan. If the Noma kills Ghost Rider than Dash. Then it simply means we will have to wait a little longer. All for one said. We need to kill All Might as fast as possible. Fine, Blackheart said. Well, then I'll continue my work. After all, if we are going to attack Yui, we must be prepared. All for one gave a sinister smile. Indeed. Izuka was speechless looking at All Might. She and Izuku had always put him on such a high pedestal and for the most part, he met those expectations. Sure, he had been much frilier than she could have ever expected but even after being reduced to skin and bones, even while dealing with that horrid wound, he still fought for the people with everything he had and stayed the undefeatable symbol of peace. Until today. Someone beat All Might. In a head-to-head -head fight. And now here he was in a hospital bed at Yudade's medical bay. Defeated. She, Nizu, Detective Nao Mesa, and Recovery Girl had gathered here after All Might was rushed here in an ambulance. Surprisingly none of his injuries were too bad. He had a lot of them, but it seems Ghost Rider had purposely made sure that none of his attacks did any permanent damage. That's not to say that All Might was in good shape. Recovery Girl had said he wouldn't be able to transform for a few days, and even then his time limit would most likely be decreased even further. Not to mention he would probably be knocked out for the rest of today and most of tomorrow. This is bad, Nao Mesa said. He lost and his true form was revealed to the public. Not to mention that Ghost Rider is still out there and seemingly is in league with someone else. Niza pointed out. You're right, Nao Mesa said. The black feathers. They kind of looked like the ones Hawks has but they can't possibly be his. Focus! Recovery Girl shouted. What we need to focus on is the possible utter collapse of our society. Sorry, Nao Mesa said. You're right. As dangerous as Ghost Rider is the public is even more so. Really? Izuka said, her eyes never leaving the unconscious All Might. Because I really think that the seemingly unstoppable flaming skeleton murderer is a lot more threatening than a bunch of angry people. Not true, Niza said. Ghost Rider may be strong but at the very least he only kills criminals. When you have scared people that fear if nothing is done about it, will turn into anger and that anger into violence. 
At that point, Ghost Rider's murders will seem tame compared to the pure chaos that will unfold if we don't deal with this now. Izuka stayed silent. Izuka, Recovery Girl said. Why don't you go outside for a moment? Why? Izuka yelled turning to face the short women. So the grown-up can talk. This is my problem too. I'm the one who is going to have to fight that monster. Everyone was silent for a moment as Izuka calmed down. I'm sorry it's just Dash. We understand, Niza said. Seeing All Might fall to Ghost Rider must have been a shocking experience. The rest of the public thinks that after All Might, no one could beat Ghost Rider. And that's quite terrifying. But you know that there is someone else who could beat Ghost Rider. You. Meaning that you will have to get as strong as possible in the shortest amount of time, or else more and more people will die. And knowing that is even more terrifying. Izuka cringed. He hit the nail right on the head. But Midoriya, you seem to be missing something. Niza said. You're fifteen. Yes, you may have won for all, but that doesn't mean you have to feel responsible for stopping an exceedingly powerful villain at fifteen. Izuka didn't respond. I know that this won't dissipate your fears, but please don't feel like you need to beat Ghost Rider right now. Niza continued. Yes, it is unlikely that someone else will be able to beat Ghost Rider, but that doesn't mean you need to throw yourself at him. And remember when you do fight him, you won't have to do it alone. Niza is right, Naomesa said. Ghost Rider seems to be focused solely on killing villains. He even avoided causing permanent damage to All Might. So when you fight him, you won't have to worry about dying. Calm down, take a breath. Izuka stayed silent. The adults looked at her for a little bit before Izuka said, I'm going outside. Izuka walked out and Recovery Girl sighed. He should have given it to her when she was older. Putting all this stress on someone her age. I agree, Niza said. But Yagi was not thinking logically when he gave it to her in the first place. Naomesa raised an eyebrow. What do you mean? Niza sighed. Flashback to after the first lesson. Are you sure about this? Niza asked. The two were sitting in Niza's office a few hours after All Might's first class. About what? All Might asked in return. About making Midoriya your successor. Niza answered taking a sip of his tea. She doesn't seem to have many of the traits you would want for the next symbol of peace. She acted overconfidently and when she left, I could feel the anger radiating off her from the camera. What exactly made you choose her? All Might looked down at the floor and said nothing a guilt-ridden expression on his face as he stared at the ground. Yagi, Niza said getting his attention. What did you do? All Might paused for a moment before answering. I, I told her brother he couldn't be a hero. That explains it. Niza thought, putting all the pieces together. Would that happen to be around the time he killed himself? Niza asked already knowing the answer. All Might kept looking down refusing to look at the principal. The exact same day. There was a long pause as Nizu allowed that information to sink in and for All Might to compose himself a little. So you gave it to her out of guilt, Nizu said. What else could I do? All Might asked. I took her brother's life. There is nothing I could ever do to make up for that, even giving her all for one. But I had to do something, anything to try and alleviates the pain I caused her. I saw her drive to be a hero, to be the number one hero, and that was all I needed. I know she has some faults, but she has a good heart. With time, I'm sure that she can be better than I'll ever be as a symbol of peace. Niza sipped his tea before setting it down on the table. I hope so. Back to the present. So he gave it to her out of guilt, recovery girl shouted. That nitwit. One for all is not something you can just give someone because you feel bad. The next user needs to be carefully chosen and inspected. Niza nodded. I agree. However, it's too late for us to be arguing about this. Yagi had already given her one for all. Trying to convince him to reconsider his choice is useless since he already made the choice. Naomesa sighed. He knew that the kid's death must be eating at his friend like nothing else. It was in All Might's nature to blame himself and in this case, it was pretty undeniable that he was somewhat responsible for the kid's death, even if it was unknowingly. Recovery girls sat down on a stool. You're right. Nothing we can do about it now. The best thing we can do is support the girl and make sure she's ready to become the symbol of peace. 
The other two nodded. Meanwhile with Izuku. Izuku walked into the kitchen where Hawks was located. Ari's asleep, Izuku said. Her quirk can exhaust her if she uses it too much, plus all the emotional exhaustion she went through today means she was really tired. Hawks nodded. Her quirk sounds really useful. I know a lot of people who would want to get their hands on her. Izuka frowned. Well, if they try anything, then I'll burn them alive. Hawks chuckled. Protective much? She's been through a lot, Izuka said. She's faced more pain and misery than most people will ever see in their lives. I'll take your word for it, Hawks said. Izuka sat down next to him. Why didn't you get me out of there sooner? Simple, Hawks said. Once people saw that you were able to go hand to hand with All Might, no hero is going to want to fight you. And I get an excuse not to go after you. I guess, Izuka said with a frown. But now that I beat All Might, there's gonna mass panic. Innocent blood will be spilled everywhere, and there will be riots left and right. What's your plan for that? There was a pause. Um, Hawks responded. I don't. What? Izuka yelled. Yeah, I kinda didn't think this through, Hawks explained. It was kind of a heat of the moment thought. So I didn't really have time to think this through. Izuka slammed his head onto the table. Why is this my life? Don't worry, Hawks said. All we have to do is make some kind of public statement or something. Izuka looked up at him with a questioning expression. Hawks sighed. Just say on camera that you're not going to kill random people and that you're only after murders. That should calm people down at least a little bit. Izuka shook his head. Even if that would work, cameras and phones can't hear me when I talk in my ghost rider form. Hawks' eyes widened. Really? I mean, now that I think about it, that makes sense. You don't have vocal cords, so you have to communicate via magic. And I guess that technology can't pick up the magic you use to talk. Hawks leaned back trying to think of a solution to this problem. Well, they know what Eri looks like, right? Izuku immediately caught on to what Hawks was planning. I don't think anyone is going to take what I'm saying seriously if a seven-year-old says it. Well, if you stand behind her, I think they'll get the message, Hawks said. Just stand behind her, say what you want to say, and have Eri talk into the camera. Izuka sighed. It probably wouldn't do much, but it was better than nothing. He would need to be there in whatever statement they made or else people wouldn't think it was him. We would also need to find some way for everyone to see it, Izuka said rubbing his chin. Yeah, maybe we could hack into a news station or something, Hawks suggested. Do you know how to hack? Izuka asked. Nope, Hawks said. I do. The two turned their heads to see Eri standing in the doorway. Eri, what are you doing awake? Izuka asked. Eri looked down and twiddled her fingers before responding. I had a bad dream. Izuka frowned and signaled for Eri to come to him. She ran over to him as fast as she could before climbing up and sitting on his lap. I dreamed that all might won and that you got taken. Eri said tears starting to glimmer in her eyes as she attempted not to cry. And that and that I was alone again. Izuku immediately wrapped his arms around her. That will never happen, Eri. I will never let you be alone. I promise. Eri sniffed and sunk into her brother's embrace. A small smile on her face as her eyes began to close. Hey! Hawks yelled making the girl's eyes snap back open. You said you knew someone who could hack? Eri nodded while rubbing her eyes. Yeah. La brava! Izuka looked at her in confusion. La brava? Eri nodded. She works with Gentle. He always says that she's super smart and is a really good hacker. Now that Izuka thought of it he could remember that name being said when Eri had him watch some of Gentle's videos. I think I've heard of him, Hawks said. He's a low-level villain who none of the heroes really take seriously. He more or less completely harmless. Well, I guess they should do, Izuka said. But how do we find them? You can just make a portal to them when they're streaming, Eri said. I guess, Izuka said. But I don't have my chain. Which reminds me I need to get new equipment. He turned to Hawks. Do you think you could teleport me, Dash? Suddenly in a burst of feathers, a chain appeared in Izuka's hand. Izuka looked at the chain before turning into Ghost Rider and infusing it with his power. 
All right. Eri, do you know when they'll be streaming? Izuku asked before turning back to normal. Eri shook her head. It's always a surprise. That doesn't sound like the best way to get views. Then again, I'm not a streamer, so what do I know? Izuku thought. But, but I can keep watch for when they do, Eri said. Izuku smiled and ruffled her hair. Thank you, Eri. You can do that after you go to bed. But, but, dash, Eri protested. No buts, Izuka said. Tomorrow we go shopping. I'm sure you would like some more games. Eri was too tired to continue arguing, and so she just allowed herself to sink into her brother's arm with a cute pout. Izuka chuckled and looked back at Hawks. I have a few more questions for Dash. Already on it. Hawks said sliding a piece of paper with a phone number on it. This is the number for my second phone. I can't have a villain calling me on my regular phone now can I? Izuka looked at the number and nodded. Okay. I'm going to bed. See ya. Hawks said before vanishing in a burst of feathers. Izuka walked to the bedroom cradling the half-asleep Eri. He set Eri down before crawling into bed next to her. And like every night he activated his emerald flames and no nightmares we had that night. Back with Izuka. Being the symbol of peace was something all people aspired to be. Some for the fame. Some for the fortune. Some for the power. But no one ever really thought about the responsibility because All Might always made it look so easy from afar. He made himself look untouchable. But this provides a problem. You never hear adults say that they're gonna surpass All Might. It was always something children said. Because adults knew that power like All Might's could not be surpassed. He was too strong, too fast, too good. But for Izuka it was different. She had the power that could surpass him. She had the tools to become better than him. But along with these powers and tools came responsibility and knowledge. The responsibility of saving countless lives. The knowledge that All Might would soon be unable to do his hero work. The responsibility of defeating dangerous villains. The knowledge that this was something only she could do. And at first, Izuka thought she could handle it. But then All Might lost and something became clear to her. If All Might could lose, she could lose. That even at her best, there might be some things she can't handle. Of course, according to All Might, she would eventually be stronger than he was. But that was a long time from now. She could only use 5% of one for all right now. Maybe by the time she gets full control, Ghost Rider will have gotten stronger himself. Maybe he would have a kid who would be even stronger than him not to mention his apparent accomplice who can teleport him places. So not only would she have arrested a guy who was extremely powerful and could teleport, but she also had to deal with his friend who could teleport him in case he can't use his chain. Izuka had now walked outside into the school courtyard and decided to sit down on one of the benches. It was all too much to think about right now. You didn't want to see him like that either, did you? Izuka looked up to see Night Eye standing in front of her. Or perhaps the stress of what you're being asked to do is just now coming to you, he said. The two looked at each other for a few moments before Izuka asked, Sir Night Eye, what are you doing here? Night Eye closed his eyes and adjusted his glasses. May I sit down? Um, sure, Izuka answered. Night Eye sat down next to her and looked at the floor. Niza somehow heard that I and All Might had spoken and that I would be taking an interest in the next wielder of one for all so he invited me here. But... Night I paused. I didn't want to see him like that again. I could barely summon the courage to see him the last time. And the worst part is I'm the one who basically told him to attack Ghost Rider. Izuka's eyes widened. You. But why? Night I sighed. I didn't directly tell him to. I simply informed him of how dire the Ghost Rider situation really was. I did so in an attempt to get him to give one for all to a powerful student here at UA Mirio Togata. However, he already passed one for all onto you and so he decided he would have to face Ghost Rider himself. Mirio Togata, Izuka repeated. Yes, I thought he would be a better successor than you, Night I said. If he had one for all I have no doubts that he could defeat Ghost Rider. Izuka was silent as she took in this information. Someone who could beat Ghost Rider, if they just had one for all. I would like to convince you to give the quirk to him, however, 
I see you are in a state of doubt and distress and I feel that trying to persuade you right now would be wrong. And if you are considering giving the quirk to Mirio, first know that if you give one for all to someone else you can never get it back. Izuka's eyes widened. If I give it away then, I'll never get it back? Before you even consider giving Mirio one for all, I want you to compose yourself. Make sure you're in the right state of mind. Night I said. Then think about it for a long time. Izuka was silent. Night I sighed and got up, starting to walk away. I read your file. I'm sorry for what happened to your family. And so Izuka was left there, with a million things on her mind. This was so tempting. The devil seemed to be offering him everything he ever wanted. The moment the devil showed him all that suffering he was so tempted to say yes right there and then. But something about this was wrong. What's the cost? Izuka asked. There was a pause. Does it matter? The devil asked avoiding the question. I am giving you the chance to fulfill your dreams. And save countless lives. Are you not willing to make a sacrifice to do this? But what is that sacrifice? Izuka asked summoning up all the will he could muster. Deals with the devil never go well for people. So what do you want from me? There was another long pause. Your soul. My soul. Izuka thought. If I do this then I'll go to hell. But. Dying without being able to help anyone. Is that much better than hell? Izuka was about to agree but suddenly something occurred to him. Is that the only thing you want? There was another pause. This one longer than the others before the devil said. I would also take the life of someone close to you. No, Izuka responded immediately. But you could dash. I don't care, Izuka said. The part about me having to kill villains was bad enough, but if you're going to kill someone innocent, someone I care about, then there is nothing you can do to convince me to agree. There was yet another pause before the devil said. Very well. You can go on and spend your afterlife in heaven. Don't worry your mother will be joining you soon. Too bad your sister won't however. Wait, what? Izuka yelled. The only response he got was a bright white light. Later back in the land of the living. Izuka Midoriya was feeling a lot of things right now. Sadness. Guilt. Failure. But the most prominent of the emotions she felt was anger. Anger at her failure to protect her brother. Anger at her former friend who had spent years tormenting Izuku. And anger at the world that led him. After everyone else left Izuka decided to stay. Partially because she wanted to stay with her brother. Partially because she needed a place to cry in private. And so she sat at her brother's grave. Crying her eyes out. Until suddenly she saw a shadow move on top of her. She quickly looked up to see a shady man standing over her. She quickly tried to crawl backward only to bump into her brother's tombstone. Now, now, the man said. I'm not here to hurt you. Izuka didn't trust this for a second and quickly got to her feet, ready to run at any time. I know you, Izuka Midoriya, the man said. You're angry at what happened to your brother, enraged at the world that allowed someone so sweet, so innocent to die so horribly. Izuka was terrified now. This guy seemingly knew everything she was thinking and he had this aura about him. An aura of fear, pain, and suffering. Tell me, the man continued. What would you do if I told you could get revenge? Revenge? Izuka questioned. On who? The man chuckled. Why? On the people who killed your brother, of course. I can give you the ability to track down every single person who is responsible for the slow death of your brother and then you can do as you please with them. This shocked Izuka. She wanted to say that he was lying, but somehow she could tell he wasn't lying. Izuku, Izuka wouldn't want that. Izuka eventually responded. The man shook his head. But is what Izuka would want, what Izuka would have needed? Izuka looked at the man confused, not knowing the heck he was talking about. The man sighed. You're trying to become a pro hero, right? Izuka nodded. Well, tell me, the man continued, if you were a pro hero, could you have helped your brother? Izuka was about to say yes, until she thought about it. Becoming a pro hero would mean that she would be stronger and be able to beat villains, but that wouldn't help her brother. She couldn't fight bullying, she couldn't fight loneliness, she couldn't fight depression. 
No amount of strength could have saved her brother. That's where you're wrong, the man said. Strength could have helped your brother, if it had been used right. Did he read my mind? Izuka thought to herself. Your brother was not the only person who suffered because they were born unlucky, the man said. This world needs someone to change it. But perhaps it would be better to show you why rather than explain it. Suddenly the man was directly in front of Izuka and put a hand on her forehead. Before Izuka could sweat his hand off her, their scenery suddenly changed. Now they were on top of a building. Where are we? Izuka asked. The past, the man said and if you'll just direct your attention to that ledge. The man pointed to the left, and Izuka's eyes followed, to find that a girl was standing there at the edge of the building. Fear gripped Izuka's heart. Immediately she tried to use her quirk to get the girl away from the ledge. But nothing happened. We are not actually in the past, Izuka, the man said. This is simply a vision. Now take note of her back. Izuka looked at the girl's back to see that there were stubs of her back. Those were once wings, the man said. It was her quirk, until one day a villain attack happened. Her wings were crushed in the rubble. After that, she had to get them removed. You can imagine how people treated her afterward. Izuka looked on in horror. The man continued. Now she just wants to fly, one last time. The girl jumped. And then the surroundings changed once more to a different rooftop. This time a young man was standing at the ledge instead. This young man managed to get into UA, his dream school, the place he had trained for and worked hard to get into, the man said. Things seemed to be going all right. Then he got put into Eraserhead's class. On day one he was expelled, all because he placed last on a test. A quirk-related test that Eraserhead himself probably wouldn't have scored well on. But according to Eraserhead, he had no potential. The boy jumped and the surroundings changed once more, this time to an alleyway. Another boy was thrown into the alley by a much larger boy. The smaller boy is the son of a villain, the man explained, and so he is treated as if he is a villain himself. Except since he can't be placed in jail some people decide to take matters into their own hands. And so Izuka watched in absolute shock and disgust as the larger boy's fist turned to stone. And then he beat the younger boy to death. Each blow covered his fist in more and more blood as the smaller boy's screams grew louder and louder. Then after a few more blows, he was silenced forever. Tears rolled down Izuka's face. The surroundings change again, this time they in a forest. The same forest that she, her brother and Bakugo used to play in. The same place where Bakugo did, that. Boom. She looked to the left, and there she saw it, Bakugo doing that to her brother all over again. Boom. I can offer you the power to change things, the man said. Boom. You can save people who are just as helpless as your brother. Boom. You can be the hero that saves the people that all might can't. Boom. Enough, Izuka shouted. The surrounding changed, and they were back at the cemetery. What do you want? Izuka yelled. Why did you show me that? In reverse order. To motivate you and I want to make a deal. The man said. I can offer you the power and abilities to not only take vengeance on those who killed your brother. But you can also make it so nothing like that happens again. This offer. It was very, very tempting. Especially after what she just saw. What's the catch? Izuka asked. The filthy criminal scum. The man said. When you gain this power. You will need to kill anyone who spills the blood of the innocent with murderous intent. Izuka stared at the ground for a moment before looking back up at the man. Deal. The man smiled and held out his hand. Izuka grabbed it, and the two shook. Then suddenly the man's hand burst into flames which very quickly spread onto Izuka's. The man let go and Izuka stumbled backward in fear as her whole body was engulfed in flames. Ah. 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 The flames rolled over her body, and when they dispersed Izuka's body had changed. Now she was the spirit of vengeance. She looked down at her new skeleton body covered in emerald flames and freaked out. What did what did you do? Izuka shouted at the man. She looked back at where the man once stood, 
only to find that instead there was a motorcycle, a chain, a piece of paper. Izuka was freaking out when suddenly she felt something. The blood of the innocent was being spilled. She could tell somehow. And she knew where. Her house. Without wasting another second Izuka ran to the bike. She put the chain on her arm and pocketed the paper before immediately taking off at unparalleled speeds. Izuka didn't know how she knew how to ride a motorcycle. But she didn't care. She needed to make sure her mother was safe. In almost no time at all, she reached her house. Not bothering to enter the door, she burst through the wall on her bike. But she was too late. There on the floor was her mother. Her neck slashed open and bleeding. If Izuka was in her regular state, then she would have felt tremendous pain and sadness. But not now. Now there was only rage. Suddenly a man ran in. His nails were like claws and had blood all over them. The blood of the innocent. Her mother's blood. The man yelled in surprise. What the dash? Before he could finish he found himself being pushed into the wall by an invisible force. Izuka got off her bike and walked toward the man who was pinned to the wall. She brought her hand to his throat. Who? What are you? The man shouted. Penance, Izuka answered. Then the fire from her hand spread. The man screamed in pain as the fire spread all over him, burning his skin and sharing his flesh. All except his hands. But he did not die. He would not get off that easy. After she was done burning him, she let go of his neck and held him there with her quirk. Then she used her quirk and made his arms and legs twist. His bones cracked and blood poured out as the man let off silent screams from his burnt throat. Then after reducing his bones to dust, she tore off his arms and legs. Blood poured out of the holes where his limbs once were as life quickly drained from the man. But before he could die Izuka opened her mouth and flames poured onto the man's face. The man's head was reduced to a skull and Izuka freed the dead body from her quirk's grasp. Every part of his body was messed up, torn and burnt. All but the hands. The hands that had slit her mother's throat were untouched. When the police came she wanted them to know that it was him that killed her mother. And that he got what he deserved. That there was someone who was there to punish the wicked. She transformed back into her human form. She walked over to her mother's body and held it in her arm. Tonight would be the last time she ever let herself get hurt. From that day on. The Midorias were dead, and the being that would soon be known as Ghost Rider arose. Izuku woke up early that morning, mainly because he wasn't tired when he went to sleep. Eri's quirk restores his stamina as well as his wounds yesterday. Speaking of Eri, she was still fast asleep right next to him. Izuku smiled. She must have been so tired last night. Izuku knew that after using her quirk she gets really tired so healing his wounds must have worn her out but even after that she still tried to help them. Izuka felt pride fill his chest. She was such a good girl, always looking out for him, trying to find ways to help him. If only she liked other people more. There were two things about Eri that worried him. Firstly was her extreme attachment to him. Back when they first started Eri would cling to him constantly, only leaving his side when he had to kill villains, and even then he would always come home to Eri crying and grabbing him. Even now he had to be with her when she went to sleep otherwise she would get nightmares. The only other person he could leave Eri with was Koda and even she would get uncomfortable if he wasn't in the area. His second concern was how violent she could get when it came to people that opposed him. They used to watch the news and theorize about quirks. Now Eri was more focused on trying to figuring their weaknesses in case Izuka had to fight them. It was sweet but also kind of messed up. Not to mention that drawing. Izuka sighed and brought Eri closer to him. Maybe he should have her talk with Mizu some more. Talking to a former hero and adult may help her. Speaking of Mizu. Izuka pulled out his phone and called Mizu. After a few beeps, she picked up. Izuku? She asked. Ah, uh, yeah, hi. Izuka said. Oh, thank God you're all right. She said in a relieved tone. After that fight with All Might, I was worried your injuries would kill you. Izuka couldn't stop himself from blushing in embarrassment. He still wasn't used to people caring about him outside of his mother and sisters. No, I'm fine, Izuka reassured. Eri's quirk healed me. It's like that battle never happened. Mizu chuckled darkly. 
Not really. While your injuries are healed, all mites are not. But most importantly his image was injured. And that means the people are going to go crazy. Izuka sighed. I know. I'm planning to do something about it. Like what? Mizu asked. I'm going to hack into a news channel and make a speech, Izuka said. Also since cameras can't hear me when I talk in my ghost rider form I'm going to have every talk. There was a short pause before Mizu said. That sounds like a bad idea. Izuka sighed once more. Yeah, but it's the only idea we've got. Why don't you just have whoever teleported you do it? She asked. Can't, Izuka answered. Let's just say that his identity must remain a secret. Mizu sighed. And I can't do it. Why don't you do it your human form? If you cover your face then no one will know it was you. Izuka cringed. He had thought about doing that but he realized that there was one person who might recognize him. Izuka. It was unlikely that she would jump to that conclusion but Izuka didn't want to risk it. He knew that if his sister thought he might be alive she would hunt him down to the ends of the earth. No. They need to know that I'm Ghost Rider otherwise they'll think it's just some kid. Izuka said. Then why don't you just talk to them as yourself, then at the end turn into Ghost Rider? Misa said. Crap. Izuka thought. Well, the thing is, Izuka said nervously, there's someone out there who might recognize my voice. Who? Mizu asked. One of your old classmates? No, Izuka said. It's, it's complicated. Mizu sighed. Well, why don't you just, I don't know, kidnap a villain and make them do it? That gave Izuka an idea. A rather obvious one at that. Well, I can't do that because of the rage I feel whenever innocent blood is spilled. But you did give me an idea, Izuka said. You see, to hack into the news network I'm going to kidnap a pair of small-time villains. One of them can hack and I'll use the other one to send the message. Oh well, there you go, Misa said, glad that Izuka wouldn't be sending his message to the world with a seven-year-old. Glad I could help. Izuka smiled. You're always helpful. How many times have I told you? Just call me Mizu. You saved my life. The least I can do is let me call you by my first name. Izuka blushed with embarrassment. Okay. Mizu. Mizu smiled on the other end. Thank you. Now, what did you call for? Oh, Izuka said, realizing he got sidetracked. I just wanted to tell you I was all right and that Eri won't be able to come over for a while. She got very emotional yesterday. She even lost control of her quirk. I don't want to risk anything so I'm going to keep her with me for a, a week maybe. I understand, Misa said. Kota will probably be upset. Those two get along really well. It seems Eri has a knack for getting along with people who are hurt. Yeah, Izuka said proudly smiling. Maybe she can be a therapist or something. Better than her taking up your job, Misa teased. Izuka gave a nervous chuckle before suddenly he realized something that made his small, nervous grin vanish, and all the color drain from his face. My power can be given to others. That means if I die then Eri could get my powers. No not could, would. If I died then Eri would definitely want vengeance. And if what Hawks told him about Mephisto was true then there's no way he would pass up someone like Eri. So his name is Mephisto, Misa said. Izuka's body went rigid. How dash? You mutter. A lot. Mizu answered. Damn it. Izuka thought to himself, this time making sure it was in his head. There are several things I want to talk to you about but not over the phone, Mizu said. Izuka wanted to bang his head on the wall. Yeah. Mizu, can you promise me something? What? Mizu asked. Later on. When Eri knows you guys better and she has better control over her quirk. Can you, can you, can? Izuka tried to say it, but he couldn't. Just the thought of doing what he was thinking of hurt. Take her. Mizu finished in a low tone. Absolutely not. This shocked Izuku. But Dash. I know what kind of person you are, Izuku. Mizu said. You're the type of person who does anything for the sake of others and nothing for yourself. If I take Eri, you'll ride off and never come back no matter how much it hurts. Saying that you're doing it for her, all while hurting her in the process. But you don't understand. 
Izuka said trying not to yell. The only people Eri knew up until recently were monsters and demons. And it shows. She needs someone normal to watch over her. Someone who doesn't have blood on their hands. Someone who isn't broken. Someone like you. Misa sighed. Izuku. Like I said. I know your type. And I know that people like you always think that they are toxic to be around and that it would be better if they were gone. That's why you jumped off a roof and never told your other sister that you came back. Izuka froze. How dash? The internet, Mizu answered. The first thing that came up when I searched your name was a news article that said quirkless youth, Izuka Midoriya commits suicide. Are the quirkless being mistreated? Oh, Izuka had not known about that. He had just assumed that he was such a nobody that after he died, everyone would just moving on without mentioning him. Like I said I have several things I would like to talk to you about but in person, Misa said. But the point is, you are the type of person who will hurt the people you love in an attempt to save them. If you left Eri with me then what exactly do you think would happen? Do you think she would get over it? Become a normal person? No. That girl has been through things that would break fully grown adults. She is mentally ruined. I don't want to say she can never live a normal life, but it's very unlikely. What's more likely is she'll think she did something wrong and spend the rest of her life trying to find you and make up for whatever she thinks she did. Izuka cringed. As much as he wanted to believe that Eri could live a normal life, Mizu was right. The best thing you can do is keep her with you, Mizu said. Because even if Eri would become a normal person if you left, you would go insane. You two need each other. I am sorry. Izuka sniffed as a few tears went down his eyes. You're right it was stupid I just, I want her to be happy and I don't want her to go down the same path as me. But I don't know what to do. No one does Izuku. Misa sighed. If life were that easy either of us would be in the situation we're in. I, I gotta go. Izuka said wiping away her tears. Thanks for talking me out of that. My pleasure. Misa said. Just remember that when you're hurting, so are the people who love you. And I don't know about your other sister, but Eri loves you more than anything in the world. Please don't hurt her like that. I won't, Izuka said solemnly. Bye. The two hung up. Izuka. He had been avoiding thinking about her. He knew he would never be able to forget her, nor did he really want to. He just wanted to lessen the pain he felt when he remembered how much he hurt her over the years to the point where the Azuka he knew from all the time ago, was all but gone. He held Eri close to him as comforted himself. Eri, seemingly able to sense Azuka's emotional distress, wrapped her arms around him and hugged him tight in her sleep. After a few minutes, Azuka managed to get his emotions back in order and made another call. Geez, did you have to call so freaking early? Hawks said on the other end. Sorry. Izuku apologized. But I need weapons. Hawk sighed and there was a pause before he responded. Anything you want in particular? A shotgun would be nice, Izuku answered. All right, give me an hour, Hawk said before immediately hanging up. Izuku sighed and laid back down on the bed. Just laying here with Eri sounded nice. And so that's what he did. A few hours later. After eating Izuku and Eri just spent the day waiting for Gentle and Hawks. Then Hawks teleported and holding various weapons. Sorry, it took me so long, he said. Anyway, here they are. Hawks dumped the weapons on the table. The weapons Hawks had brought were a double barrel shotgun, two pistols, and two small scythes. He looked up at Hawks in slight confusion. What's all this? Weapons. Duh, Hawks said. You should have at least three weapons besides your chain. Izuka thought it was kind of unnecessary, but it wasn't like he had a reason to say no. He picked up the shotgun and imbued it with his power. There was little change other than wood-looking part gaining a skull design and the regular metal turning a fiery dark metal. After putting it down, as far from area as he could, he moved on to the pistols. When he imbued his power into them they changed quite a bit. The metal turned black and twisted around until it looked straight up demonic. It felt weird. They looked much heavier than they were. Next up was twin scythes. He took the scythes in his hands and used his power. The handles now looked like they were made of fire and the part that connected the blade to the handle looked like a bunch of spiky bone. 
The blade, unlike his other weapons, was a very bright metallic white and looked sharp as hell. No pun intended. These were weapons of pervious spirits of vengeance, Hawks said. Oh, is that why the shotgun has the word blaze engraved into it? Izuka asked, just noticing this. Probably, Hawks said. Anyway, what are you gonna do now? Just wait until that gentle guy streams? Kind of, Izuka said getting off the couch. I'm going to take Aerie shopping for the first time. Plus I have to go window shopping for motorcycles for me to kind of steal later. Kind of steal? What does that mean? Hawks asked. Well, I'm going to break in, leave money for the motorcycle there and then take it. Izuku explained. Why didn't you just ask me to get you one? Hawks asked. Because I didn't want to bother you too much, Izuka said. Also because I didn't want you to drop a motorcycle on our table or something. Fair enough, Hawks said. Also while we're shopping Aries' phone will notify her if Gentle starts streaming, Izuka said. But doesn't the public know what Aerie looks like? Hawks asked. Hair dye and color contacts, Izuka answered. Which reminds me. He turned to Aerie who was reaching towards one of the pistols before see that Izuka was looking and pulling her hand back quickly. Izuka decided to ignore that for now. Eri, in order to go out, we'll need to disguise you. So I'm going to use this thing that will change your hair and eye color. Are you okay with that? Eri nodded. Okay, well, what color do you want? Izuka asked. Green, Eri answered immediately. Izuku and Hawks smiled. Well, if you need anything, just call, Hawks said. But try not to call too much. Then he vanished. Later at the mall, Izuku and Eri walked through the wall with smiles on their faces. Eri now had green hair and eyes and she was very pleased about it. She had on a red sundress and small hat over her horn. Izuku was in his purple hoodie with his plain white shirt underneath and jeans. Underneath his hoodie was one of his sides strapped to him with his chain. Eri made sure to walk close to Izuku, choosing to ignore the crowds of people that made her nervous in favor of thinking of her new hair color. The two walked past the store and before stopping and walking back. There in the store window was Ghost Rider merchandise. What the hell? Izuka thought. Why on earth would they make merchandise of me? I'm a serial killer. Izuka snapped out of his thoughts when he realized that Eri was already pressed against the glass with stars in her eyes. Izuka sighed. He was gonna have to buy all of it, wouldn't he? And indeed he did. Action figures, statues, t-shirts, posters, and more. When they got to the cashier, she chuckled at Eri's excitement. Ghost Rider, huh? She said. Yeah, he is really cool. My personal favorite hero. Izuku raised an eyebrow. That made him happy to hear, but it was just... Odd. But isn't Ghost Rider Dash? A villain. The cashier said with a deadpan expression. Listen, kid. My dad was killed by a mugger when I was fourteen. As far as I'm concerned, anyone who takes a life deserves to die. Yes, Eri yelled, startling her. There are people who agree with me. The cashier gave Izuku a strange look. Villains will hurt people, regardless of age, Izuku said. True enough, the cashier said. Later, after buying the merch, Izuku and Eri walked back out into the mall. Eri wanted to wear one of her new shirts but Izuka told her to wait until they got home. After all, wearing a Ghost Rider shirt was a good way to get noticed, which is something Izuka did not want. They walked to a food store where they bought every apple-related thing they could find and then they went back out while Eri happily ate an apple. Eventually, they made their way to a motor shop. It didn't take long for Izuka to find his target through the window. A green chopper. Izuka smiled. That one should do. After walking around for a few more hours, Eri's phone vibrated. She took it out of the pocket in her dress. Izuku, it's time, Eri whispered. Izuku nodded and looked around. The two walked into a clothing store and went into the changing room. Izuku pulled out his chain and opened a portal home. Meanwhile, with Gentle and La Brava. La Brava smiled as she watched Gentle do his thing. He was currently robbing, but not really a supermarket that was known for have extortionate prices. She was going behind him getting footage of it all. This is gonna get us tons of views, 
she thought excitedly. Then suddenly the space in front of her camera became distorted. La Brava stopped looking through the camera, thinking there was something wrong with it, only to see that the space in front of her was really distorted. A ring of fire appeared and the image inside the ring changed to that of a green inferno. What the dash? La Brava said. Then she saw two red dots appear in the fire and Ghost Rider walked out of the portal. As La Brava trembled in fear, Ghost Rider standing before her, chain in hand, one thought came to her mind. I need to save Gentle. Gentle run! La Brava yelled. Gentle turned around was horrified to see Ghost Rider standing right in front of La Brava. Get away from her! He yelled before using his quirk to make the floor elastic and bouncing off of it. He made the air elastic and bounced off of that at Ghost Rider. He launched at Ghost Rider and kicked him the skull. Which did absolutely nothing. Gentle! No, forget about me! Get out of here while you still can! La Brava said, tears in her eyes as she desperately tried to stay standing despite the fear making her legs go weak. I'll use my quirk on you and dash! No! Gentle said. I would never abandon you! If anything you should run while I hold him off. Gentle, La Brava said in awe before her expression shifted to a determined one. No, if you won't leave then we'll die together. La Brava, Gentle said astounded by the statement. The look on her face left no room for argument, so Gentle just made a regretful face. He knew that escaping Ghost Rider was impossible. If I am to meet my end then I will do it by your side. Um, I'm um, not here to kill you, Izuka said. The two looked at him with shocked expressions. Yeah, I just need you two to do me a favor, Izuka continued. They both blinked, look at each other, and then back at Izuka then they turned around. I think we should do what he says, La Brava whispered. If we don't he might kill us. You're right, but what if he asks us to kill someone? Gentle whispered. While it was true Gentle was technically a villain and was willing to commit villainous acts he did not like the idea of taking a life. I don't like thinking about it, La Brava said, but I don't want you to die. Gentle was about to say he didn't want her to die either but before he could Ghost Rider grabbed the both of them. Sorry, but I wasn't asking, Izuka said. He then threw them both into the portal. He went to go through the portal before realizing that the camera was still on the floor. He picked it up and turned it off. Izuka looked around to find that most of the people around him were paralyzed in fear. Izuka would have frowned if he had lips right now. His dream has always been to inspire people. He didn't mean to inspire fear. Uh, Mr. Ryder? Izuka looked behind him to see a woman standing behind him. She was tall, with black hair and glasses. She was wearing business attire and seemed very nervous. Hi. Oh wow, I can't believe it's you, she said. I am a huge fan of your work and I've been wanting to meet you for a while. Izuka would have raised an eyebrow if he had one. People who looked for him tended to be heroes so he immediately went on guard. As so I've been investigating you and looking around and I've talked to some of the witnesses who you've saved and some said that you called yourself the spirit of vengeance and that you avenge the innocent. Is that true? The women asked with a hint of desperation in her voice. Um yeah? Izuka said kind of taken off guard. Good good, she said. So, um, see, could I ask you to avenge my little sister? What? Izuka said. He honestly didn't expect that. And my little sister was killed by you know what I think I should, present this better, and you seem busy right now anyway. She said. Here's my card. If it's not too much trouble could you call me in a month? The woman handed him a card that said Detective Fuku's Shu and her phone number. Um, Miss Shu? This is very unusual. But I guess I'll put it on my calendar? Izuka said, still really weirded out. Thank you, she said. After that Izuka nodded and turned to leave, looking back at the strange detective before stepping through the portal. Meanwhile, Gentle and La Brava flew through the portal landing inside Ghost Rider's base face first. Ow, La Brava said. Are you unharmed, La Brava? Gentle asked. Yeah, she said. They looked up to see Ari standing there, with a huge smile on her face. Her hair was back to its natural color, much to her dismay, and she was holding her notebook. 
Can I have your autograph? She said excitedly holding out her notebook. The two looked at Ari then at each other then back at Ari. Today was a strange day. Of course. Gentle said just deciding to roll with it. He also was just happy to meet another fan. Even if that fan was the little sister of the person who kidnapped them. He swiftly got up and signed the young girl's book as she looked at him with stars in her eyes. Thank you, she said. I really liked your videos. Well, you young lady have good taste, Gentle said. Yeah, La Brava said still very nervous about the situation. Hey, Kid Dash. My name is Ari, Ari said cheerfully. Okay, Ari, what does Ghost Rider want us for? La Brava said. Oh. Is I mean Big Brother wants you to help him make a speech because he said that everyone is going to go crazy after he fought All Might. Ari answered. Okay, that makes sense but what does he want us for? La Brava wondered. Then Izuka stepped through the portal before closing it behind him. Sorry for the wait, Izuka said. You're probably wondering what I need you for. Correct, Gentle said. What exactly does the infamous Ghost Rider, who bested All Might in a fight, want with us? The girl Amari said that you wanted us to help you make an announcement, La Brava said. Eri ran to Izuku, who picked her up in his arms. Thank you, Eri, Izuku said, patting the girl on the head which was absolutely bizarre to Gentle and La Brava. Now, I want La Brava to hack into HNN and because I can't be heard on camera I need Gentle to talk to the camera, Izuku explained. I see, Gentle said. I suppose we don't have a choice in the matter. Nope, Eri said with a smile. There is something wrong with that girl, La Brava thought. That girl seemed sweet but there was something unsettling. Maybe it was because she was Ghost Rider's little sister. The speech will be tomorrow. Eri will show you where you'll be staying for now, Izuka said. If you need anything just ask. Also, don't try to escape or else. Izuka let Eri down and she grabbed both of them by the hands. Letting the girl lead them. Eri brought them both to Izuka's workroom, now with two inflatable mattresses. Oh God! La Brava said, the stench of blood hitting her nose. Gentle said nothing, not wanting to breathe in the smell. This is Big Brother's workroom, Eri explained. Big Brother wanted to put you in the kitchen but I moved the bed here because there was more space. There is definitely something wrong with this girl, La Brava thought. Suddenly Izuka rushed in and saw the two beds. He sighed. Eri, did you move the beds? Eri nodded. There was more space. Izuka's skull palmed. Eri, do you know why I wanted them to stay in the kitchen? Eri shook her head. Because most people don't like the smell of blood, Izuku explained. Look at their faces. Eri looked at La Brava and Gentle and saw how uncomfortable they both looked. La Brava even looked like she was about to puke. Eri's smile fell. Oh, I am sorry. It's okay, Izuka reassured. You didn't know just move the beds back, please. Eri nodded sadly and dragged the beds out of the rooms. Izuka sighed. I'm sorry about her. She, she's been through a lot. I can see that, La Brava said. How can she stand this smell? Izuka sighed. She's used to it. After that depressing statement, there was silence until Eri walked back in. I finished, Eri said still a little upset by her error. Thank you. Now go back there and I'll show our guests there. I almost forgot to tell them a few things, Izuka said. Eri nodded and left. Izuka turned back to Gentle and La Brava. Don't make her too upset, Izuka said. If that happens then her quirk will activate. And if that happens you could die. Is her quirk truly dangerous? Gentle asked. Well, she is Ghost Rider's sister, La Brava said in her head, not wanting to offend Ghost Rider. Her quirk lets her rewind things to a previous state, Izuku explained. That's why I'm not injured after my fight with All Might. I was wondering about that, Gentle thought. However, when it gets out of control, she rewinds people to before they were even conceived. In other words, she can kill you almost instantly with just one touch, Izuku explained. The duo's eyes widened. That's insane, La Brava said. Indeed quite a dangerous quirk, Gentle said. However it is quite different from yours. 
Now siblings could have quirks that were widely different from each other, but more often than not siblings' quirks had some similarities. She's adopted, Izuka confirmed. Gentle hummed. If I had to guess her parents fell victim to NDQI. N.D.Q.I stood for newly developed quirk incident. It's a term used for when a child first develops a quirk and accidentally hurts and or kills someone, most often a friend or parent. There was a pause before Ghost Rider said. Her father died. Her mother abandoned her to the Yakuza. The Yakuza harvested her blood for a project of theirs. After I killed all of them I took her in. I see, Gentle said clenching his fist in anger as La Brava gave a horrified look. I used to feel somewhat bad about the fate of the Yakuza, even if they were very shady. However, it seems that got what was coming to them. Izuka nodded. There was a short pause before Izuka said, I'm sorry if I've been rude. I want you to know I actually like you too. Ares had me watch some of your videos with her, and she always seems to have so much fun when she watches them. And I can't thank you enough for that. The two of them were a bit blown back by how sincere Ghost Rider was. It was so strange so, not what they expected. I have to go, Izuka said suddenly. I have a job to do. Just go find the kitchen. Izuka brought out his chain and opened a portal. The two of them heard a few screams of terror before the portal shut. The two quickly walked out of the room before talking. Well, that was certainly unexpected, Gentle said. So what do we do now? La Brava asked. Is it not obvious? Gentle said. We see if there is any tea around. La Brava wanted to be concerned by how unconcerned Gentle was, but she trusted him so the two of them walked to the kitchen where Ari was waiting. Sorry about making you smell all the blood. Ari apologized. No worries, Gentle said. That's all said and done. Now tell me, young lady, do you have any tea? Ari's face immediately lit up. Ah uh, Me and his big brother got some for you. Meanwhile elsewhere. All Might slowly opened his eyes. What? He said groggily. What happened? You lost. All Might looked to the left to see Recovery Girl standing there with a solemn expression. All Might's face fell as he remembered how the battle ended. He had failed. In front of the whole world no less. He would hate himself later. First things first. Damage control. How long have I been out? All Might asked. About a day and a half. Recovery Girl answered. How's the public reaction? All Might asked fearing the worst. Better than you'd think, Recovery Girl said. Villains haven't been causing too much trouble. The crime rate actually went down. I think they're scared of him. All Might sighed in relief. And the citizens? They have also been strangely calm, Recovery Girl said. There are a few possibilities for this. One is that they're waiting for a statement before they start panicking. The second is that they're still in shock. Although Ghost Rider's supporters have been anything but quiet. I think a few of them are worshipping him. All Might shook his head. It wasn't supposed to be like this. Niza walked in and saw All Might now fully awake. Oh good, Niza said. I was worried you would never wake up. Well, now that I'm awake I have to get ready to make a statement. All Might said already trying to get out of the bed only to have Recovery Girl give him a deadly glare. Get back in bed, she yelled. Not only did you overexert your time limit, you also were injured on top of that. Yes, I must insist that you rest as well, Niza said. There will be a press conference in two days until then you need to stay here and rest. But Dash, All Might tried to protest. No buts, Recovery Girl said, her tone leaving no room for argument. All Might sighed and lay back down. Later, Izuka ran into the room and saw that All Might was indeed awake. All Might! She yelled. She ran over and enveloped the hero in a hug that he gladly returned. Young Midoriya! What are you doing here? All Might asked. Principal Niza called me when you woke up. Izuka said a few tears coming from her eyes. I was so scared when I saw him right next to you. All Might hugged her tighter. It's okay. I am here. Izuka sniffed. I know. I know. The two sat in silence for a while, just embracing each other, before Izuka spoke up. What did he say? She asked. What? All Might asked. 
Ghost Rider. He said something to you and it made you stop fighting. Izuka explained. What was it? There was another long pause as All Might tried to figure out what to say. He told me that he could see my sins, All Might said. Sins? Izuka asked. What dash? Izuka stopped. He didn't, colon, Izuka continued. He told me Izuka's death was my fault, All Might said holding his head down. There was another long pause before Izuka said. No. All Might looked up to see Izuka shaking with rage. That bastard, she said. How dare he use Izuka's death as a fucking weapon? A vase that was in the room flew off and smashed into a wall. Other things and objects were thrown around. But he took it back, All Might said trying to calm her down. It worked and everything fell to the floor. What? Izuka asked. Once I was in my true form he told me that he said that everything he said was a lie. And that Izuka never blamed me. But that doesn't make any sense, Izuka said. How the hell does he even know about Izuku? I don't know, All Might said. Maybe he can see souls. That's ridiculous, Izuka said. Well, it's not like we can just ask him, All Might said. Fwish. The space in a small circle in the air became distorted. A ring of fire formed and a portal opened. And out of the portal stepped Ghost Rider followed by Eri. The minute Ghost Rider walked in he froze. Izuka? Izuka? Izuka said. Izuka immediately stood in front of All Might. Why are you here? She asked trembling a little. How do you know my name? Izuka? Eri asked before turning to Izuku. Why is she here? I don't know. Izuka said completely taken off guard by his sister's presence. He looked at All Might. Why is she here? Why does she know about this form? I, um... All Might was at a loss for words. This was really the last thing he had expected. He's my legal guardian, Izuka said. I'm here to check up on him. What? How? What about Mitsuki? Izuka said before he could stop himself. How do you know about her? How do you know about me? You still haven't said why you're here? Izuka yelled. Why is everyone yelling? Eri asked really confused. Stop! All Might yelled gaining everyone's attention. Let's calm down. I agree. Everyone looked to the doorway to see Nizes standing there with a cup of tea in his hand. Well if this isn't a surprise. Ghost Rider. Nizes said. To what do we owe the pleasure? Oh well. Um. Izuka stuttered trying to remember what he came here for before Eri tugged on his pant leg. Oh right. We came here to fix All Might, Izuka said. As you might have noticed, I have completely recovered from our fight. Yes, I saw it on that video that's been going around, Niza said. At first I thought that you had the ability to heal yourself, however seeing as you didn't do that during the fight I then speculated that an ally of yours was responsible for your lack of cracks. And see as you've brought this young lady with you I'm guessing that she has a healing quirk. The principle of Yue's mind in action. Izuka said stupefied by the small creature. Um, I mean yes and no. She can heal you, but that's not exactly what her quirk dose. At the mention of her quirk Eri became slightly uncomfortable and reached up and Izuku, on instinct picked her up and stroked her head, making everyone else give him strange looks. What? Izuka said wondering why they were looking at him weirdly. Sorry if we're weirding you out, but when we think of Ghost Rider, the image of you comforting a child does not come to mind. Izuka said sarcastically. You were saying about her quirk? Niza said trying to get back on track. Oh right. Her quirk allows her to revert things back to a previous state. Izuka said. She can heal you, turn you into a child or a monkey, or just erase you from existence. Hmm, interesting. Niza said sipping his tea. Interesting. That's fucking dangerous. Izuka thought. She also has very little control over it so if we're not careful while healing All Might then we could accidentally kill him. Izuku explained. And you want us to just let this happen? Izuku asked. Well, you can't really stop us, Eri said. The truth of that statement sunk into the room as Izuka balled up her fist. I assume you have a plan so All Might doesn't die? Niza asked. Izuka nodded. I've been training her on how to use her quirk and I know how it works. 
She can restrict how much she regresses, but the longer she uses it, the harder it is to control. I'll attach my chain to Aerie, and when her quirk starts getting out of control, then I'll pull her back. Hmm. And why heal him in the first place? Nisa asked. Wouldn't it be better if you just left him like this? That's what I said, Aerie added. All might is the symbol of peace. A pillar of society. People need him, Izuka said. I know his time is running out, but if I can buy him just a little bit more time, then I should. This statement shocked both Izuka and All Might. All Might is my hero. I never wanted to fight him. I never wanted to have to fight him, but the choices I made led me here. And now I have no choice but to move forward with this path. Even if I don't want to. Izuka continued. Izuka looked at Ghost Rider, and at that moment something seemed familiar. Well, then shall we start then? Niza said. Izuka nodded. Are you ready, All Might? I don't think I really have much of a choice. But yes, All Might said. It may be dangerous, but if it helped him get back up and saving people, he would do it. Izuka set Eri down. Please lift up your arms, Eri. Eri complied and Izuka wrapped his chain around her. After making sure the chain wouldn't fall off, Eri walked up to All Might while giving him a strange look. She wasn't sure how to feel about the skinny man. On one hand he hurt Izuka which she hates, but on the other hand, Izuka seemed to really like him for some reason. Eri reached for his hand but her arms were too small to reach causing an adorable moment where Eri attempted to grab All Might's arm. Everyone smiled at this, except Izuka because he had no mouth, and All Might lowered his arm. Eri grabbed it and closed her eyes. Her horn grew out slowly and soon she was covered in a green glow. At first, he felt nothing. Then pain overcame him. He clenched his fist as he felt all the damage from the battle he had with Ghost Rider. For the next few seconds, he endured retaking all the blows from his battle and then it suddenly stopped, all the pain stopped, and he was back to feeling like he usually did as all the wounds from his fight had vanished. Little by little All Might felt his strength returned, then it started getting faster and faster. Eri struggled to rein in her quirk as it became harder to control. Izuka saw Eri struggle and decided that it would have to do. Izuka yanked on the chain just a little and Eri was pulled away from All Might and into his arms. It took a few seconds of effort but the green glow faded and her horn receded back into her skull. Are you okay, Eri? Izuka asked. Eri nodded as her eyes drooped matching the sleepy expression on her face. You should get some rest, Izuka said. Eri shook her head. No. Have, make sure, you're okay. This warmed Izuka's currently non-existent heart, and he patted the girl on the head. She seems very attached to you, Niza said. I assume this is Overhaul's daughter, correct? No, Izuka roared. That man was a monster, and the only reason he got his hands on her is because her mother was a coward. I see, Niza said unfazed. Good to know. But before you leave, you said you could see souls, correct? That's how you know so much about her and how you knew about Izuku. Izuka spoke up. That's Dash. Please don't interrupt, Niza said calmly. Yes, Izuka lied. For all, he knew he might be able to see souls, but if he could, he didn't know how. Interesting, Niza said. Then would you mind looking into Izuka's soul and telling me what her birthday is? Izuka sighed with relief inside his head. He was asking something he knew. This could be his chance to make his soul seeing lie seem real. July 15th, Izuka said. Her favorite food? Niza asked. Oyakadon, Izuka said. Her greatest fear? The dark, Izuka said. All Might and Niza looked at Izuka who looked extremely embarrassed. The dark? All Might asked. Hey, it's related to my quirk, Izuka defended. I can't use my quirk if I can't see so it's natural to be afraid of the dark. Izuka smiled internally. He had missed his sister's voice. So, so much. Well, then what about me? Niza said. What? Izuka said as he began to feel nervous. Do you perhaps have any dark secrets you would like to share about me? Niza asked in his typical cheerful tone. Well, uh, um, I would but I, uh, I need to go. Izuka said as he realized this was not a good idea. 
Izuka was about to say something when she felt two arms wrap around her leg. She looked down to see Eri hugging her leg. Big sis Izuka. Eh? Izuka cried. When did she crawl out of my arms? Izuka thought. Come with us, Eri said tiredly. It was super cute but it also left Izuka very confused. Izuka quickly scooped up Eri and walked next to the portal. Sorry about that. She must be very tired and out of it. I'll be leaving now, Izuka said. He turned to face the portal and was about to leave, when something stopped him. Not anything physical, something inside him didn't want to leave quite yet despite knowing he needs to. He turned back to look at his sister. Izuka, he miss you. The old you, Izuka said without thinking. I hope you know he never wanted to hurt you. He just wanted you to be happy. Before anyone could say anything else Ghost Rider stepped through the portal and closed it behind him. There was a pause in the room as the three took in what was said. Well, that was an interesting encounter, Niza said. Neither of them said anything as All Might was looking at Izuka with a concerned expression and Izuka just staring at the spot where Ghost Rider and Eri were. What, what does that mean? Izuka thought. Was he talking about Izuku? Well, on the bright side, we know that what he said about seeing souls was false, Niza said, and that he knows quite a bit about Izuka and possibly Izuku. Yes. But, you weren't in the room when I said that he looked at my soul, All Might pointed out. Niza just chuckled. These ears aren't for decoration. Now I think we will need to have a meeting soon. Say tomorrow. I need to ask the detective about a few things. Back with Izuku. Izuku walked into the base holding Eri in his arms. Why didn't we bring Big Sis with us? Eri asked. Because, because she didn't want to, Izuku said. Izuku, Eri said. Eri Gentle and La Brava are still so here you can't dash. Does Big Sister not like us? She asked. Izuku's heart dropped. What? No, no, she just doesn't. Izuku sighed. He wouldn't be able to hide it forever. And to be honest, he was tired of lying. Go to sleep, Eri, and tomorrow I'll tell you everything. Izuka said, finally reaching the bedroom. Okay, Eri whispered as her eyelids fell. Izuka laid Eri down in the bed and was about to walk away when she grabbed his arm. Stay, she said. Izuka sighed. Eri, I have things to do. I have to write a speech and probably have to kill some people before I finish— I have to tell La Brava what station to hack and dash. Eri looked at him with a tired, teary-eyed expression. And those are things I'll have to do tomorrow, I guess, Izuka said. He laid down next to her, and she got into her usual tight embrace. Izuku, Eri said. Yes, Eri, Izuka said. I want to see your face, she said. Izuku hadn't been in his human form for a while. Because Gentle and La Brava had been in their base he had chosen to stay in Ghost Rider form the whole time. Eri you know that dash. Eri pouted. With a sigh, Izuka transformed back to human form. Well I guess if they find out I'll just threaten them some more. Izuka said. Eri smiled and immediately fell asleep. Izuka smiled back. A nap sounded good right about now. Later that night. Izuka laid in her bed that night. Her mind stuck on Ghost Rider's words. What does he mean by the old me? Was he talking about Izuku? How does he know so much about me? Izuka thought. Izuka? All Might said walking into the room. Are you okay? Yeah. Izuka lied. You don't sound very okay. All Might said. You're still thinking about what Ghost Rider said. It doesn't make any sense. Izuka yelled. How does he know so much about me? And what did that last part mean? Well, he does have another form, All Might said. One that's around your age. Perhaps you were classmates. Even if that was true, only one person knew about my fear of the dark, and that was Izuku. Who's quirkless and dead? Izuka pointed out. But still he felt familiar. Like I not only knew him but knew him well. It all just doesn't make any sense. All Might sat down beside her. Niza said he got some clues on his identity perhaps when we figure it out we'll get some answers. Izuka sighed. Maybe. What about you? Did you get any time back? Yes, actually. 
All Might said transforming into his buff form. Recovery Girl said my fight with Ghost Rider made it so I could only stay transformed for an hour. But after the young girl fixed me I can stay in this form for two hours. Izuka smiled. That's great. Who knows maybe if Ghost Rider lets us use the girl again. While that sounds wrong, you can be the symbol of peace forever. All Might gave her a sad smile. I'm afraid not. While I did get some time back upon closer study recovery girl said that I didn't get as much time back as I should have. However young Ares' quirk works it doesn't seem to affect one for all, all too much. No matter how much she rewinds me the embers of one for all will eventually run out. Izuka sighed. So we're just prolonging the inevitable. I like to think of it as buying time but I suppose you could think of it like that. All Might said. Izuka buried her head in her pillow. Well, what confuses me more is that last thing he said. All Might said. Do you know what he means by the old you? Izuka shook her head. No. Not at all. All right. All Might said returning to his skinny form. Good night. Good night, Izuka said tiredly. With that, All Might exited the room. Her old self. All Might wondered. The next day all the staff of UA, Detective Nao Mesa, and Sir Knight I met in the UA meeting room. So you mind telling us why you called us away from our classes? Eraser had asked. I'm glad you asked, Niza said. You see, yesterday we got an unexpected visit from Ghost Rider. What? yelled everyone but All Might. Yes, he paid Yagi a visit yesterday and even managed to heal his injuries and restore some of his time, Niza said. So he can heal people now. Great, Midnight groaned. I was wondering how he managed to heal all his cracks so easily. Nope, Niza said. Do you remember the young girl that the wild wild pussy cat said he had with him? Yes, his so-called little sister, Night I said. Are you saying she is the one who healed All Might? Indeed. Her name is Eri, Niza confirmed. However, she does not possess a healing quirk. While her quirk can be used to heal, it's actually much more dangerous. She's a little girl? How dangerous can she be? Present Mike asked. The kind of dangerous that can kill you with a touch, Niza answered. Oh, Present Mike said. Her quirk allows her to rewind things to a previous state, Niza said. From what Ghost Rider said she can reverse your age or even your evolutionary position. She can even return your body before it existed. The only drawback seems to be that it leaves her in an exhausted state afterward. So in summary... Ghost Rider has a little girl that can both heal him instantly and get rid of any permanent damage to him with no significant repercussions. Eraser had summarized. Correct, Niza said. We are fucked, Midnight said. Is there any sign that she was being held against her will? Night I asked. Niza shook his head. No, the two seemed quite close. He even carried her when she started to show signs of discomfort. She was also giving all might. I believe you call it, the stink eye the entire time. It was adorable but also strange I've never run into a child that's disliked me before. All Might added. Well, you did beat up her brother on live TV. Thirteen pointed out. Now she also did something very peculiar. Niza said. While she was in her exhausted state she referred to Izuka Midoriya as Big Sis Izuka. Night Eye raised an eyebrow. Perhaps she simply likes to refer to people as brother or sister? Or perhaps her exhaustion was making her say this. No, there was something strange about how both of them reacted to young Midoriya, All Might said. When they arrived Ghost Rider not only knew who she was and referred to her by first name, he also seemed shocked to see her as did young Eri. And I did manage to trick them into giving away something, Niza said. He claimed to have the ability to see souls. I figured this was probably false and saw that he had some connection with Midoriya. So I questioned him about Midoriya and he knew everything, even some personal things like her fears, favorite food, he even knew about her brother's suicide. But when I questioned him about myself he quickly made an excuse to leave. So that means that he has a keen interest in Midoriya, Night I said. But that's not the only connection he has with Midoriya, Nomesa said. Niza asked me to investigate and connections between Midoriya and Ghost Rider. I found that the day Ghost Rider showed up was also the day that Inko Midoriya's house caught on fire. You think Ghost Rider burned her house down? Cementos asked. No, Nomesa said. 
the source of the fire was confirmed to be her oven. However, someone did take Inko Midoriya out and put out the flames on her in an unsuccessful attempt to save her. I also got reports saying that a bright light was moving extremely fast from that area in the direction of the Yakuza base. I think it's safe to assume that Ghost Rider came to the Midoriya household, found that it was on fire and attempted to save Inko Midoriya. Well, we know that Ghost Rider does go out of his way to save people so I suppose that makes sense. Night I said. But this does not explain his knowledge about Midoriya. I doubt Inko Midoriya was spewing her daughter's secrets before she passed. Yes, but it is a connection nonetheless, Niza said. And not the only one. Correct. Those events weren't the only thing that happened that day, Nomesa said. The grave of Izuka Midoriya also exploded on that same day. And we got reports of something fast speeding away from that area, heading towards the home of Inko Midoriya. Eraser had wanted to bang his head against the wall. So. Ghost Rider blew up this kid's grave dash. Actually, I don't think he did. Nao Mesa interrupted. The scorch marks indicate that whatever blew up the grave came from inside. At this point, Eraser had just slammed his head against the table. So. Izuka Midoriya's grave blew up, somehow and Ghost Rider was there. Then he went to the Midoriya household, which happened to catch fire, and tried to save Inko Midoriya. Then he went to the Yakuza's base, killed everyone and took that little girl. Midnight said. That is seemingly the most likely course of events, Niza said. The other option is that Ghost Rider for seemingly no reason found a way to blow up Izuka Midoriya's grave from inside and then for unknown reasons he set Inko Midoriya's house on fire from inside her oven, and then some unknown person attempted to save her and failed. Then he went to the Yakuza base, killed all the Yakuza members and took Eri. That's just swapping some questions for different ones, Snipe said. And none of these tell us why he knows so much about Midoriya, President Mike said scratching his head. Yes. However, I have found the scenario with the least amount of unanswered questions, Niza said. Well, why didn't you start with that? Eraser had asked. Because I said it had the least amount of questions, Niza said. My theory still has three large questions. Well, two questions are better than a fuckton. Just tell us, Eraser had said. Izuka Midoriya is the ghost rider, Niza said. What? said basically everyone. What? All Might said much louder than everyone while spitting up blood. Imagine this, Niza said. Somehow Izuka Midoriya gains these powers and revives himself from the dead. He uses this power to burst out from his grave. Somehow he acquires a motorcycle and goes to the first place any child would after being dead for a month. Home. He goes there and sees that it's caught fire and goes in to rescue his family, but only his mother is home and he is too late to save her. Then he goes to the Yakuza base for unknown reasons, kills all the members of the Yakuza, and saves the girl. This last option has the least amount of unanswered questions. But still young Izuku was quirkless. He even had the extra toe joint, All Might said. And even so is it possible for his quirk to bring him back from the dead? And even if all that was true, why would he got to the Yakuza base? Well, I can't answer the first two, but I may have an answer for the third. Niza said. You see, people have wondered how Ghost Rider manages to appear at crime scenes so fast. Well, it is my theory that Ghost Rider has an ability that can help him detect certain crimes. How? How would that even work? Eraser had asked. While he knew that Ghost Rider had many seemingly impossible abilities, he would still like an explanation for at least one of them. Well, after searching through every last Ghost Rider report, I have found something that ties them all together. Niza said. Blood? Blood? Midnight asked, voicing everyone's confusion. Yes, blood. You see, every crime Ghost Rider has shown up at has always had at least one victim that has been injured or killed and each of these injuries and deaths has always involved the spilling of blood. To make sure this was not simply a coincidence I looked at many of the crimes that Ghost Rider had not appeared at. Using this I found out that Ghost Rider has never appeared if one of these six conditions were met. One he was already active somewhere else, meaning he can't be at two places at once. Two if there was a hero on the scene capable of handling the threat. Three if the crime had no victims. Four if the victim of the crime did not spill blood. 5. If the person whose blood was spilled was a criminal. And lastly, 6. If the crime has taken place outside of the city the last two are the most important. 
Ghost Rider has never shown up at a bank robbery or a drug trade. He only shows up at the scene of a murder. The only exception to this were those two minor villains he kidnapped yesterday, and they were recording their actions. Also, there have been multiple cases where victims were poisoned or burned to death, where Ghost Rider did not appear. Lastly, Ghost Rider has never shown up if the victim was a criminal regardless of if their blood was spilled. These facts lead me to believe that Ghost Rider can detect exposed blood and can somehow know the details around it. There was a long pause as the room took in that massive information dump. After about a minute and a half Eraser had spoke up. That dash. Makes sense, Nail Mesa said cutting Aizawa off. It sounds insane, yes. But it would explain how he can show up at a crime scene so fast without having to look for them. There aren't any sightings of Ghost Rider just riding around looking for crimes yet he always manages to find them. And some of the crimes he shows up at are completely random. No info gatherer could tell him where some of these crimes are going to take place because the villains in question most likely didn't know where they were going to take place. Meaning that he would have to have something that allows him to detect crimes. And the patterns that Niza has brought up combined with this leads me to believe that this could very well be a possibility. It would also give a reason for why Ghost Rider has never been seen outside of the city. But none of this makes any sense? Midnight yelled in frustration. How would a quirk like that even work? Ghost Rider's existence is filled with impossibilities. Eraserhead brought up. At this point, we just have to accept that anything is possible. Even if makes no fucking sense. So we essentially just have to shrug our shoulders and say it all works on magic? Night I said. While your theories about the blood tracking and Ghost Rider being a Zookomitaria makes sense given the evidence we have, I think the issue is just a lack of evidence in general. I don't think we can make a proper conclusion until we have more evidence. Then perhaps we can come to a less absurd conclusion. True. Nizu agreed. The point of this meeting was mostly just to inform you all of the new information. The theorizing was simply a byproduct of said new information. However, there is one more thing I would like to say that adds credibility to the theory that Izuka Midoriya is Ghost Rider. Tell me, have you noticed how, unconcerned, Ghost Rider is with us finding out these details? While he isn't actively trying to give away information, he isn't very secretive. He takes unnecessary risk and gives details about his identity casually. Perhaps he acts like this because he knows that no one could ever figure out his identity. And tell me who in the world would ever assume that Ghost Rider was a dead corkless child. Sir Knight I pondered this for a moment. Well that does indeed add credibility to that theory. I would still say it only has about a 22% chance of being correct. I would say 24 but that doesn't matter. Niza said. I've updated you all on the new information. Does anyone have anything else to add? No one said a word. All right then. Niza said. Let's dash. Suddenly the door slammed open and Izuka ran into the room. All Might you have to look at this. Izuka said shoving a phone in All Might's face. The teachers were about to scold Izuka about her behavior when they saw what was on the phone. Ghost Rider and the criminal he had kidnapped recently. Good day everyone. You know me as gentle. The criminal said. And many of you may have been concerned when I was taken by Ghost Rider yesterday. However, you need not fear. Ghost Rider has no intention to take my life. He simply wanted the talents of myself and my assistant La Brava to help make an announcement to you all. You see our skeletal friend's voice cannot be heard on camera. So I am here to translate. Ghost Rider started speaking, but no sound came from him. He said, First I would like to apologize. Gentle said, I would like to apologize to All Might for having to expose his true form like that and I want to apologize to the people whose buildings I destroyed. Ghost Rider spoke some more. I know that many of you are shocked and scared. Gentle continued, knowing that there is an unstoppable killer out there. But most of you don't need to worry. The only ones who need to be afraid are murderers. I am the spirit of vengeance. And whenever an innocent is murdered I will know. No matter where you are, no matter how much you hide, I will find you and I will kill you. Ghost Rider continued speaking. These are my final words. To the innocents, you have nothing to fear. And to the villains, turn yourselves in, and never harm another innocent. Because the abyss of Tartarus is nothing when compared to the pits of hell. Ghost Rider spoke one last time before the screen went dark. 
There was a pause for about two minutes before Niza said, So I think my blood theory has shifted into the very likely territory. What? Izuka said, not having the context for that. Midoriya normally I would expel a student if they ran out of class, and into an active meeting but given the circumstances, I'm glad you did. Eraser had said. Just don't make this a habit. Of course, Izuka said putting her phone away. Good now that being said, would you care to tell me why you were on your phone in class? Eraser had asked. Oh well, Izuka said nervously. You see Dash. Earlier. Okay class it seems that the principal has seen fit to interrupt class with an early morning meeting. Eraser had said, clearly not pleased with this. So today will be a day for self-study. I expect you all to actually study and not goof off. That last part was dripping with so much sarcasm that the students could literally feel it running down their backs. So at the very least try not to kill each other until I get back. Eraser had said. Ida, you're in charge. Yes, sir. I will make sure that each student is putting all their effort into their studies. Ida said. And I'm sure that'll work out. Eraser had said as he left the room. After a few seconds, Ida stood up. All right, everyone. I expect you all to perform your studies and dash. So we're gonna talk about Ghost Rider, right? Mina said, cutting Ida off. Yeah, I don't know what scares me more. The fact that there is an unstoppable murderer out there, or who eerily calm things are. Jiro added. Yeah. When I saw All Might go down I thought people would be rioting. Kaminari said. At the very least shouldn't the crime rate be up? What kind of idiot would commit a crime when there's an unstoppable skeleton biker who kills criminals out there? Ribbit, Tsuyu added. Yeah, I know I sure as hell wouldn't want to go up against that guy. Toru said. That just raises the question, how do we stop him? Momo asked. Yeah, I would love to know the answer to that. Izuka thought to herself. Achiko looked at her friend with concern. It seemed talking about Ghost Rider clearly made her uncomfortable. We don't, Shoto said. Everyone looked at him in shock. Both because he said something and because of what he said. All Might couldn't beat him. And All Might was leagues above every other hero in history. He continued, There's no chance of anyone beating him now. And even if was somehow defeated he seems to have allies. Allies that can help him escape in an instant. At this point, all we can do is leave him be. At least he's only killing criminals. There was a short, solemn pause as the horror of what Shoto said sunk in. No, Bakugo said. Everyone now looked at Bakugo with the same shocked look. Just because All Might was beaten... That doesn't mean we just give up, he said. That just means we can't rely on just him anymore. Even if it takes every hero in Japan, we can beat him. Izuka couldn't believe what she was hearing. She knew Bakugo had changed, but she never imagined he would sound inspiring. Hell yeah, Kurishima said. One day Ghost Rider is gonna be stopped even if we have to do it ourselves. Do you really think any of us could take down Ghost Rider? Shoto asked looking at the two spiky-haired boys like they were a couple of idiots. I agree with you, Bakugo, Ida said. Even if All Might failed, we should not lose hope. This just means we need to train harder to become better heroes and stop him ourselves. Well, I don't know about fighting Ghost Rider, but if he hurts me, friends, then I'll help, Achiko said. Ida Achiko, Izuka thought. A small smile formed on her face. They don't even have one for all and they're willing to fight Ghost Rider. Izuka stood up. We will stop him. No matter what. He can't beat all of us. He probably can but whatever. Shoto muttered. You guys are nuts, Jiro said with a small smile on her face. But what the hell? It's not like Ghost Rider will kill you. I mean he didn't even kill All Might when he went into that weird skinny form. Yeah, can we talk about that real quick? Mina said. Midoriya, did you know about that? You're pretty close with All Might, right? Uh, Izuka said looking for a way out of this conversation. What is your connection with All Might anyway? Shoto said throwing her a suspicious glare. He's clearly much closer to you than any of the other students. Yeah, I think I even saw you leave with him once in his skinny form, Toru said. Well, he's my guardian, Izuka said. He took me in after, after my mom died. There was a pause as everyone cringed with sympathy. 
They felt a little bad now about pressing her for answers. I see, Shoto said. I'm sorry for your loss. But why did All Might take you in? And what about your father? Dude, you are ice fucking cold, Kaminari thought. He just happened to be there when my mother died and did it out of the kindness of his heart, Izuka said. And my dad died when I was young. Really? Shoto said not sounding convinced. Because he seems a little too attached for it to just be a charity case. Well, uh, Izuka was getting slightly uncomfortable now. She needed an answer and quick. Hey, Bakugo said. She clearly doesn't want to talk about it. So why don't you back off? Shota looked back at Izuka. I see. I overstepped my boundaries. I apologize, he said. Izuka said nothing. At this point, she was just looking at Bakugo in astonishment. After that, the class descended into independent chatter. That was pretty manly Baku bro, Kurishima said. It was nothing, Bakugo said. She seemed to be off today. Yeah, what is up with you two? Kurishima asked. She looks at you like the scum of the earth. But whenever I see you looking at her, you just look sad. Bakugo sighed. I did some shit that I'm not proud of. Like a lot of messed up shit that I regret. Really? Kirishima asked raising his eyebrows. You seem like a cool dude. You wouldn't say that if you knew me a year ago. Bakugo said, cringing the memory of his dickish behavior. Well, I don't think it is right to judge someone based on who they were. Kirishima said, cringing at the memory of his own past self. I think it's who you are now that matters. Bakugo looked at him and for a moment he felt a sense of familiarity. It felt like a friend. I guess, Bakugo said. Meanwhile elsewhere in the classroom. Sir, are you sure that was the same guy who bullied your brother? Achiko asked. Yup, Izuka said. I know he doesn't seem like it now, but less than a year ago he was the biggest loudest asshole alive with an ego so big it would crush empty lady. Achiko tilted her head in confusion. Really? He seems like a pretty decent guy now. Yet yeah, turns out figuring out he killed my brother affected him a lot, Izuka said. He's so different now. Well, I guess that makes sense, Achiko. If I found out I accidentally killed someone then I, I don't think I would be able to live with myself. Still, I didn't need his fucking help, Izuka growled. I don't know. You're acting pretty weird, Achiko said. You were pretty quiet all morning and normally if someone got in your face like that you would curse at them. Yeah, I'm just worried about Ghost Rider, Izuka said. We were all laughing about but you know we probably will have to fight Ghost Rider, right? Achiko sighed. I mean, maybe? I heard he likes to avoid heroes so if we're lucky we may never run into him. Izuka shook her head. No, I mean we have to fight him. As in we have to stop him at some point preferably before his death count reaches the thousands. Or at least I have to. I mean, do you? Achiko asked. No one would blame you for avoiding the biker skeleton of flaming death. Izuki giggled a little. When you say it like that it sounds insane. Ghost Rider or the idea of fighting Ghost Rider? Achiko asked. Both, Izuka answered. Still, I have to stop him. Izuka would want me to. Izuku? Was that your brother's name? Achiko asked. Oh yeah? I guess I only ever referred to him as my brother, Izuka said. Hey guys! Mina yelled. On H.N.N. Look! She held up her phone to reveal Gentle and Ghost Rider. Is it on? Gentle said. Immediately Izuka pulled out her phone and went on to H.N.N. I have to show all might! Izuka said and she ran out of the room. The present. And that's what happened, Izuka explained. Erase her head sighed. Well, I can't blame you for wanting to talk about Ghost Rider. Everyone is probably doing the same. Now get back to class. We have more to discuss. Midnight sighed. I guess we're gonna be here for a while. Later elsewhere. Gentle and La Brava looked at the portal leading to their home. Thank you for your help. Izuka said. It was no hassle, Gentle said. Please feel free to visit whenever you feel like it. And bring little Eri too. Eri smiled at this. Just please take a shower before you do, La Brava said. 
No offense, but you smell like death. Which is appropriate, I guess. Note it, Izuku said. Before you leave, look at this. Izuku handed La Brava a piece of paper. What's this? She asked. It's a letter that says how my powers work, Izuku said. Memorize it. If you ever get caught by the police, then you can get off lighter in exchange for information. The two looked at him with wide eyes. Are you sure? La Brava said. Because this could be really bad for you. Izuku shook his head. Even if they know my powers, they can't stop me. Pride comes before the fall, Gentle warned. I wouldn't say it's pride, more just me knowing how strong I am, Izuka said. Trust me. I'll be fine. Now memorize it. I can't give it to you because if they find it on your person then you won't be able to make a deal with them. The two looked at him for a second before doing as he said and memorizing the list. After a few minutes, La Brava handed the note back to Izuku. Are you sure you memorized it? Izuku asked. More or less, La Brava said. Good. And the Izuku burned the paper. Now be careful. After this, you will probably be higher priority targets. Indeed, Gentle said. Although with great danger comes great notoriety. Yeah, our view count is gonna go through the roof, La Brava said. I guess, Izuka added. Yes, we must go now. We have content to create, Gentle said. With that, the two jumped through the portal. By Gentle, by La Brava, Ari said. Goodbye, young Ari, make sure to keep watching, Gentle said. With that, Izuka closed the portal. So what do you think we should do next, La Brava? Gentle asked. I think you should come with us. What the? La Brava said. Coming out of the shadows was Eraserhead, his quirk active. The heroes already, Gentle said. He tried to use his quirk to get La Brava an escape, but it wasn't working. Suddenly a strange mist overcame the two. Gentle, I am so sleepy, La Brava said falling to the ground. It wasn't long until Gentle fell too and the last thing he saw before he went to sleep was midnight and Eraserhead standing over them. Meanwhile with Izuku. Phew, Izuka said as he fell onto the couch. Finally able to be back in my human form. Eri sat next to him. I missed it too. I like it better than your skeleton form. Izuka smiled. Me too. Izuku brought her into a hug and for the next few minutes, they just sat there. You need to tell her. Izuka reminded himself. Eri, do you remember when I said yesterday? Izuka said. Eri nodded. You said you would explain everything. Yes, Izuka said. He got up and grabbed his chain. Come with me. Eri got up and stood next to him as he opened a portal. Where are we going? Eri asked. Somewhere I should visit more often, Izuka replied. Izuka took her hand and the two walked through the portal into a graveyard. The two walked through the dark graveyard and eventually stopped in front of two headstones. Isn't that your mama's grave? Eri asked confused as to why they were here. Yes, it is, Izuka confirmed. But that's not why I brought you here. Last time we came here you didn't know how to read. Can you read the name on the grave next to hers? Eri turned to the tombstone. Izuka, Midoriya. There was a pause as Eri took that in. What? She said. She was so confused. Why was Izuka's name on a grave? This is where dead people go and Izuka wasn't dead. Eri, do you know what an origin story is? Izuka asked. Eri nodded frantically. Well, it's time I told you mine, Izuka said. Sit down. We're going to be here for a while. Gentle sat in the police interrogation room. The room was heavily guarded by a multitude of heroes and policemen. After a little bit of waiting, Detective Naomesa walked in followed by All Might and Niza. The number one hero, Gentle said. I must say it is quite flattering that I have gained the attention of All Might himself. Well, when you get involved with Ghost Rider, that is not simply something we can ignore, All Might said. Indeed. But would you care to me how you found us so quickly? Gentle asked. Oh, it's simple. We actually tried, Niza said. There were tons of witnesses who had seen you enter your hideout, and in one of your videos, 
You accidentally left the camera on and practically told us where you were located. Honestly, we could have found you at any point, but the crimes you committed were so minor that no one bothered to actually look into it. Oh, Gentle said dejectedly. That was a large blow to his pride. Speaking of those crimes, Nail Mesa said, they are quite minor. You haven't actually stolen anything and I'm not sure we can say you even attempted to steal anything considering you never took anything even when you had the opportunity to. At worst we can charge you with disturbing the peace, and possibly assault. That last one is questionable. However we can just let you go if you give us some valuable information on Ghost Rider. All Might said. Gentle sighed. He didn't like the idea of selling out Ghost Rider. He seemed like a good man if you ignored the murders. But at the same time he knew that if he didn't spill, La Brava would, if only for his sake. Of course information on Ghost Rider is very, very valuable, Niza said. If you could supply us with useful information then we may be able to provide you some, reasonable favors. Gentle stayed silent for a few seconds before sighing. What do you wish to know? Let's start with his identity, Niza said. I don't know that, Gentle said. He stayed in Ghost Rider form the entire time we stayed there. I wouldn't have even known he had another form had he no spoken about it. His location? Naomesa asked. Gentle shook his head. I don't know much. He took us in and out via his portals. And there were no windows whatsoever. All right, then what do you know? All Might asked. There was a short pause before he said. He gave me a list. A list? Naomesa said. A list of information about his powers, Gentle said. He said that we would be higher priority targets after this. So he gave us a list of information about his powers to use as leverage in case we got caught. How considerate of him, Niza said. Where is this list exactly? He had us memorize it, Gentle said. Then he burned it. Smart, Nail Mesa said. So we had to ask you instead of just taking the list. Well, we can't say Ghost Rider isn't considerate, All Might said. So what was on this list? Niza asked. Well, firstly pyrokinesis. Increased strength and durability. He has no need to sleep or eat, but he can still be forced into a state of unconsciousness. He can also imbue things with his power and enhance them, Gentle said. I was wondering how that shotgun of his worked, All Might said. He can control any of the things he imbues his power into, he is immune to fire. He can open portals although it takes him about 30 seconds to do so. Lastly, he can sense when innocent blood has been spilled. Gentle finished. Do you have any more details on the last part? Niza said. Well, it's limited to one at a time. It also has a radius that is limited to the city he is in. Once you have spilled the blood of the innocent ghost rider will be able to track you no matter where you go or how you hide and once he faces the person who spilled the innocent blood he is overcome with rage. The note said that he has to kill that person, although strangely enough the note only said that if he doesn't something bad will happen. I see, Niza said. Any more information? There was a pause before Gentle said. The young girl, Eri. Apparently, her father died. Most likely of NDQI. Her mother abandoned her and left her to the Yakuza. They harvested her blood for a project of theirs. After that ghost rider killed them all and took her in. Do you know what this project was? Naomesa asked. I don't know, Gentle said. I see, is that all? Naomesa said. Yes, Gentle said. Well, thank you for your cooperation. We did gather some useful information and confirm some theories, Niza said. Now as for that favor. Well, Gentle said. There is something dash. Later. At the UE meeting room. Another meeting? Eraser had asked. We needed to meet here for the press conference anyway. Niza said. So I thought I would bring you up to speed on the new information we obtained on Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider was nice enough to give both of them a list of his abilities to use as leverage in case they got caught. Nail Mesa said. If only every villain was that considerate. Midnight said. Most of them we knew, but we did confirm Niza's blood theory, Naomesa continued. We also learned that it takes him about 30 seconds to make one of his portals. I guess that explains why he didn't just escape during the fight with All Might, Snipe said. 
Did they give any information on his identity or location? Thirteen asked. None on his identity, Naomesa said. However, we did receive a few clues on his location. One of them didn't give anything away while the other one gave a few more details, Niza said. Firstly, whatever facility he's hiding out in is underground. Most of the heroes groaned. Underground lairs were the worst, they were so difficult to find. Second is that it's quite small, Niza continued. It's possible he's staying in one of the former Yakuza hideouts. If that's the case, we should focus our search around the area where the main Yakuza base was located, Sir Nighai said. A light anything else? Eraser had asked. Well, we did learn a little about the girl, All Might said. They said that her father was killed, most likely by NDQI. Many of the heroes hung their heads. And dot d dot q dot I was always a tragic thing after all. Then afterward her mother gave her to the Yakuza, who apparently siphoned their blood for an unknown project. Niza continued. Poor girl, Midnight said sadly. I can only imagine the state she's in. Night Guy clenched his fist. If only he could have taken the Yakuza down sooner. That girl wouldn't have had to suffer for as long as she did. She wouldn't be getting raised by a child serial killer. If only he had been faster. It makes sense that she would be so close to Ghost Rider. He raised her head. After all that, having a strong brother figure who won't hurt or abandon her must be comforting. If we manage to capture Ghost Rider and get the girl then we'll need to get her psychological evaluation as soon as possible. Thirteen said. So is that all the information? Snipe asked. Yes, that is all. Niza said. All right then. I'll be taking my leave then, Night Eye said. Me too. I hope the conference goes well, Nail Mesa said. All Might sighed. It was almost time. Later in front of you, eh? The press conference was about to begin. An enormous wave of press was gathered outside of UA waiting for answers. And so, finally, All Might stepped into the podium. In his skinny form. People were shocked. The fact that the number one hero looked like this was something that caused many people to go into denial, saying that the person fighting Ghost Rider was a fake or that the footage was fake. Hello everyone, All Might said. I know many of you are shocked after my recent fight with Ghost Rider, both with my current appearance and with the result of the battle. Well, I am here to say that this, this is, in fact, my true form. There was a loud gasp amongst the press. Using my quirks so much for so long has left me in the state you see in front of you, All Might said. I was ashamed of this form, so I hid it away from the public. For this I apologize. All Might bowed. I know many of you are fearful of Ghost Rider, saying that he is unstoppable, but he is just one man, and the next time we fight, I won't make the same mistake. We will beat him, even if it takes every pro hero in Japan. All Might stated going into his buff form. About three-fourths of the crowd cheered, while the others just stayed silent. Not fully reassured. Elsewhere. Izuku watched All Might on the TV give his speech. He smiled slightly at the hopeful tone of the rest of the conference. Eri was in the kitchen. She would rather not see Izuku smiling at one of the people who killed him. Not when she had plotting to do. After a few minutes, Eri walked into the bedroom. Izuku. Izuku immediately turned his head towards her. Oh, Eri. Did you want something? Eri nodded her head. Can I stay with big sister Izuka? Just for a little bit. Izuka froze. Out of all the things she could ask. She asked for that. Izuka started to sweat nervously. On one hand, he would rather stay away from his sister as much as possible. On the other hand, he really didn't want to deny Eri of something after what happened yesterday. I promise I won't tell her about you, Eri said, tearing up slightly. I, I just don't want her to be alone. Izuka's heart broke along with his will. Ah, I, fine. Izuka gave in. Suddenly Izuka felt something hitting his chest. He looked down to see Eri hugging him. Thank you, thank you, Eri said. Izuka smiled. How long do you want to stay with her? Five days, Eri said a bit too quickly. Was she planning this? Izuka thought. Five days, huh? That's until Sunday. Now I just have to figure out where she is. A few hours later at All Might's apartment. 
Thank you for letting me stay over All Might Sensei, Achiko said with a polite bow. It's fine. Thank you for coming over. I sometimes worry that she doesn't interact with people enough, All Might said. Hey, Izuka said. Same, Achiko said. The two of them laughed, and Izuka pouted. Achiko stopped laughed and looked at All Might. It's still super weird seeing you like this. All Might sighed. Yes, I feel the same way. Sometimes I forget about this form myself, and Recovery Girl is sure to let me know when I've done so, and yell my ear off while she's at it. Everyone laughed, and soon after the girls started to talk. All Might smiled at the pair and was about to leave when suddenly... Fwish. Everyone froze. In the middle of the living room, a ring of fire started to appear and the ring soon turned into a full-fledged portal. And everyone stared in horror as Ghost Rider stepped out, holding a sleeping airy. Achiko stared at him, her mouth open and her eyes wide in shock. Izuka was much the same except her mouth was clenched shut. Izuka looked at Achiko and tilted his skull. Who is this? What are you doing here? Izuka asked. Oh, I, uh, looking for you, Izuka said. How did you know where we lived? All Might asked. I asked Nizu, Izuka said. And he just told you? All Might and Izuka asked. Yes, Izuka said. He was just as surprised as they were. Why? They both asked. Izuka shrugged. I don't know. Also, who is this? Uh, uh my eye is Achiko Uraraka. Achiko stuttered in fear. I am Izuka's friend. Friend, Ghost Rider said, shock evident in his tone. Izuka has a friend. Why, yeah. We've been since the entrance exam. Achiko answered now just as confused as she was terrified. Izuka fell to his bony knees. Finally! She has a friend. She made a friend. After all these years. And now everyone was confused. Izuka looked directly at Achiko. Thank you. Thank you so much. Ah, uh, Achiko said. Now she was more confused than terrified. Meanwhile, Izuka was also confused and slightly offended. W what did you need me for anyway? Suddenly Izuka realized what he was doing and quickly stood back up. Uh, sorry about that. I, uh, I, I want you to look after Eri. What? Achiko said. What? Izuka and All Might said the latter spitting out blood. I'm worried Eri isn't spending enough time with other people. Izuka lied. Achiko laughed for a second before catching herself. Also I want to get her to look up to someone that isn't a murderer. Izuka said. That's fair? Izuka said still quite confused. But why me? Why not you? Izuka said dodging the question. You can say no but please don't. She really wants to spend time with you. Please. Everyone could not believe what they were hearing. They never thought Ghost Rider could sound so desperate. There was a long pause before Izuka said, Okay. Izuka knew that refusing Ghost Rider was not a good idea. While he seemed like he had no intention of killing them, she wanted to be sure. Also, it would probably be a good idea to get this girl away from him for as long as she could. Thank you, Izuka said. Thank you so much. Izuka handed her airy looking at the small girl with his expressionless skull. She precious, isn't she? Izuka said. She's such a good girl. She deserves so much better than the life she has. I heard that the Yakuza siphoned her blood, All Might said. Izuka clenched his bony fist. Not just that. They did it in the most painful way possible. They treated her like she was garbage. They would torture her when she misbehaved. And by misbehaved I mean doing things like asking to go outside. Everyone flinched at Ghost Rider's sudden fury. One of my many, many regrets is that I didn't make Overhaul's death slower. If I could kill him all over again I would scorch his skin and beat him to death with his own burn arms. The rest of those Yakuza bastards too. All of them. I should have made them suffer for hurting her. Izuka shouted, his flames bursting off him. There was a long pause as Izuka calmed himself down. Sorry. I just, she means a lot to me, Izuka said. I'll be back on Sunday. Keep her safe. I'm trusting you. Achiko, it was nice to meet you. 
Have a nice night. Izuka was about to leave when suddenly Eri's eyes opened. Eyes a big brother? Eri said. Izuka turned around. Oh, Eri. You're awake. I thought after the cork training you would be asleep for the rest of the day. You're leaving? Eri asked. Yes, Izuka said. Slowly, Eri crawled out of Izuka's arms and walked towards Izuka with her arms extended. Izuka knelt down and wrapped her in a hug. I love you, big brother, Eri said tiredly. I love you to Eri, Izuka said hugging her tightly. This sight was mystifying to everyone else in the room. After a minute the two reluctantly let go. Have fun, Ghost Rider said. Eri nodded. Slowly Izuka got up and almost walked through the portal when Izuka said something. Are you ever going to tell me what you were talking about? She asked. Izuka paused for a moment before walking through the portal and closing it behind him. Izuka sighed. Of course not. Eri turned to her and sleepily walked over to her. She climbed up onto the couch and rested her head on Izuka's lap, before quickly falling asleep. Ah, Achiko said. Now that Ghost Rider wasn't here she could finally take notice of how cute Eri was. So, what now? All Might asked. Izuka looked down at Eri and sighed. I have no idea. You gave him my address. All Might shouted at Niza. All Might had taken Izuka, Achiko and Eri to Yui earlier than normal so that they and the rest of the Yui staff could talk before classes. Except for Achiko who was in charge of watching Eri along with Recovery Girl, who was testing her mental state. Indeed, Niza said. You and I both know that he won't do any harm to you. And I wanted to see what exactly he wanted from you. So what do we do with the girl? Eraser had asked. Yeah, I mean we can't just give her back to Ghost Rider, Midnight said. We can and we will, Niza said. What? shouted most of the room. We're just going to hand a little girl to a mass murderer, Cementos said in shock. I object to this, Night I said. We have her here. We can provide her with help and dash. And Ghost Rider will burn us all alive, Izuka said. Correct, Niza said. We are lucky that Ghost Rider is the way he is. He could end us all at any moment so it's best not to provoke him. The girl seems quite dear to him so keep her away from him might cause him to go over the edge. Not to mention the fact that the Eri herself could become dangerous if provoked. Dangerous quirk or not she is just a small girl. We can handle her, Night I said. And did you not see his fight with all might? If they fight once more and if we can support him, even a little, then he can win. At least we can make him retreat. We cannot just hand him the girl. There was a long pause. Then Niza spoke. I don't think you quite understand, Niza said. Something about his tone had changed. It was still his high-pitched happy tone, but something about was different, more serious. When I said we are lucky that Ghost Rider is the way he is, I'm not just talking about him walking in here and killing us all. I'm also talking about him holding back. What? said everyone else in the room. All might. Niza said. You said you encountered someone similar to Ghost Rider. Many years ago. And that he was much stronger than Ghost Rider. Correct? Why yes. All Might said. Then Ghost Rider is likely related to that person. Niza said. And we all know how quirks work. Get stronger and stronger as generations go on. Even if a child has the same quirk as their parent the child's quirk will be inherently more powerful than their parents. So knowing that Ghost Rider should be as strong or stronger than the person All Might met, correct? Everyone's eyes widened as this realization came. Ghost Rider was holding back, Izuka said, terror coursing through her. Why would he, why would he do that? He could have been caught. Well, there are two possibilities, Niza said. The first is he did it to avoid killing All Might. It's clear that Ghost Rider wishes to avoid hurting innocents and pros even going so far as to have Eri heal All Might. He likely knew that his ally would be there to rescue him regardless of the result of the battle, so he chose to hold back in order not to kill his opponent. And the second theory? Night I asked. That he can't use his full power, Niza said. This is the far more appealing theory. You see, it's possible that man All Might might gain his power via training his quirk rather than it being raw strength. 
If that is the case then it would take time for Ghost Rider to build up to the level of this man. Both of these sounded plausible, and it was terrifying to think that Ghost Rider was or could get even stronger than he already was. Eraserhead spoke. So if we were to push him dash, then it's possible he could unleash his full power and slaughter us all, All Might said. As I said, it's possible that he does not have access to all that power yet, but until we know for sure it is best not to provoke him, Niza said. And that's not even addressing any possible allies he has. So we just let him do as he pleases, All Might shouted. Do you believe you, in your current state, could defeat that man you met all that time ago? Niza asked. All Might said nothing. I see, Niza said. Well then let us do what we can while we still have Eri with us. Everyone seemed upset about this decision. Now now don't be so upset, Niza said. The two seem to care about each other deeply so while this situation is not ideal it could be much much worse. No one else said a word. Midoriya you will, of course, be in charge of her, Niza said. She will be with you at all points of the day. Your quirk can help contain her should she get out of control. Even during class? Izuka asked. Of course. Then we'll have two people capable of stopping her, Niza said. Oh joy. A distraction, Eraserhead said. Before we go, I want you all to know that just because we are avoiding direct combat with Ghost Rider, this does not mean we are letting him do as we please, Niza said. Heroes in all parts of the city have been instructed to focus on saving the villains rather than attempting to capture him. After all, it seems Ghost Rider is only capable of tracking the one who spilled the blood, so we might still be able to save the villains around that one. And what about the villain who spilled the blood? Knight I asked. Are we to just leave them to die? At that point, we simply consider them to be deceased from the point Ghost Rider arrived, Niza said. This isn't right, All Might said. What's right and what's necessary are two different things, Niza said. No one said a word. Well, if we are done here, Niza said, then you all can get ready for class. A few minutes later in Nurse's office, Izuka and All Might walked in to see Achiko playing with Eri, using her quirk to swing her around in the air. We, oui, Achiko said. Eri was giggling the entire time as she floated through the air. Izuka decided to join in and used her quirk to make Eri fly around the room. You're back, Achiko said. What did they say about Eri? Izuka's smile fell. Nothing we didn't already know. I have to take care of her, and we give her back to Ghost Rider on Sunday. Achiko wanted to object to the notion of giving a little girl to a serial killer, but she knew they didn't have much of a choice. Meanwhile, All Might and Recovery Girl were talking. Physically she's fine for the most part, Recovery Girl said. She has a lot of scars, but those are probably from the Yakuza. And mentally? All Might asked. Recovery Girl sighed. Well, I'm not a professional when it comes to psychology, but from what I can tell, it's bad Yagi. She seems to be completely desensitized to violence and murder. Although she does still seem like a nice girl, just scared. All Might sighed. I can't say I'm surprised. What do we do? Recovery Girl shook her head. As I said, I'm not a psychologist, and I don't think we can find one who is willing to work with Ghost Rider's little sister in four days. So we just do nothing, All Might said. All Might wasn't used to being so helpless. He knew that there would come a time where he wouldn't be able to help, but he thought that would be after he lost his power. The fact that he still had it was helpless anyway made things even more frustrating. For now all we can do is provide her a positive environment while we can, Recovery Girl said. Perhaps if we make Eri happy enough she will ask to visit more often. Then we could do something. Ring ring. Oh, Izuka, we're gonna be late, Achiko said. Izuka nodded and brought Eri into her arms where Achiko then deactivated her quirk. You ready to meet my classmates, Eri? Izuka said. Eri was nervous. She had no idea she would be around this many people. They all seemed nice, but she still was a bit overwhelmed. But still, she had to stay with Izuka. So she nodded. Meanwhile in class. Everyone was gathered as the late bell rang. But Izuka and Achiko weren't here. Midoriya and Hiraraka are going to be a little late today, Eraser had said. They are taking care of a special guest. Special guest? 
Most of the class wondered who this guest was. Suddenly the door opened. Sorry, we're late. Achiko and Izuka walked in, the latter holding Eri. Oh, 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 squealed all of the girls. They were all about to swarm her, but before they could get to close, Izuka held them back with her quirk. Nice job, Midoriya, Eraser head praised. Girls don't overwhelm her. Keep a distance. Yeah, guys, it's called personal space, Jiro said, who, unlike the rest of the girls, had chosen to walk over to Eri rather than rush. Right, sorry, Mina said. I apologize, Momo said. Izuka stopped using her quirk and the girls gathered around Eri but keeping a bit of distance. Oh, she's so cute, Toru said. Oh my god, she even has a little horn, Mina gushed. I love her white hair. It matches her red eyes so well, Momo said. Wait a minute, Jiro said. Small girl, white hair, red eyes, and a horn. Isn't this Ghost Rider's little sister? Everyone froze. Yes, everyone for the next four days Ghost Rider has put us in charge of babysitting his sister, Eraser had said. Eh, responded everyone but Achiko and Izuka. G Ghost Rider's S sister, Mineta said in absolute terror. But she's so cute, Mina and Toru said. How did this happen? Kurishima asked. Good question, Ida said. I would also like to know how this came to be and why she is here now. Eraser head sighed. Ghost Rider wants her to interact with more people. However, her quirk can quite dangerous and can kill you with a single touch. And given Izuka's quirk, it would seem she is the best person to handle her. So now she's here. The students were about to ask some more questions when Eraser head cut them off. Much of the information surrounding Eri and the situation is classified. All you need to know is that she is going to be with Izuka for the next four days and if she starts glowing green stay away, Eraserhead said. Everyone seemed just a bit anxious about this but Eraserhead just moved on. Everyone gets in your seats class is starting, Eraserhead said. Meanwhile with Izuku. Darn it, Koda said as he stared at the screen. He had lost, again. Sorry, Izuka said. Izuku and Koda just finished another round Superhero Bash Supreme, and Koda was not doing well, to put it nicely. Izuku had quite a bit of experience seeing as he had been playing the Superhero Bash series since the second game, Superhero Bash Punch. Maybe we should use the handicap system? Izuku suggested. No, Koda refused. I'm gonna win without the stupid handicap. Why does everyone hate the handicap? Izuku muttered. Thinking back this brought back memories of playing this with Izuka. Eight years ago. Fuck! Izuka yelled as she lost, again. She threw the controller across the room in rage. Izuka don't use bad words, Izuka said. Izuka sighed, calming herself a bit. Sorry. Maybe we should dash. Izuka was cut off. I'm not gonna use the handicap, Izuka said using her quirk to get her controller back. I don't care how many times I lose I will never give up. Izuka was awestruck. Sure it may have been over a video game, but he still admired her ability to never give up even when she keeps losing. Even if she never took the losses all too well. Back to the present. Izuka smiled at the memory. How did I forget about that? Izuka thought. Why do I have such a hard time remembering good things? Why am I so focused on the negative? One more time, Koda said. This time don't pick all might. Izuka smirked. Little did Koda know that he was also proficient at headshot. Although he only just started playing him in Superhero Bash 4, because he was super overpowered in the third game, Superhero Bash Scuffle. Koda, Izuku, lunch is ready, Misa said, standing in the door frame. Oh, okay, Koda said, dropping his controller and running downstairs. Thank you for your hospitality. Izuka said, getting up and bowing. Izuka, you saved my life. This is the least I could do, Misa said. Izuka said nothing, appearing to be lost in thought. Izuku? Misa said, still failing to get his attention. Izuku. Oh, sorry, Izuka said. I've been a little off today. Yeah, I can imagine that being without Eri for a while would be strange, Misa said. Izuka frowned. 
It's, it's not just that. Yen not having Eri here, well it hurts and I'm worried about her. But I've also been thinking about Izuka. You're thinking about telling her? Mizu asked already knowing the answer. No, Izuka said. All that would do is dash. Screw up her future, or I ruin everything. Mizu mocked. How many times have I said that's not true? I'm still not telling her, Izuka said. But without Eri now I have a lot more time on my hands. So I got my new motorcycle and then I realized that I really had nothing else to do until someone spilled the blood of the innocent. So I couldn't stop myself from thinking about Izuka and well, I started remembering some good memories. I feel like I forgot about those and I don't know why. It's because you're a person who focuses on the negative Izuku, Mizu answered. Not to mention the fact that your bad memories are probably more impactful and have a more long-lasting effect on you the positive ones. Izuka stayed silent. Speaking of your past I think we have a few things we need to discuss, Mizu said. You think you can handle it? Izuka sighed. I, I'm okay. We can talk about it if you want. Mizu was torn. On one hand, she didn't need to talk to Izuku about a lot of things. On the other hand, it was clear that Izuku was not okay right now. How long do you intend on staying over? Mizu asked. I. Izuku paused. I don't want to be alone. So you're going to be here until you pick up Eri? Mizu asked hopefully. I don't want to bother you. Izuku said. Izuku. You. Saved. My. Life. Mizu said. If it wasn't for you I would be dead and my son would be an orphan. You. Are. Welcome. Here. Izuku paused. It will just be four days then. Okay then. Mizu said. We can talk about things later then. When you're ready. And before you say it, no, you're not ready. Your emotions are even more out of control than normal. Even if it's subtle, not having Eri with you is something you're both not used and dislike. I think we should talk about things, but I think we should do so when you're more emotionally stable. Now come down and eat, before Koda eats everything. Mizu was about to leave when Izuku spoke. Mizu, I know you're trying to help me, he said. I don't think I can be helped. This hole I dug myself into, it's too deep. But the fact that you're trying, even after all you've been through, it really means a lot to me. It's more than anyone has done except my sister and mom. So, thank you, for everything. There was another pause. You're welcome, Mizuku, Mizu said. But I really, really wish that you didn't have to thank me for that. Class had just ended and all of the students had stayed behind and introduced themselves to Eri. All expect for Mineta. He didn't want to risk doing something stupid around Ghost Rider's little sister and Ghost Rider melting his face off. But Kugo also left thinking that he was not exactly the greatest influence either. Eri didn't even get his name. Eri so far found them all, strange. A lot of them were a little too loud and in her face. The one who looked like a bird gave her bad memories of the Yakuza and the invisible one freaked her out too. Not being able to see someone's face makes it hard to tell if they're lying and the one with red and white hair, Todoroki. He reminded her of Izuku, Izuka, and Koda. He's been hurt. He is hurting. She would have to figure out what that's all about later. Lastly, the blonde one. She didn't get his name. He was the most confusing of them all. She had only seen him once, but she got a mix of emotions just from looking at him. He had signs of being someone who was hurt, but there was also something about him that made Eri dislike him. So what's Ghost Rider like? Kaminari asked. Wow, you went right for it, huh? Jiro asked sarcastically. What we all want to know, Kaminari defended. Big Brother is the best person ever, Eri said. He's always so nice, and he always cares for me. Really? Siro said. Never would have guessed Ghost Rider was the caring type. Well, they say to never judge a book by its cover, Momo said. The public knows very little about Ghost Rider after all. You and Ghost Rider look nothing alike, Todoroki said. Yet you claim to be siblings. Apparently she's adopted, Izuka explained. Wait, what? Mina said. What happened to her parents? Eri frowned. She didn't like to think about her parents. Her first and only memory of her father was when she killed him. And the only real experience she had with her mother is when she abandoned her. 
Mama was scared of my quirk, Ari said. So she gave me to overhaul. Overhaul, Kaminari said. I've heard that name before. The leader of the Yakuza, Tokoyami said. He was all over the news. He was one of the victims of Ghost Rider's first attack. Oh yeah, that guy who turned into a giant monster, Kaminari remembered. He was suspected of villain activity, and after the Yakuza fell apart they found plenty of evidence of villainous activity, although it was far too late to use any of it, Momo said. So how did you and Ghost Rider meet? Mina asked. Um, Eri tried to figure out where to start. One day, the bad men came to get me. There was a big explosion, and then he showed up. The bad men took me away and he hurt me. But Big Brother can tell when people hurt other people. So he found him. He touched him, and then the bad man was gone. So then what? Kaminari asked. Big Brother wanted to take me to the police, but I was really scared and I asked him to stay with me. So we stayed there and he takes care of me. Eri explained. He feeds me lots of apples, and he always spends time with me when he's not working. Working? Momo questioned. He has a job? Eri nodded. Getting rid of bad people. Oh, Momo said. That is not a profession, Ida shouted. That is a crime. Why? Eri pouted. Because killing people is wrong, Ida said. You sound like Big Brother, Eri said. Wait, what? Ida said clearly not expecting that response. Big Brother says that killing people is wrong, Eri sadly. But he has to do it because Dash. Eri stopped herself when she realized that she said too much. Because what? Aizawa said getting out of his sleeping bag. He had stayed awake this whole time in case there was any useful information being given. I can't say, Eri said. Big Brother told me to keep it a secret. So, Ghost Rider doesn't like killing, Kaminari said dumbfounded. Maybe he just said that because he doesn't want her killing people, Mina whispered. Either way, Aizawa said. Midoriya, you and Eri have places to be. Oh, right, Izuka said grabbing Eri and running out the door. Thank you, Aizawa-sensei. Meanwhile, with Night Eye. Do you think this will work? All Might asked as they sat in Nizu's office with Nizu and Naomesa also in the room. I don't know, Night Eye said. But we have to do it. If we can learn Ghost Rider's identity then we might be able to stop him. So we must go to any lengths to learn it. The door opened and Izuka walked in holding Eri. Sorry I'm late. My friends wanted to talk to her, Izuka said. That's fine, Night Eye said. Please set her down. Izuka set Eri down on the chair opposite to Night Eye. Hello, Eri, Night Eye asked. My name is Sir Night Eye, but you may just call me Night Eye. Hello, Eri said shyly. I was the hero in charge of investigating the Yakuza, Night Eye said. I was supposed to bring them down. Why didn't you? Eri asked. That question was like a dagger in Night Eye's heart. I had to gain evidence in order to get a warrant to investigate the premises, and then I had to plan for when he would inevitably attack us. So you didn't know? Eri asked. Everyone knew that the Yakuza were up to no good, Night Eye said. We just had no evidence. What's evidence? Eri asked. It's proof that someone is doing something bad, Night Eye explained. Without it, you can't arrest someone. Why? Eri asked. If someone is doing something bad then why can't you stop them? Night Eye sighed and paused for a moment as he considered how to explain this. There are differences between heroes and your brother. Your brother always knows when someone is doing something wrong. He knows who did it and how it happened. And since he kills his victims he doesn't have to worry about proving anything to anyone. Most people, on the other hand, do not have the ability to tell when someone commits a crime and who did it. So if we just let heroes arrest people without any proof... Then they could arrest innocent people and put them in jail. Oh, Eri said. That actually made sense. Either way, I was going to take down the Yakuza, but your brother got to them before I did, Night Eye said. Night Eye sighed. I'm sorry I didn't save you sooner. It's okay, Eri said. If you did, I wouldn't have met Big Brother, and I wouldn't have been able to help him. Help him? Naomesa asked. 
Big Brother is sad a lot, Eri said. He likes to spend time with me and give me things when he's sad. And what is he sad about? Naomesa asked. He's really sad when nice people die, Eri said. When Big Brother can't save people he gets really upset. I can relate, All Might said. Eri just glared at him. Eri, we need you to look at Night Eye, Niza said. Eri nodded. Okay. Night Eye took a deep breath and looked into Eri's eyes. There was a short pause before Night Eye backed away. That is all. Thank you for coming. That's it? Izuka asked. Yes. You may leave, Night Eye said. Izuka picked up Eri and the two exited the room. What did you see? All Might asked. Did you find out who Ghost Rider is? Something was wrong, Night Eye said. When looked into her future, it was blurry. What do you mean blurry? All Might had never heard him describe someone's future as blurry. It's as if it was in a constant state of flux, Night Eye said. It kept moving and changing shape to the point where I couldn't see anything. What does that mean? Naomesa asked. I have no idea, Night Eye said. Later that night, Izuka and Eri were getting ready for bed. So, uh, where do you want to sleep? Izuka asked. I don't like sleeping alone, Eri said sheepishly. Big brother always goes to sleep with me. All right then, Izuka picked Eri up with her quirk. She brought Eri to her bed before laying her down. Izuka? Eri said. Yes, Izuka responded. What was Izuka like? She asked nervously. Izuka froze. How do you know about Izuku? We read about him on the internet. Eri lied. Oh, Izuka thought. She was aware that her brother had been a talking point about whether or not corkless people were being mistreated, although nobody was still talking about it after a month. What was he like? Eri asked. Izuka sighed and paused for a moment before talking. He was a good person. He always wanted to help people even if it meant he was going to get hurt. He was gentle and patient, and just too good for this world. Eri frowned. Why do bad things happen to good people? Izuka laid back on the bed. Because whenever there are good people there are bad people who want to hurt them. And most of the time the good people aren't strong enough to fight back, and there aren't enough people with power who are willing to stop the bad people. Izuka held Eri a bit closer to her. That's why we have heroes. They are supposed to be good people who are strong enough to protect other good people. But heroes can't be everywhere, and sometimes bad people pretend to be heroes and get in the way. That's why bad things happen to good people. So we need more good people fighting against bad people? Eri asked. Yes. Izuka yawned. That would be nice. Let's go to sleep, Eri. Your brother wouldn't like it if you slept too little. Plus we have a trip to something called the U.S.J. tomorrow. Okay, Eri said. And with that, the two fell into a deep sleep. The next day at the USJ, the students plus Eri slowly walked into the building. Eri was in awe, this place looked really cool. Whoa, Mina said. Thirteen, Achiko exclaimed spotting her favorite hero. Where's All Might? Todoroki asked. All Might won't be coming, Thirteen said. He had other things to attend to. Ah, said a good chunk of the students. Moving on today we will be performing rescue operations, Eraser had said. Uh, is that dark portal part of the lesson? Jiro asked pointing at the fountain. Immediately the two pro heroes turned around and saw what she was talking about. A dark swirling void appeared getting bigger and bigger until suddenly a man covered in hands came out. Everyone get back! These are real villains! Eraser had said getting in front of all his students. Suddenly a huge bird-like monster came out next to him, and then smaller horned monsters came out until they were facing an army. All Might isn't here, Tamura said. Why isn't he here? Thirteen, get the students out of here, Eraser had shouted. On it. Let's go, Thirteen said. I don't think so, Tamura said. Suddenly another black portal opened up behind them and more demonic villains showed up. We're trapped, Mineta shrieked. Suddenly all the demons in front of them were trapped in a huge block of ice. Todoroki, Thirteen shouted. We need to go, 
Todoroki said. I don't know how long that will hold them. The answer was not long at all as suddenly all the ice was melted in a burst of flames and the villains were freed. We're doomed, Mineta wailed. No, we just need to fight our way out, Izuka said using her power to put Eri on her back. We don't have a choice, Eraser had said. Students, defend yourselves. TCH, kill them, Tamira commanded. The villains rushed them. Bakugo sent explosions at them while Kurishima and Sato punch a few. Todoroki was not all too effective as they all seemingly had fire quirks so Izuka stayed with him to keep the demonic villains back. Thirteen stood back using their quirk to suck in the fireballs being sent at them. Eraser had activated his quirk but it did nothing. My quirk isn't working! He yelled as he dodged a huge fist. Damn it these things are hard to keep down! Kurishima yelled as he punched another villain. But each time he knocked them down they just got back up and no one else was having any progress either. What the hell are these things? Mina asked. I don't know, Izuka said. But gah! A huge fist blindsided her knocking her to the ground and knocking Eri off her. Izuka! Eri shouted as she saw Izuka on the ground. With the spot where villain hit her bleeding. Todoroki set up an ice wall between her and the villain, but it was quickly torn down. The villain stood above Izuka, ready to strike. Fush. A few minutes ago, Izuka was having lunch with Mizu while Koda was at school. Izuka told her the full story. How he died, how he made a deal with Mephisto, everything all while Mizu took it all in. So you made a deal, with the devil? Mizu said slowly. I was desperate, Izuka said. You made a deal, with the actual, fucking devil, Misa said. Well he's not really the devil he's more of a lord of hell, Izuka clarified. But you thought he was the devil when you met him, Misa said. Yes, Izuka said. But Dash, on what planet is making a deal with the devil or any sort of demon a good idea? Misa shouted. Literally every story where someone does that ends badly for them. Literally all of them. Izuka said nothing. Good God, Izuka, why would you even consider Dash? If Mephisto came instead of me, would you refuse him? Izuka asked. What? Misa said baffled by the sudden and odd question. When Muscular was killing you and Hosu, if Mephisto came to you and said he could make Muscular go away, save you, save your husband and let you see your son again, would you say no? Izuka asked. Mizu was taken aback. I dash. If he showed you visions of Koda suffering without you, of him having to grow up on his own while you can never help him, and told you he could make that not happen, would you say no? Izuka asked. Mizu didn't respond. Izuka lost his nerve and was about to apologize when suddenly he felt something. Blood had been spilled. At Yui. Where both his sisters were. I need to go. Izuka shouted as he bolted up and grabbed his chain. What happened? Mizu asked she had never seen him this frantic before. Someone is attacking you. A. Izuka said shifting into his ghost rider form and summoning his bike. The portal opened and Izuka rode in. Back at the USJ. A portal opened and a fireball blasted the villain who was about to hit Izuka. Izuka rode in, his bike plowing thoughts several villains. Get the hell away from them, Izuka said. Ghost rider! We're saved! Mineta cheered. You guys are fucked. Everyone stopped to look at Izuku and Izuku just looked at Izuka. He looked up at the villains and instantly felt something was off. The aura they were giving off combined with their looks instantly told Izuku what these things were. Demons. Izuku took out his scythes and threw them at a line of demons on both sides while he rode through a bunch of them. The scythes sliced through the demons, curving and moving to hit more of them. Izuka took out his pistols and started firing off hellfire bullets into the demons. Izuka was killing them by the dozen making them disappear into flames. Izuka stopped next to the students. Get out of here! Izuka shouted. These things aren't human. You can't beat them by trying to knock them out. I'm opening a portal get out while you can. Izuka pulled out his chain and started to open a portal for them to leave. Noma. Kill him. Tamira said. 
The Noma moved at astounding speeds and hit Izuka off his bike and making him drop his chain. Izuka skid across the ground before coming to a stop. What? He shouted. That hurt? How? No one but All Might is supposed to be that fast or strong. Izuka heard Noma running at him again and took out his shotgun. Boom. A massive explosion rocked the building as Izuka hit the Noma point blank. That should. Izuka didn't get to finish the thought as the Nomu emerged from the smoke unharmed and grabbed Izuka by the arms. H. How? Izuka asked. Nomu's skin is fireproof. Tamara snickered. Even Hellfire won't damage it. Izuka tried to punch it, but it did nothing. The Nomu then ripped off both of Izuka's arms. And no, that's not possible, Izuka said. The Nomu then brought its foot onto Izuka's skull and crushed it. And there you have it, folks. Our minds are officially blown. Huge thanks to Kaidan. You're a legend for being part of this journey. Now, heroes, don't forget to drop your wildest, what-if, ideas in the comments below. Who knows, your suggestion might be the next big thing on this channel. As always, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and ring that notification bell to join our ever-growing league of extraordinary viewers. Until next time, stay heroic, stay awesome. Kronos out.